Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the best Call of Duty Mobile esports event that the whole world has been anxiously awaiting for. This is the Garena Master Season 4 brought to you by Garena Call of Duty Mobile. And it is our Championship Sunday, baby. Three teams remaining in the running. My name is AJ. I'm the Mustachio down here with the one and only Warden. And we're going to be your casters for the very first match. We'll be joined by Cali Gaming a little bit later on as well. And the three of us will be your voices throughout the whole day. Warden, your expectations for the first series, buddy? I mean, honestly, I conditioned myself when I woke up early on. I was trying to write things down and who can bring this one until the very end. But then I realized, you know, we're talking about the West Point Mambo Low Kings, Blacklist International Ultimate, and Smart Omega. Ooh. And one thing I learned from you, AJ, from these past few days is that don't set any expectations. Because mm -mm. if you do, you're bound to just get devastated. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, disappointments are waiting around every single corner. You know, mistakes are out there to be made. Mistakes are out there to be forced by very, very powerful opponents. Each and every single team that has made it all the way up to this stage, they have shown us their supremacy. Some better than others. I mean, you, you have to talk about West Point Mamba Low Kings, right? They've been trying for the past three Garena Masters already. This is their fourth Garena Masters. And that was, of course, from the very start of 2022. They haven't really been able to get that championship for themselves. The best they have ever done so far is that third spot. And even then was quite the arduous task. Because up against teams like Smart Mega, up against teams like Almighty, dude, they, did, they didn't just lose. They got beaten down, right? They got mm -hmm. annihilated. But now, they are the annihilators. I mean, they just absolutely wrecked Almighty. Not only did they break their streak in control, they also broke their confidence, shoved them down into the lower brackets, and made it super easy for Smart Smart Omega to sweep them out of the competition. West Point Mamba Low Kings has been the key for all of the drama that has been unfolding so far. Yeah, definitely. But you know something about this, AJ, I really want to dabble around with the West Point Mamba Low Kings here once more because this is another opportunity for them that has been granted, you know, for them yeah. to advance to the grand finals. But there's something about their history line that's just been stuck all around the third place, as you did say. Mm -hmm. And out of the big three, Smart Omega, Almighty, and Blacklist International Ultimate, only yep. Almighty that they've been able to put down for Blacklist International Ultimate and Smart Omega, mm -hmm. they always had a hard time closing it up. It's either going to go to a game number five where uh, it's uh, going to be brought down to a double overtime by Smart Omega in which Smart Omega will get the final adjustment or it's going to be like hard point where they just get, get a little bit too complacent for everyone's liking and to the point where Blacklist Inter International Ultimate will just rev things up and lean the whole tide back to their side. And then that once again is an assumption as to what can happen for Season 4 because obviously we know the history, we know the numbers, but numbers means absolutely nothing. For example, even from the group stages into the playoffs, the numbers are so different, right? I mean, statistics mm -hmm. can be picked. You can kind of nitpick against like, you know, what maps they're really good at. We can look at their rotations, but at the end of the day, it's all going to go down to who's better prepared, who's got the better, you know, the stronger mental capacity to move through all of their series today unscathed. And the West Point Mamba Low Kings, they've been looking quite strong. But you know, yep. you're also yep. looking at Blacklist International Ultimate here, Warden. And this is not a team that was just put together yesterday. This has been a team that has been standing together for so, so long. One of the recent changes made, okay, we're not going to talk about the other changes where they had to loan players from other teams just so that they mm -hmm. can proceed on to, you know, further competitions apart from Garena Masters. But in terms of the core roster, the recent changes made was letting go of 10 and acquiring Rage. And one would think that that would have not been the smartest of move, but you know, that person would obviously be very wrong because Rage has been popping off and he has had no issues whatsoever in terms of kind of jiving in there with that chemistry. So Blacklist International Ultimate looks equally as threatening as the West Point Mamba Low Kings. I mean, they surely do. I mean, I mean, at some point for the competitive senior for Greena, Rage was arguably the best player there is in the region. Yeah. Simply because of his consistency and his impact overall for the squad yes. playing as an objective, he has been able to really run down the show and really became one of the most impactful players for Smart Omega to win the yep. first two Green Masters titles for their hands. For him to be not under the banner of Smart Omega, I'm kind of scared for them. But till then, they've made the adjustment for the playoffs. And if we're going to be talking about um, the statistics and mm -hmm. um, in comparison to Smart Omega and Almighty, on paper, Almighty should have been, should still be in the competition. But guess yeah. what? A different B Smart Omega offered. And that's exactly why they're here. 
and and i absolutely can echo and i can resonate with that point that you just brought up right if we purely look at the statistics and the numbers on paper almighty still needs to be in here hence why man there's just no way of telling exactly what we can expect from the day in here we are going to be taking a look at the bracket so that we can just you know refresh your memory as to exactly what has happened so far within the playoffs it hasn't been a standard two-day playoffs we've been in the playoffs for a total of four days now today being the fourth day it all started off on the upper brackets with west point basically this was the setup of the drama right we had titans and we had some newcomers and we just had to see if we could sort them out and sort them out we did west point mamba low kings beating down the broke boys club into the low brackets that's the easy 3-0 and for them they went on to meet almighty and this was that crazy maneuver from west point mamba low kings beating down almighty not just three to one but also taking that control map away from them a map mode that almighty has not lost in the past few garena masters that was insane to earn that spot in the upper brackets against blacklist international ultimate right here today warden i mean the westman mamba loking is just eager to just put themselves put their names up in the board now and just and overall in the history land of call of duty mobile to make history be known for them and you know they've been heard but they haven't been too loud so for them to show off now and uh, coming through from the victory up against almighty they are bound to just you know project something different and could be something much more of a different run compared to what they've been doing for for the past few seasons now yeah overall here just uh i want to bring this topic in and then mm -hmm. the west point mambolo kings at this very season itself at the very first green masters for the year exactly what happened is that they advanced from the quarterfinals going down to the upper bracket finals to mm. go up against the blacklist international ultimate in which we all know the first time around they were so close to taking down blacklist but they got complacent and history mm. might repeat itself once more especially if they can't if they're gonna fall into the same trap of being complacent or maybe they have matured from these past few seasons and looking at their whole run they've surely matured but is it gonna be enough after this revamp of blacklist i I, I, I want to resonate with that thought, but I don't know if complacent is the exact word I would use for mm -hmm. them, right? Because I think they really showed up big against Blacklist. And I believe the one they're referring to was the Garena Master Season 1. Because that wasn't a flat-out 3-0 and that they took to Almighty and got kicked out at the lower brackets. This was the upper bracket finals where they did make Blacklist and then went to a game number 5. So we saw a little bit of effort. In fact, a lot of effort from the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings. But Blacklist Ultimate, man, I mean, <laughs> they just did Blacklist blacklist stuff right when push comes to shove when it comes to a tournament of this level blacklist always delivers but that was against a juvenile snake that was slithering around it was easy for blacklist to stomp them out now the west point mamba low kings are huge cobras and you cannot mess with a cobra and you know they've got the the word there in the name already the low kings this is the <laughs> king cobra in itself waiting to be the king of garena masters this might just be the season that that happens a quick run through our schedule this is the very first series west point mamba low kings takes on blacklist international ultimate in the upper bracket finals the loser goes down to the lower bracket finals to meet smart omega if blacklist gets defeated this is the perfect rematch. And if Smart Omega can overcome yet another adversary that has already punished them earlier within Garena Master Season 4 in itself, that will be true testament to how effective the coaches are in terms of analyzing these matches. And it'll also be testament to how quickly each and every single player on the side of Smart Omega kind of adjust their gameplay to make sure they can execute all of those instructions well on the battlefield. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of strategies, you know, something that we can also expect is that it's going to be a completely different rundown here for these teams coming from yesterday to today's line of games. But before anything else, let's talk about the price pool here, AJ. 26,500 US dollars is on the line. First place is going to be getting 10,000. Second place, 4,500. Third place, 3,000 USD. And fourth place is going to be 1,500. Ah, you gotta love it, man. 26,500 US dollars. A lot of money. I would love to take home a 10,000 USD. I mean, I'm Malaysian, bro. <laughs> and you're Filipino. If it means a lot to me, I know it's gonna mean a lot more to you because if you look at the currency exchange rate, <laughs> yeah, Times we rich. <laughs> we rich. <laughs> but of course, we're gonna be balling, man. <laughs> they're not just us right the teams want it too they want it for multiple reasons they want to be able to afford to pay their coaches they want to be able to afford mm -hmm. to upgrade all of the equipment so that they can deliver better out there on the battlefield but it's also the pride of getting that number one spot it's also the pride of calling themselves kings of m 
SP. And this is the competition that does it for them. And since we're on the line of the, uh, in terms of the topic of the title mint, it's just either going to be Smart Omega going mm -hmm. for a three-peat, West Point Mambo Lokings getting their first major title, or will Blacklist International Ultimate take the title right back to them? As we all know, they did win the first run for yes. the Green Masters. But now, let's talk about the lineup here for the West Point Mambo Lokings. We got Yopi, PJ, Demors, Luffy, Klo, and Susano. And of course, if you look at the West Point Mamba Lokings, all eyes is going to be on PJ as well as Yopi. These two kids have just been absolutely blazing the field. I mean, PJ and Yopi have matured well over the past mm -hmm. one year. And they can now legitimately be called one of the best in MSP. I want to call them the best, but I can't just yet because we've just got so much of talent within the server in itself, right? Their map yep. awareness warden, their agility out there on the battlefield makes them quite the deadly duo. Potentially even rivaling the duo of Yato and Yoba. Yo, Bobs. Oh, definitely. And you know, there's going to be a, the, the, the rivalry of duos that I'm going to be looking for it for, for this year because we all know that Yado Yobabs, PJ Yopi, is now qualified to play for stage five mm -hmm. as all four of them are now 18 years old. But since we're on the line of Yado Yobabs, let's talk about their squad, yeah. at, which will compose of Jabin, Rage, Skirt, Yado, Yobabs, and AG himself. And of course, if you know their roster, this is the exact same roster from Season 1. Only difference is, they swapped out Tin for Rage, and I love Tin. Tin was a slayer, even mm -hmm. as he was with Blacklist International Ultimate. There was no reason whatsoever to give Tin up. But if you wanted to acquire a player like Rage, you need to be able to swap out a player as equally as good. And I think it was a good trade coming through between Smart Omega as well as Blacklist International Ultimate. But the ones that came out on top with the trade, I have to to say is Blacklist International Ultimate. Rage has yep. just been a guy who's on fire. He barely took any any of those games to really get into the groove, right? We saw a couple of matches where he wasn't hitting those high notes. He was not the bottom fragger, but he was still not dominating the matches. You give him a couple of days and then boom, all of a sudden you see him picking up those MVP titles and everybody else is asking, can you please slow down, sir? We want a few for ourselves too. I mean, that's just, I think it's also going to be correlating to just the nature of the team overall for Blacklist International Ultimate. The, the quickness, the, the swift, the swiftness that they can offer in terms of adaptability is just mm -hmm. so phenomenal. I mean, we yeah. did see them suffer for just a moment, and not just for a moment, for two games against Mortal Mega. But yes. guess what? It didn't matter for the next three. They were able to compose themselves up, really had the proper answer to just bring back the ties of the game. And just like that, they were able to reverse sweep Smart Omega. Maybe the same case, I don't exactly know. Whew. Wanting for sure soon enough, AJ, we are about to find out. Oh, we are most definitely about to find out, man. I mean, these teams, these two teams, are no strangers to Garena Masters. These two teams have been through quite a lot and both of them are equally hungry. Like you mentioned, Warden, Blacklist International Ultimate, your champions from Season 1 of Garena Masters. After that, they got to the Grand Finals, man. They took the second place back-to-back -back in Season 2 and Season 3. Guess who beat them down? It's the one and only Smart Omega. Initially in Season 2, they were twice to beat. Smart Omega beat them twice. And in Season yep. 3, second place place once again 3-2 to two to Smart Omega they just couldn't seem to cut a break but perhaps season 4 now that they've taken Rage away from Smart Omega maybe they can Rage on but they will have to get through the senior Cobras in here right the King Cobras in West Point Mamba Low Kings themselves. Season 1, third place, like you said. Fifth place in Season 2. They kind of fell off the plate just a little bit. But they bounced back in Season 3 with the fourth place. But look at this, man. They're now Ooh. aiming for the Grand Finals in itself. Let's take a quick head-to-head -head between PJ as well as Rage. 25.75 average kills versus 23. <laughs> That's a bit of a surprise. PJ also winning it out in terms of the average. That's The guy falls slightly lesser than Rage. The number of assists are pretty much all equal. Equal there. He does score better on the average scores. The KD ratio, though, is just slightly better on the side of Rage. Now, are we going to complain, though, Warden? No, come on. I mean, in some way, just by looking at the statistics, I mean, it's pretty much a mirror here. The, the difference is very, very minute. And it's just going to come to the point on, uh, especially if we're going to be talking about today's game, mm -hmm. it's just all about who's going to be having a better day. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, who's going to have a better day and who's going to be 
absolutely hungry to go out there and slay their opponents out who's gonna have that consistency and you know both these teams have been equally consistent i have to say mm -hmm. winning out every single series that they've played so far within garena masters with west point mamba low kings playing one map lesser than blacklist international ultimate but they do have a better win average they have won 96 percent of all of the matches played so far blacklist international ultimate on the other hand a 92 percent win rate now, when I was in school, if you pass that 90%, you've got an A. <laughs> so, both of these two teams, A-class teams that we have in the upper bracket finals. High honors. High honors is all I can say. Amen. And that's just really the, the whole uh, mastery that, you know, Blacklist International Ultimate and West Point Mamba Low Kings has been able to offer. And in terms of statistics now, we may, maybe we can kind of calculate and try to perceive the whole rundown mm -hmm. now as we do get the map, maps and modes here. So first map in line today is going to be firing range on, uh, firing range on hard point. Followed along by followed by standoff and search and destroy. Game number mm. three is gonna be summit uncontrolled. That's gonna be pretty interesting later on. And yep. if we ever do get to see the long distance, which we are bound to do so, it's gonna be a raid on search and destroy and take off on hardpoint. Uh, Wait, and of course, the underway. Gravity Vortex gun banned out here by Blacklist International Ultimate. Initially, it was the Sparrow that they didn't want to deal with, but they have soon kind of realized that the Gravity Vortex has been wrecking them for quite a little bit. And if you look at the maps here, especially for the respawns, on Firing Range, later on on Summit as well as Raid, um, you know, you do have quite a number of these hard points that can be absolutely dominated with a very well-played Gravity Vortex gun. And Blacklist International Ultimate just does not want that. Not only do they have to deal with the unlimited firepower of the West Point Mamba Low Kings, that operator can make the world of difference. And Low Kings kind of feels the exact same way about being burned <laughs> down with a purifier. And we all know what happened the last time Yaddo whipped out the purifier up against the West Point Mamba Low Kings. <laughs> a stellar comeback was able to ensue in Summit Hardpoint on game yeah. number four. And history was made. The West Point mm. Mamba Low Kings got shut it down. It looking like they've learned the lessons here. And I think, you know, just looking at the personality here, AJ, I, mm -hmm. I think they might be speed dabbling with the claw and the annihilators. Hey, dude, you know, we've got an amazing coach on the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings. You were telling me off broadcast yesterday about the coaches mm -hmm. on the side of Blacklist International. I did not want to be the person who brings that point out. I think you were the one who brought it to me. So you have to tell everyone. Tell me, tell me who's behind this Blacklist team and what makes them a freaking great threat within Garena Masters Season 4. Okay, I actually made an agreement with them and they told me this that I'll, I, I can only say it once Blacklist International Ultimate make, makes it to the Grand Finals. So grand, okay, okay, fair enough. I, I take that. I take that. I accept that, Warden. And I think yeah. mm, we'll see them there. <laughs> Where, we, but whether they get there now or later ever. through Smart Omega, we'll have to wait. Yeah, or, or West Point Mamba Low Kings. I mean, they, gotta, they either got to get through West Point Mamba Low Kings yeah. or Smart Omega in the lower brackets. So That's what I just said. Yeah. So um, <laughs> wait, um, I do. Um, I apologize, AJ. Just you know, while talking to you, I'm yeah. simultaneously thinking what's about to happen now. And soon enough, we are indeed gonna be gonna be able to find out. As now we are transitioning to the game itself, AJ. Firing range on hard point. The first game for today: West Point Marvel Kings and Blacklist International Ultimate. Here we go. Upper bracket finals, baby, and you know exactly how hot that first uh, hard point is gonna be. The power positions taken over, auto repair, as well as the white warehouse consumed by the players on the side of Blacklist International Ultimate at the same time playing the objective. But West Point Mamba Low Kings, player number three, he approaches from the back. CBR4, Demars with the damage, but he quickly gets equalized by AG. And Blacklist seems to be holding on to this pretty decently with all of those power positions just securely held on in their hands. Look at how well defined Blacklist International Ultimate is on the steel, the tin house and looking like they are going to falter now as they do get pushed down to Narnia as PJ will make the play from the backstab. Player 5 here close trying to cut off the deal here for the tunnels and so far it's going to be the West Point Mamba Low Kings handling down the power positions and they do get the influence inside the hill. Yep, and of course Blacklist just needs to circle on around and do the exact same thing second time but they seem to be a little bit slower to the pace this time around and early rotation into P2 is most definitely needed both teams thinking of the exact same thing sending out both of their anchors Rage will be able to back away first followed by Luffy both players do not engage and as I say that wow. Luffy finds Rage beams him down but the backstab ensues as well Skirt says hello and it is Blacklist with the hill 
Skrr, Jabin, AG putting themselves up in the board more than enough take for them to get the break and set a hill. 31 to 30, a very close game as it is, but it's only the start. No snowballing for now. And we might be able to expect the same nature here as the game progresses. So once more, the West Point Mambo Lokings, they get the break and set a hill. Split spawn situation, actually more to the left side of the minimap now, will be given for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate. Well, the West Point Mambo Lokings on the rotations now, but in the process, they get the call that they have to cut off the rotations here all mm. for mid lane. Until then, they are going to be able to get the leeway to just get the, to get the capture into the hill. Yeah, very well played by the players on the side of Blacklist, but they get slain out the moment they step on into the hill, and they will not be able to take that from the West Point Mamba Low Kings. Time runs out. There's no more time to attempt for that P2 once again, so the setup for P3 is much needed. Blacklist, they haven't been anchoring down the spawns at Shower Room. They rush on straight for the objective, and player number five, he wins it out for the team. Fantastic of an attempt, but Demos quickly undoes that play, and West Point Mamba Low Kings should be able to unlock this hard point at the kickoff of P3 as well. PG starts with a so far the biggest lead we've seen in this game. Around a 40 point lead as we can see that the West Point Mamba Low Kings is handling this one out compared to Blacklist International Ultimate. Red room spawn for the side of Blacklist. While the West Point Mamba Low Kings well defined inside a hill. There's gonna be two players around the parameter, two inside a hill. Can they hold on for dear life? They can absolutely do. Last two players here for this very wave for the side of Blacklist. It's gonna be player one making the play, but he does get denied. It's a great hole for them so far. Blacklist cannot approach from that mid part of the map. So shooting range is going to be exactly what it is. Those long range engagements needs to be dealt with first. But the Holger 26 in the hands of Luffy sorts it out. So no access from the mid lane. No access from that shooting range. Oh and they my. back away for an early rotation into that barracks hut. And I tell you, the lead by West Point Mamba Low Kings is looking to be absolutely monstrous at this very moment. They just need one solid break. They need to force the players of Blacklist to respawn from all the way inside of backyard that warehouse number four that bomb site if they can do that it's a ggwp here's that play let's see that execution this is the display of how revenant the low kings is 126 to 38 that's gonna be followed by the full 60 that they were able to accumulate all the way down to p3 hard point number four opens up and looking uh -oh. like a fully full fortified blacklist international ultimate they get flushed out split spawn situation for them but with demons are spraying for their life trying to get the break from the back end won't really cut the chase and the game is still on for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate. For a moment or so, the momentum, they're on the driver's seat. The reason why Blacklist is still holding onto the hill is because of that shower room spawn. It's just allowing them to throw their members straight back in there, one after the other. But West Point Mamba Low Kings winning out a couple of gunfights, but the biggest gunfight won out by Yato. Investment on that Sparrow is just perfect, and he holds onto the hill for the rest of his team members. Challenge comes on through for Kalo as well. He goes in for the claw investment. Bally is able to do anything with it, and Blacklist will be able to catch up as I say that Yopi hops on and even without the spawn, Low Kings are able to keep up with Blacklist with their gunfights. The reach of the West Point Mamba Low Kings and especially in their individuality, the gunfights has been so stellar for them. They've been able to perform. Look at the kill field, look at the kills here. Might be on the even grounds, but mm. most of the impact has been given for the side of the Low Kings. As we approach back to hard point number one, we do see the first hand of the contestment here will begin for the side of Blacklist. But if ever they are not going to be able to take the White Warehouse back to their side, we might be able to see the break come true for the side of the West Point Mamba Low Kings. Yeah, West Point has got double of the points that Blacklist International Ultimate holds on to right now. Spawning out from the backyard. This is not the easiest of access into that very first hard point, but the power positions have not been acquired by the West Point Mamba Lokings. Therefore, it is possible for Blacklist to hop on in there. Auto repair is first off taken on by that Crick 6 as well as Skirt, but he does not have the backup to go in and engage with the players just yet. Everybody hops on right now. Three more seconds. This is the break for Blacklist. They'll acquire the kill. A big fight coming on through. Yopi wins one. Can he win out two? No, the answer is no. Yopi finally loses it, but it is only after Low Kings pick up a few solid points in there. Blacklist International Ultimate are losing out a majority of the gunfights. The persistence of the West Point Mamba Low Kings in terms of winning the gunfights inside a hill has been absolute stellar. And that's exactly why they're on the lead right now. Scrap time, main points itself. They are able to accumulate it for big time. The Blacklist International Ultimate, they are putting a lot of efforts in terms of winning the parameter, but not inside a hill. So here we go. If they want to prove themselves worthy now, it has to start now at this exact very hill. As we move over to P2 with the first initial break given for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. 
It is gonna be a crazy, crazy start to Championship Sunday if West Point Mamba Loking takes this hard point away in a dominating fashion. But we all know, a stellar comeback from Blacklist International Ultimate, we are no strangers to that sort of a gameplay. Mm -hmm. Reverse sweeping Smart Omega, kicking them down into the low brackets, and that was a phenomenal play we will not forget for a long, long time. West Point Mamba Lokings might just be the victims to the exact same gameplay, but I would rather not have it that way because you know i don't want to get a heart attack bro 176 to 110 <laughs> blacklist international ultimate now holding on to scraps they're playing the second rotation of hard point so much more better early rotation into p3 as well and they're clearing out the front they're making sure low kings gets nowhere near towards this p3 but it's just so much that they can do because the mid-range control is not really there for the players of blacklist just yet they're playing this very scrappy because they're all spread out on the map you know, with a bounce back here for Blacklist International Ultimate, there's a there's one question here that I have in mind. Can the West Point Mamba looking put the icing on the cake, oh. or are they gonna falter once more? And looking like so far, Blacklist International Ultimate, they're on the driver's seat. The West Point Mamba looking so they're trying to get a break here from battles. Double Chow comes through, but AJ takes down one, and in the process as well, Javen takes down another one as well. And the West Point Mamba looking they get flushed out. Blacklist International Ultimate holding on to the very hill. Oh, this is a great comeback by Blacklist International. Lokings, on the other hand, you have to love their challenges, man. Every single time they come and challenge them for the kill, they do not make the mistake of trickling in one at a time. They have got that partnership. They've got those duos pushing in together and the double challenge should have worked out for the Lokis a little bit earlier, but Blacklist just turned things around by dominating those gunfights. Kalo with the claw investment this time round, but he just goes in there to spray it and is taken down by AG. Very smart wrap around. Yopi instead gets traded out. Blacklist holds on to the final scrap points of this hill, but the spawn for for P3, held, sorry, P4, held on by Loki. This is gonna be a game changer if they can keep their hands on this. Once was an 80 point lead down to just 24. West Point Mamba Lokings to get the first initial break for P4 while in the process Blacklist International Ultimate trying to simultaneously break into multiple uh, entrances and that's gonna be now more defined here from the front lines which PJ is gonna be able to cut off one gonna be able to cut off two and they're gonna be able to survive the first wave here out away from Blacklist International Ultimate the game continues now with West Point Mamba Lokings on the 20 point mark even the YouTube chat thinks that West Point Mamba Lokings is gonna win this match against Blacklist International Ultimate 52% of the chat thinks WPM will take this win away and the score line says exactly the same at hard point for the time being. Yopi with a double, 221 already. Blacklist International just needs to rotate around and break that hold at shower room but with 18 more seconds to go, do they want to give up? If they give up, they'll let go too much of those points and they'll surely lose this to the players of West Point Mamba Lokings. There's no if but or maybes because winning out every single gunfight and holding onto the hill keeping them out looks to be a big problem for Blacklist. Yeah, it has been so far, and if ever you do win those gunfights, it's, it it's not really the most impactful ones. I mean, you really gotta win those gunfights instead of hill. So with them trying to scare the parameter, it could be a good start for them to try to build up a comeback. Jabin here on a steel tower, on a 2 speed so far, cutting off the rotations here down to Narnia. Gonna be able for player 4 here to just put the contestant inside a hill, and so far we're seeing the West Point Mamba looking nowhere to be found. Yep, Jabin, it is a great position for the guy to hold on to that SKS has been on quite a roll, the third kill, and that will help them hold on to this P1 for just a little bit. And you can see it's not just one power position, but two being played at the very same time. Auto repair. They did have the player, but Scout Tower taken out. And that's the first two, two steps that Yopi needs to now move on with. And Yopi single-handedly. Mm. Three players and three very key players who are holding on to that hill. 20 seconds here can end the game. West Point Mamba Lokings. Once again, they falter because of Skirt's investment inside of the Sparrow. Seven more shots out of this. He's going to be waiting for that backup, but nobody else on the side of Black. Blacklist picking up those very important points. Scrap finally acquired by Blacklist, but West Point Mama Lokings, they rotate around to P2 because they know this is where it ends. Approaching to P2, the West Point Mamba Lokings only needs four more points to take the first game out away from Blacklist International Ultimate. But look at the parameter here all around. It's going to be your boys from Blacklist International Ultimate holding this one down. In the process, the West Point Mamba Lokings trying to wrap around from the middle lane to try to penetrate into different takes and looking like they are going to be able to win the first few engagements now. Cloak trying to cut off the rotation here from Barrels, but it's not going to cut the chase. And Blacklist International Ultimate, they survive for another run.
West Point, they do have that one operator. They can use it for a break or they can wait for P3 and try to go in for a challenge on P2 just to stop the bleeding and then later acquire the win. Either way, it's going to be a huge risk. Four more points needed. That's not a lot at all. They just need to go in with one clean oh. break. But Blacklist, they will falter. And this is West Point Mamba Low Kings putting their mark in Garena Master Season 4. First game. Accumulated by the Kings. West Point Mom below Kings. They got this one out, but not in a very convincing manner, AJ. It was too close. It was so close for Blacklist International Ultimate to come back. But just like that, they got the final adjustment here for the West Point Mom below Kings, and they were able to run it down. But keep in mind, man, West Point Mom below Kings, they were once up by like 80 points. Blacklist International Ultimate came into a run at the middle stage of the game where they were actually able to lower down the points to just 20 points. And just like that, I mean, it was a good fight still brought by the Blacklist International Ultimate. I'm not surprised. In fact, I would be disappointed if that was not the kind of fight that we're going to be starting off this upper bracket finals with. I think it was a well-deserved, um, you know, round of applause that I'm assuming the whole crowd is giving West Point Mamba Low Kings because that was not an easy win. Just like you said, right, Blacklist, they looked really, really strong. Once they started, that momentum kind of kicked it off and they were trying to get back into the matchup and they looked unstoppable. They were slaying left, right, center. That P1 strung into P2. Just when you thought West Point Mamba Low Kings were trying to roll rotate around and pick up that P2, they get slain halfway, forced to respawn all the way at that warehouse number 4, Blacklist is the first one to open things up, and Low Kings, without even that operator investment, just hopped on into that hill, worn out their gunfights, and we have to focus on that. The gunfights mm -hmm. were sublime on the side of the West Point Mamba Low Kings. PJ, not only was he slay, but he soaks up 2 minutes and 9 seconds on the hill. What sort of a monstrous player does that? I mean, even if you compare that to AG, who was the objective to player on the side of Blacklist. Just 35 kills on his side. Yes, it's not a lot between the number of slays, but you gotta give praise to PJ for being able to execute this, not only through the statistics, but against a team like Blacklist. Definitely. It's such a big impact. Two-way factor player he is, PJ. I mean, ever since, man, I mean, ever since the start of the Rise of the Westman Mamba Kings, PJ has always mm -hmm. been able to make the scratch yes. in terms of the statistics. And coming again, you know, just looking at the whole run here for the Westman Mamba Kings for this year, with PJ going to be able to play for Stage 5 alongside with Yoki himself, mm -hmm. it's going to be bringing the Westman Mamba Kings to a much more promising run for this year. But, you know, going back to this game now, maps uh, for the first game, 250 to 232, down to the wire situation here for firing range hard point. It's gonna be said and done. Soon enough, we are gonna be heading straight over to search and destroy standoff. I mean, uh, the the statistics on the side of West Point Mamba Loki seems to be increasing and I'm not even talking about the number of games that they're winning out there. I'm talking about the number of votes that they're getting on this YouTube chat because everybody now is kind of swinging over to the side of West Point Mamba Loki. We had a few fence sitters who did not want to click that vote button just yet. They wanted to see who wins map number one. <laughs> the moment they found out, bloop, they hit that button, man. 55% <laughs> of the YouTube chat now thinks that West Point Mamba Loki is going to be walking away with the victory. You think that West Point Mamba Low Kings is going to be walking away with a victory. I want West Point Mamba Low Kings to walk away with the victory. I want to see them in the grand finals. I want to see them not just get there, but also execute some pretty nasty comeback revenges against these teams yep. that have just loomed over them these past few seasons. You want to, you want to know a fun fact about Stunout Search and Destroy? Tell me. I mean, the West Point Mamba Lokings and Blacklist International Ultimate, the first time mm -hmm. that they went against each other in a tournament, it mm -hmm. went down to game number five and stand off Search and Destroy, which the West Point Mamba Lokings actually won. Community well. tournament, that is. <laughs> One may be able to argue that Blacklist might have not been as excited or as motivated, but you know, I will not say that because it's Blacklist, man. You can never read their minds, especially with the poker face that Jabin kind of walks around with. But two long-range engagements capability here for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. Jabin and Yobabs. The rest of them with the CBR just roaming around, trying to see if or not they can open up this match. But you can see this is classic Blacklist. Granny's welcome. They back away towards Granny's house. Rotate around. They want to play for that retake. And one player circles around towards gas station first. It's going to be Rage versus Demos. Who gets the kill? Demos spots it, but Rage. Fantastic movement. Jumps up into the air. Gets the headshot. First two casualties headed for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. As we see another exchange coming true wow. onwards P1 and PJ finding two. Yada trying to respond back with one as well. He does take down Yopi. 
but the time of the factor is still taking up against their side. They need to move in quick. AG, mm -hmm. the bomb, holding this mm -hmm. one still, and Blacklist International Ultimate will get this one. True and Ninja Diffuse. <laughs> I have no idea how <laughs> that one kind of slipped yep. on through because uh. I, I think the setup from Blacklist was very, very good, and Lokings knew exactly what was happening. The counterplay from the side of Lokings, that's exactly where I raised my eyebrows, right? Everybody backed away from the bomb. Nobody protecting the site at all. A ninja defuse with two players left on the side of Lokings. That's unacceptable. Lokings, they do Ooh. learn quickly though, but Rage not allowing them to really run away with this match. That bomb hasn't been planted just yet, and this time, they switch that base up, rushing straight up to the base of Lokings, and they take it away from them. And now the bomb is in the hands of the defenders! Oh my days. And looking like West Point Mamba Lokings here. Pretty scattered around. They can't play for trades here. Gotta go for the isolations. And this can be Sasano here in the front lines with the scopes, looking for an angle to connect to. So far, he hasn't been granted at all. The time is ticking down. I mean, a minute to play with. And I think for the Westman Mambo Kings, I think the best call here for them is just to gather up and play together. Unless, of course, they can engage with those 1v1s. Yato finds Susano PJ. Lives up to his credibility of a slayer. And his map awareness is just absolutely on point. PJ once again catches out. One more player. Jabin taken out of the equation. And he tries. But he's not going to go in for that second engagement. I believe AG was the one that tried to tease him and take him off of the spot. And now PJ makes this a 2v2. Very winnable round for the low kings with 34 more seconds to go. They just need to slay. And PJ oh delivers. My. Three back to back. And the distraction now from the back is going to be Luffy stepping on. Can he get it? AG with the clutch 2 and oh, This is a GG for West Point Mamba Low Kings. But it's only because of the amazing strategy from the side of Blacklist. You know, I really love, love the fact that Blacklist International Ultimate on the first round, they were playing so passively and they changed things up with Rage wrapping around oh, from yeah. the mid lane and stopping the Diffuse. That was such a good change of pace here for Blacklist International Ultimate. Clearly, mm -hmm. the West Point Mamba Low Kings wasn't so prepared but we move over to this next round as the first casualty will be given for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. Rage this time around. He gets punished down. Yep. West Point expecting that play. Rage taken out of the equation just makes it a little bit easier for West Point to get that plan. This time, Yopi's going to be holding on to the site. The Zenic will be able to deliver in a little bit. The Concussed does not do much except give away that information to the side of Blacklist. Yo, Bobs. Long shot, Susano. But gets traded out by PJ. Jabin trades out Luffy. Demos finds Jabin back and forth. We go. But it's a 3v2. Make it a 3v1. AJ got the clutch once. Can he get it twice? It's a 1v3. But Demos says not this time. And Low Kings pull one round back. They pull one round back, stopping the momentum of Blacklist International Ultimate. Nice to see now. And let's see if they can retain the momentum for their side. But Blacklist International Ultimate, something about their search and destroy that one thing I learned as well, coming from their matchup against Smart Omega, they are so quick to change things up. They are so well disciplined now, and if ever they can retain the discipline, not just in search and destroy, but in hard point and control as well, they are bound to be just a very strong team. But we move over to this very round, not expecting the West Point Mamba Lokings to barge in towards the B bomb site as the first blood will kick in. They're still trying to extend further and more, and looking like they want to go head to head here all the way down to De Delhi, but Rage shuts down the dynamic duo PJ Yopi. This is just a tense situation for the Lokings. Yes, Lokings did manage to take the win the last time around. The Blacklist just looks too ready for the standoff SND. Oh. Yato turns it around. But it is going to be a one more round to the side of the Ultimate Squad. 3 to 1. But you know, they're on the defense. <laughs> Lokings mm -hmm. can defend quite well as well. So I'm waiting to see the swap of rounds. But sorry, sorry, the swap of sides. But you cannot really allow Blacklist to pick up so many of these defensive mm -hmm. rounds because on the attack. You know, all they need to do is just send Rage out, the guy clears out the pace, and the rest of them can annihilate as well, even without getting that bomb planted. So this is something that the Low Kings really need to look out for, Warden. Something about their defense here for Blacklist International Ultimate is, you know, I can safely say they have probably the best defense in Search and Destroy. Just rethinking what they did up against Smart Omega and looking like the same case here for the Westman Mamba Low Kings. But let's see if the Westman Mamba Low Kings can change things up and prove us wrong as we approach one other 5v5 retake. 5v5 retake, the first one goes down only for Trace. Yo, finds one! But he does not put him down. AG, they are all just absolutely slaying them out. Jabin, as the last player though, all of a sudden the tables have turned. As Luffy and PJ step things up. 
Let's see if or not they can get him. It is going to be a tough one for Jabin, especially against the sniper in the name of Luffy. Dealing with PJ shouldn't be an issue, but the positioning on the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings just a little bit too good. Right tech picked up. CBR4 will not be able to deliver as both players engage at the same time. A good round picked up by West Point Mamba Low Kings. Good round and Blacklist International Ultimate. I mean, Jabin didn't really have any options at all. No time at all. No time and still needs to deal with two players. It's just going to be a secured round now for the side of the West Point Mamba Low Kings. The question is though, will Blacklist International Ultimate get away with a double round lead before switching sides? Or can the West Point Mamba Low Kings even things up? As we do see another default formation here for the side of Blacklist. Well, the West Point Mamba Low Kings, they are trying to long for these 1v1 isolations. Which, keep in mind, I did kind of call out. But mm -hmm. PJ was able to bring down a 4v2 down to a 2v1. So, that was pretty... Um, that's something that they're that's pretty, pretty comfortable PJ. to do. Yeah. <laughs> This is pretty PJ. <laughs> Look at him, man. Yeah. Five rounds, nine kills. He's on fire. Everybody else trying to keep up with PJ. But that storyline hasn't really changed from the very start of GM4. So PJ's just doing PJ things. Still hanging around inside of the hotel yard. We'll be able to see one player, but a slight challenge by Rage this time. Catches PJ a little bit off guard. There's a sweet revenge executed by Rage. But does he want to engage before he recovers? Unfortunately, Susano's one shot, one kill will take him out of the equation. Yato trades him right back out. It's a 3v2. West Point Mamba Low Kings on the attack with a bomb down in mid-square. Uh, this is going to be a challenge. Demorse up front has this opportunity to go against Yobabs. But in the process, it's going to be Luffy taking down Yato. Forcing it down to a 2v2. Make it a 2v1 as Yobabs will take down Demorse. Luffy hasn't been quite loud in this game. Especially in this search and destroy. It's about time for you to show yourself, baby. 1,009 votes so far in the YouTube chat. 54% think that West Point Mamba Low Kings is going to pick up the victory. Mm -hmm. You all underestimating Blacklist International, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> not, not everyone, just the 54%. Just the 54%. <laughs> 54%. It's yeah. still pretty even, to be honest. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's somewhere around that. But if, yeah. you, if you really want to call it down the line, you know, West Point, everybody's expecting someone yeah. to upset and, you know, Mm, the upset is just that they're probably not going to dominate Actually, this SND all that too much. But we switch sides though, Warden. Now we switch sides. Actually, you know, in terms of the voting, I did, I did remember like mm -hmm. Blacklist, uh, no, Smart Omega, and mm -hmm. the, the match that they had up against Almighty, which mm -hmm. the voting was ninety eight percent Almighty. So <laughs> <laughs> under, under, underestimating teams is pretty common now, especially in the Facebook page. I mean it. It is what it is. At the end yeah. of the day, sometimes, you know, it all depends on who's got a bigger fan base and who's got a bigger hater base as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, right? West Point Mama Low Kings, though, they really need to hustle on the defense this time. They stack up that A bomb site and they are going to be able to pull off a quick defusal here. I don't know exactly what the idea is for Blacklist. They went in for a quick plant. They backed away. Those smokes can do... Oh, no, the bombs dropped. Not even planted yet. So, that's all good for the side of the low kings as they hop on to get all of those players out of the equation why is my game audio so low no i hear the beeps yes bomb oh. is on i cannot believe they still got that warden uh, yeah, yeah. i don't know if it was the concisement in terms of the, the formation there for blacklist international ultimate or the westman mamba low kings just faltered in terms of the gunfights but regardless blacklist international ultimate they are able to capitalize that's gonna be two rounds in a row for them and West Point Mamba Low Kings, I don't know, three rounds in a row for them. And only one more to go for the match point advantage. And what? it's looking to be the case as Yobabs kicking things off strongly here for Blacklist, taking PJ out of the equation. Yeah, flicked it to the right. Didn't even see the flick. He got the kill. Susano trades Rage out. It's a 4v4. Quick bomb plants from Blacklist International Ultimate. And this is just so difficult to deal with. Low Kings weren't as quick to that site. And this is, once again, Blacklist getting that quick plant, having that one player to protect that bomb. Everybody else just controlling the perimeter, making sure nobody circles on in. And it's a mid-control that does the biggest of damage. But Susano finds AG, that bomb site now wide open for someone to go in and defend. Last player, which boxes. It's going to be Yato left alone. He has been able to... He's been found in these situations multiple times. But unfortunately, well for this very moment, it's not going to be his time. As the West Point Mama Low Kings finally, in such a while, they take a round back for them. This is a great play from the West Point Mama Low Kings. Let's see if or not we can see them pick up a couple of more rounds. Blacklist International, I... 
I don't know how I feel about the strategy. I actually don't know. I, I really like the strategy. A quick in and out. They get the plant. They control the perimeter. It's just that a player that's holding onto that bomb, defending inside, I would prefer it to be two players instead of just one. I mean, AG is a really good player. He's a slayer, but, you know, that backup is most definitely needed. One quick smoke, ninja defuse. It's gonna hurt. I mean, shades is pretty detrimental now, especially in a game like Search and Destroy. And I'm loving what a, the formation that I'm seeing here for both ends, so concise from one another. Except Blacklist International Ultimate does have Jabin just watching the backstab. But look at this. Look at this play for Blacklist. Oh my days. Oh. Who's the snakes? Oh Wait. my days. No bads. <laughs> Get the kill. The more's out. 45 now. Blacklist, they're on the driver's seat. Yo, Bob's the king of wall banks. <laughs> Especially on standoff. Look at him. Just shooting through all of the walls. It's like, I, you might be here. You might be here. One day I'll get lucky. He's always getting lucky, Yo, Bob's. But that kind of luck does not come without map awareness. Yo, Bob's. Yep. So good to see him right back in here, man. And look at, the, look at the number of kills picked up by the players on the side of Blacklist. Everybody's pretty much equal. Everybody's picking up their weight. Everybody's doing their part to make sure they take this win away. They are quite annoyed that that hardpoint match kind of left their hands. And I have to say that was only because Low Kings were just playing it down to the T. Yep. They were able to get the solid adjustment here. But looking like Blacklist International Ultimate might have a respondent here for search and destroy to get the bomb planted. And if ever they do win this round, it's a match point advantage for them. 4v4 retakes. Susano does take on player 2, Yobabs. And this is on equal grounds, but the time to factor ticking here up against the Westman Mambo. Gaben says, say hello to my Kilo. And he gets a triple by the end of that round. Match point for Blacklist and potentially one that is going to lead to a victory as well. The way they are running circles around the Low Kings here. Low Kings have just been out-strategized. The Westman Mambo Low Kings... Is not really catching up to the pacing of Blacklist International Ultimate, and it's not—it's not just the pacing. No, it's the execution, the projection that they've been doing. It's something that the Westman Mamba look is, is having a hard time finding a response into. Could be the last and final round here if the Westman Mamba Lokings will falter once more. Six to three, they got to come out flawless and force an overtime. EJ, once again popping off, and the attacking side can't really get to the bomb side just yet. It's a good setup defensively from the Low Kings. Spread out wide. They've got almost every single angle covered. Blacklist cannot rotate over to that B side. Can't get into the A side unless they want to go through Susano and his Krig. But the approach is coming though. It's a 2v1. Oh. Good slide by Yato. What a response with that CBR. Quick swiftness. Prodigy. Someone check his phone. Forcing it down to a 4v4. Bomb. A bomb side. Quite open now for Blacklist International Ultimate. Miyato here looking for the information to kick in and looking like he is making the call. The bomb side is pretty clear. AG gonna get the bomb planted. It's gonna be a 4v4 retake here, but a wrap around from Yopi will be able to force this down to a 3v4 situation. And looking like two players on the wrap will be able to put up the impact as Luffy will take down Jaben. The more from the front lines here will try to put himself up in the board, but AG shuts him down. It looking like they wanna reallocate their players here to wrap mm -hmm. around, but PJ gets the proper read. Yato's holding on to the bomb. Here comes the OP. Big fight for Yato. Can he get this? No engagements just yet. Player circles around. Yato's confused. Everybody's Ooh. hopping on in. It's a 1v3. Yato gets the mm. first one, but not PJ. And the king on the side of Low Kings helps them out. It's a 4 to 6. Low Kings ain't going anywhere just yet. Two more to for force an overtime, AJ. And if ever it does go to that point, I. I might as well just get subbed out and let Kali take over. I might get a heart attack, as we all have been talking about. 64. Dude, you're too young <laughs> for a heart attack, man. Calm down. I, I, I have a lot of cholesterol. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Cholesterol's good. It helps you, helps you keep yourself slim. I, almost everyone I know with high cholesterol seems to be slimmer than me. And I'm a prime good example, but look at this, man. <laughs> <laughs> in, in terms of the defense here for the Westman Mambo Low Kings, kind of playing the same way as Blacklist. Actually, no, never mind. It would move quite aggressively here to the Gasolines, which Yo Babs would scope with the information relayed. Looking like Blacklist International Ultimate bar about to barge in towards its A bomb site quite freely, as they're pretty confident that they did a lot. They did get a lot of headcounts there from Gasolines. Only reason why Yobabs didn't get that shot is because it wasn't a wall bang. If it was through a wall, <laughs> he would have gotten that shot already. But you got to love the movements, man. I mean, every single corner that he goes in for the slide, he makes sure he checks his back first so that he doesn't get caught out. 
And he is alive and kicking inside of Bakery now. Yobabs should be able to hold down the mid segment of this map. Attacking side on Blacklist International Ultimate on the other hand. Let's see if or not they will be able to get this. It's a 4v3. Numbers all on the side of Blacklist. Time's running out and AG. A little bit of a mistake there going for the prone. But that sure fire keeps the player away from him. Jabin shuts down Luffy and time is just up, man. 12 seconds. No way they get this done, but Yopi. No way. No way. No way. Can't win like this. Nah, nah, no time, no more. And Jabin <laughs> will shut him down with the right tech. Blacklist International Ultimate. They take a game back. Search and destroy. Standoff under their banner. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I mean, this is just too good <laughs> for the side of Blacklist. I think SND game was five. phenomenal in terms of how they played it strategically with all of those rotations, keeping it fresh each and every single round. First off, playing for retake instead of even bothering going to the bomb side and trying to engage with West Point Mamba Low Kings. And clearly they learned from that first game in Hardpoint that gunfights-wise, West Point Mamba Low Kings do have the capability of overcoming the gunfights of Blacklist International Ultimate. And therefore, mm -hmm. it was going to have to be strategy over the gameplay on the battlefield, strategy over some egoistic fights to find some revenge. And I think Blacklist really held their ground in that gameplay of, because of that. Yato with the 12 kills, Jamin with the 12 kills. But of course, AG is going to pick up the MVP. All thanks to those quick maneuvers of getting to that bomb site and getting the plant. And of course, Low Kings did try to execute that play a couple of times as well, but not as smoothly as Blacklist. And I'm coming into the conclusion that the West Point Mamba Lokings can't afford to play another search and destroy against Blacklist International Ultimate. If they want to win the series, they got to win control first and just force that hard point to their side as they did for the first game. What do you think, AJ? I think, you know, you never ever mm -hmm. underestimate the Lokings. It, because there's this mental of a guy named Alea on the squad, Yep. And I, I think he's an AI. I don't think Olea is real, okay? <laughs> I, I think he's a beta prototype AI that's just walking around in a human body. He's just, he's just Filipino because they're all trying to cover up as much as possible. Nobody's going to suspect Olea, right? He's the nicest guy walking around, probably goes to church almost every single day to pray for his team. And then he comes up and he shows Actually. up that he's a cyborg. Because, dude, the guy like we were talking about before the start of the show, never makes the same mistake twice. And that's what you gotta mm -hmm. love about Alea. And something about Alea as well, just the humbleness is really there. I mean, oh, when, yeah. when he saw the projections of the caster, which mm -hmm. all six of us put up, he basically said he kind of doesn't like it simply mm. because that he doesn't want people to expect. Exactly. <laughs> that means he, he loves me because I didn't even put them there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, li Loki. yeah, he likes uh -huh. it a lot. He, he likes it a lot. And, Moving over now to yeah. the uh, the whole take here for Alea, I, I mm -hmm. think in some way he might be able to do so, but the the problem that I'm just seeing here for yeah. Search and Destroy for the Westman Mamba Low Kings is how slow they are compared to the pacing of Blacklist International Ultimate. Mm. So it's something that they got to work on themselves as yep. uh, their own individualities. I think what makes Blacklist so good at SND is three main points, right? Number one, of course, we talked about this strategy, but we also have to talk about the efficacy of their players. You've got Yobabs as the sniper, and his long range engagement capability is just absolutely superb. And you've got a backup in terms of Jabin, and Jabin's quite the slayer himself, right? The game sense is just phenomenal on both of these guys, and they're not rushing on in looking for picks. And then, of course, you've got the newest acquisition in the name of Rage, who knows how to get the job done. And that's the guy that continues continuously switches up the momentum on the side of Blacklist, continuously going out there, pushing the buttons of West Point Marble Low Kings, keeping them guessing, do I have to be on the defense? Can I go out? Can I rush out there a little bit faster? You know, that was just, you know, way too good for the side of Blacklist strategically, of course, in terms of the setup to take the game away from Low Kings. But in control, it's going to be a good balance of both of that, right? Strategy as well as gunfight. Let's see how Low Kings plays this. Yeah, it's come to the point as well as looking at looking at the competition. I don't think that sides would really matter no more as the master will be mm. surely be offered for both ends of the spectrum. Defensive will be given for the set of Blacklist International also the first hand. While the West Point Mob will looking trying to get this initial break here from catwalks and at the same time towards mid lane. Let's see if or not they will be able to circle around and keep their numbers down because low kings they haven't been able to really take away those control points just yet. They are teasing it though. I like the the confidence of trying for both of the control points at the very same time. But Blacklist International has just got such a perfect defense set up. 
and i do agree with you the gunfights are pretty much equal so it's not going to be just purely a defensive advantage on this control match like what we see in some of the other games 21 to 20 just one life in terms of difference between the two skirt goes on to see if or not he can stop the control capture onto a that first first part i think it's captured already what do you think warden i mean first part. is it blue captured First oh, it's not. not yet, it's not, not yet. Not, nope, nope, nope. Uh, I mean, it's just something about Black Blacklist International Ultimate being able to allocate those players from the back end to oh, really cut up the play. And whichever, whatever sector of the map you put yourself into for the set of the Westman Mambo Lokis, you better watch out because Blacklist International oh, yeah. Ultimate loves to slither around, lurking all over the place, which is giving the Westman Mambo Lokis a hard time. And this is kind of a similar nature that we saw in Church and Destroy where the Westman Mambo Lokis should start thinking two steps ahead because Blacklist International Ultimate is exactly doing that man. This is just a test for the Low Kings, but two more seconds, five lives to go. They pause the clock, but can they keep their lives and slay out the players on the side of Blacklist International Ultimate? We have tripled the number of lives. They all hold on. All five of them still alive. They win wow. out three, four gunfights in a row. West Point Mama Low Kings, they desperately want this, and they are going to get that extra bit of time. They force Blacklist away, and they know exactly where they're spawning off from, so they get to keep an eye on all of those entry points. They've been able to upset Almighty. Can they upset Blacklist International Ultimate themselves? Wow. As we move along for this A point to get captured. PJ wow. forcing down one more life to get taken down from Blacklist International Ultimate. But Skurd takes on Luffy, forcing it down to four players now for the side of the West Point. Mama Low Kings. But Yopi takes the one, another out of the equation. But Skurd gets one as, as well. The more trying to put himself up in the board. He gets one, but Rage gets the trade off. It's now left alone for the side of the West Point. Mama Low Kings. PJ, Susano, what can you do? Oh, valiant effort from the Low Kings, nonetheless. Getting that A control point away with just five lives, five kills in a row for the Low Kings as Blacklist tried to defend. But Rage takes your star player out on the side of Low Kings, which only leaves one last one in the name of Susano, and he cannot bear to stand the players of Blacklist. Their gunfights way too hot, the number of lives way too many. Blacklist secures the first round, but now it's Low Kings on the defense. Low Kings on the defense. They have to find a way to capitalize off this. I mean, Blacklist International Ultimate. Mm, is really good at defense. And then let's get into the nature of Search and Destroy, of course, once again. We move along to this round number two with a very explosive start here for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. Big investments coming through, but only two kills has been accumulated so far. And that's going to be three operators being wasted. And no, I don't think that was the best out of the best time for Blacklist International Ultimate to invest into. Let's see exactly how they're going to be circling around with this. And look at the number of operators on standby for activation here by Blacklist. There were four earlier on, but three invested at the same time. Skirt wastes his, but Yobabs and Jabin still alive and kicking. Let's see if or not they can get some uh, huge damage raked up in here. Big investments to come true. Jabin is still waiting for any initiations now, but he's not going to be able to capitalize anything off that. But they do zone out the map, and that is truly profit for them. But in return, they do get the capture here for the first two quadrants all the way down to Alpha. And they are able to lower down the lives of the West Point Mamba Low Kings. Until then, a persistent push here for this Alpha might just be able to give them the capture that they need to have more playing time and to slow down the pace. As right now, they can just play this one slowly but surely because the lives is all sided for them. It is 1-0. Blacklist, they... I've got that first round and it looks like the second round is going to look pretty easy as well. Low Kings barely got a mark, barely scratched the surface of those control points. But Blacklist has already sneaked one so quickly with 17 more lives to go. They've got more than the Low Kings. They just need to continue winning this out. PJ does manage to take Skirt out after the guy goes on a slight rampage. 11 lives left for the Low Kings. But look at that control point. The second quarter is going to be taken away as well. Point PJ here trying to deny. Gets the stab to Jabin. But the life's still on for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. PJ with Annihilator. Trying to go on a spree. John on three spree so far. Two bullets connects through the sky. Not going to be able to find a kill at all. And that's going to be Blacklist International Ultimate now bouncing back to the control point. The contestment is on. They're slowly but surely capturing this one up. And only one more quadrant to go. And they're going to be able to win though by the objective. Yep. Four more lives. And it looks like Blacklist is going to be able to beam through the West Point Mamba Low Kings players. They do have that one player on the objective already. DJ, good concuss, but Jamin responds fantastically. 
behind the barrels with the SKS, but they do not need to do much as Blacklist takes away the attacking round as well. No advantage for Low Kings, and this is the final round that they get to defend, or else Blacklist takes this away. Can they survive? Do <laughs> so far. I think Blacklist has just been playing this down to the T. Down to the T. And uh, if ever the Western Mamba Locus can beat Almighty in control, Yaro! Explosive start once more. Big investments coming through. And if I was the West Point Mamba Locus, I'd be devastated. This is this is just Low Kings choking just a little bit, but it is also a side of Blacklist that's playing this so so well aggression is perfect positioning on top of everything else on control is extremely important and defensively blacklist has been able to really position themselves at key areas within the map to make sure they choke out the players of low kings before they can even get to the objective and that is the key point of victory here for blacklist you know they're on the match point advantage only one more round to go they are going to be able to seal the deal here in winter you know up against the west point mama low kings but low kings has been in this spot before down two rounds is able to reverse this one up against Almighty. Can they do the case, do the same in the same case here for Blacklist International Ultimate? It's gonna be a hard whole order here. As once again, we do see the lives getting drained down from them. 22 for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate, 15 for the set of the West Point Mom Lokings. Not a lot of lives, and they need to show up either way. They can't just hide away like what Blacklist is doing. Not that that's a bad strategy. If you're on defense, you better hide away. You gotta conserve your lives, you gotta attack. You gotta attack without dropping, and that's a very difficult thing to do with control. If you don't have the skill, you're not gonna be able to pull it off. But the tease on the A control point is teased away by Blacklist International with a phenomenal engagement coming through from Yobobs. Eight lives remain here for the side of the West Point Mambo Low Kings. As Blacklist International Ultimate here trying to extend their push further more just to zone out them. Six more lives to reap away for Blacklist International Ultimate. And they are bound to take this game out away from West Point Mambo Low Kings. Eight more seconds to go. Six more lives to reap away. The West Point Mambo Low Kings here trying to put up a fight. And they've been in this situation before. And if they want to step up, it has to be now. But Yopi gets taken down the equation. Left alone is going to be the most low fit Chosano as PJ will get taken out as well. Eight more seconds to go. They get a play into absolute perfection. Annihilator here for the sense of Sano. Can he seal the deal is the question. Absolutely not the time right now for him. And it's only going to be the Morris. And Susano left alone for the side of the West Point Mamba Low Kings and they get shut down. And Blacklist International Ultimate will secure the second game for the series. Lovely tactical play to undo the Annihilator investment coming through from West Point Mamba Low Kings. Concuss after concuss tossed on in there. The guy has to run away, waste the time on his Annihilator and it barely scratched the first surface in terms of beating down the players on the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. They clearly have had a lot of training, a lot of practice on control. Once again, the positions held on to by Blacklist International Ultimate were just way too good on defense. Low Kings could barely reach that control point and sneak it away. Every time they did manage to hop on in there, they get slain out. Phenomenally played by Blacklist. Phenomenal. I mean, and this is one of those games where I can just say that it didn't really go down to the wire at all. This is the first dominating oh, yeah. win we've seen in the series here, and that's just going to be the mastery being offered by Blacklist International Ultimate. Westman Mama Lokings, if they want to extend further more and push through throughout this event, they got to work on the control because Blacklist International Ultimate, I can safely say right now, in terms of the numbers here, man, they are the best team in control. They most definitely are, but you know, we know those numbers mean nothing when it comes to the <laughs> hunger of some of the teams. Just wanting to take that match away from you. And Smart Mega has not done it once. Smart Mega has done it twice. And if Blacklist International Ultimate wants to take it right back from them, they'll have to pretty much try their very best a little bit later on. But we know exactly how serious Smart Mega gets when they really want it. Almighty tried. Almighty couldn't get it. Yep. 3 you know win. I mean, that was the biggest upset we did see. Biggest upset, oh, yeah. honestly, for me. Almighty uh, was going, that the biggest out. upset though? I think the beatdown that Low Kings gave Almighty was a bigger upset because you know you expect yeah. it out of Omega, but for Low Kings to do that and kick them into the lower brackets, that was a shocker for me in GM4. That was the bane, actually. I completely agree with you with, with you with that one right there. If it wasn't for the mm. Westman Mamba Low Kings, I think Almighty would still be in this uh, equation right now. But guess what? The yeah. history was made and they got thrown out out of this event, finishing off work for the Screen Masters for Resurgence. But now, here AJ, we're series now locked on for Blacklist International Ultimate. 
two rounds, two games has been accumulated by Blacklist International Ultimate. And we move over to a map of Raid and Search and Destroy, which the last time that we did see in a Master Series for Westman Mamba Lokins to go against Blacklist International Ultimate, the Westman Mamba Lokins faltered, but you know, we did, we all, we, we both agreed and we both mm -hmm. know for a fact that history doesn't matter now. It's a different day, it's a different game, and it's a different season here as we start things off for this hard point. Though so it's gonna be hard point, uh, Warden, it's not gonna be Search and Destroy. We move along for the first initial take here and look like Blacklist International Ultimate will get the zone. It's just like being in a relationship, Warden. You know, you mess up once, it doesn't mean you're gonna mess up again. You might mess up again, <laughs> but it doesn't mean you're gonna mess up a third time. If you do, that you might not get into another relationship right after that. But you you know exactly what happens. You always get into a relationship no matter how many times you mess up, man. But sometime or else, you listen, <laughs> you learn, right? Hopefully, that's the case here. Lokings clearly have learned, right? Multiple times they try to get into this relationship of getting into the Grand Finals with Arena Masters. They clearly learned. They clearly learned, but have they learned enough to advance to the Grand Finals is the question now. And looking like it's still not going to be an answer that we might be able to define, obviously, because the game hasn't ended for this very run. As we do see the first initial take now for this very first hard point, the lead is on for Blacklist International Ultimate. It's going to stay that way while we're going to be going down to the rotation here for P2. It's only a five point lead, though, but looking like the West Point Mamba Loki is wrapping around and they're going to try to get this back spawns out away from Blacklist International Ultimate, but Rage gets the call and he gets a three piece to deny West Point Mamba Loki. And it's a good meal being cooked up by Blacklist inside of this kitchen now. Good slays all around. Everybody's just hopping on into the hill. And look at player number two just running out. A little bit, um, you know, aggressive for my liking. But he's trying to wrap around the whole team. Skirt's just super aggressive in this matchup. And I actually really like this. But with him taking that opportunity Ooh. to thin down the numbers, they give away the spawn at Garden. Hunter Killer Drone goes out for the Prowl. Doesn't find anyone. It's gonna be the Pretty that gets the, you know, pushed away as well. And West Point Mamba Low Kings, because of the two who score streaks wasted, had that extra bit of opportunity to hop on into the hill. Quite distracted now, and with that opportunity granted for them, they are going to be able to lower down the points for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. So it was just a half take there for Blacklist. We move along for the rotation here for PHG, which Blacklist International Ultimate will win this one out. But in return, Westman Mamba looking trying to offer a split take here, and they are trying to take this one simultaneously from left to right, but they get denied. It's going to be a tough one for Lokings to take this away from Blacklist. Blacklist wanting to cash in here. This is the money hill at Garage. If you can hold on 60 points, baby, in the bank. But it's going to be Rage all alone. Lowly he is. Hunter Killer Drone. Concuss Drone out first. He still wow. gets the slay on Kalo with the Hunter Killer. And the Pretty Girls dropped. Does manage to get the triple on the slay as well. Rage is on fire. Yato backs him up. And this is just Blacklist showing exactly who's king on Raid. If the heat continues here for Blacklist International Ultimate, they might as well get a full 60 for this very hill. West Point Mama Lokings, no contestment on until now, but they still get denied. And only 20 more points to go here to be accumulated. And only until now we do see the West Point Mama Lokings break the hill, but it's only gonna be the scraps that they are gonna be able to get the taste off. 81 to 52, Lokings on the hill. Some scraps for them, early rotation and anchored down by Yopi, but not anchoring down the spawn at Garden might make the low kings pay, but they just don't have the manpower to rotate into Garden just yet. Blacklist holds onto that spawn. They know that well and true, so low kings hop on straight into the hard point, and they have to... What in the world was that spawn for player number four? Luffy just spawned right behind Blacklist, but he couldn't capitalize. Just way too many players around them, and Blacklist so easily take over the hard point. But look at this backstab coming through from player number three on the side of low kings. Once he takes that spawn, it's the GG, but Jabin says, get the hell off of my spawn with the Annihilator. Look at how solidified now Blacklist International Ultimate is towards this basketball court. And Jabin is still on a spree, still on the roll. Whipping out the SKS now on a two spree with Annihilator. Might probably convert some more with an SKS. Holding down the angle, no opportunities granted. And that's gonna be just them holding this one up into absolute perfection. The break tries to come true, but it's just a bit too late for my liking. West Point Mamba Low Kings, they tried to barge in, but whatever they have been doing, they have been consistently being denied.
Oh yeah, I mean, you gotta love Blacklist for undoing each and every single strategy of the Low Kings here. Low Kings are trying every single play in the book, every single play not even discovered just yet. They made their own book, but nothing's working against Blacklist. Every single play has just been absolutely perfect. The timing of the score streaks have been perfect. Wow. They wasted a couple initially, but they're not wasting any now. Jabin with the double. Easy secure now on P5. Central Garden belongs to Blacklist, and the investment comes through for the Sparrow as well. Kalo good slide. The timing does not well for Blacklist this time round, and Kalo makes the play, but the numbers on the side of Blacklist just way too much. Now it's 1v1 here, and it's very hill, but Jabin gets the kill. Tree free for him. Finally, he gets shut down, but in return, the cavalry has arrived. Yado putting himself into the equation. They get the contestment right in, and the West Point Mamba Low Kings really having a hard time putting themselves up in this hill, and in the process, once more, they try to break this one up for dear life, and they are absolutely going to be able to do so. But once mm -hmm. more, just looking at this statement of the game, it's only the scraps that the West Point Mamba Low Kings will be able to accumulate out away from Blacklist International Ultimate. 150 to 75. Low Kings now. Scrap points once again. I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while we've seen scrap points. Just purely what the Low Kings are all about in a hard point matchup. They've been pretty dominant, but Blacklist International Ultimate playing this on an ultimate level right here, right now. Laundry taken over by Skirt. Slays the first player, does not get Luffy. It's a double team that hops on in there. Power position taken away. Three players flood from the side of Laundry. This has to be the takeover by West Point Mama Low Kings, no matter what age he does. And they hold on to it for a single second. Player number four holds on to it. It's Luffy with the Annihilator investment as well. So West Point should be able to catch up on this hill. Finally, the first time that we're going to be seeing a clearance here for the center of the Westman Mamba Locus, but actually, player 5 is the only player left alone for them. The more so, with a claw, will be able to invest this one up for dear life, and he's going to be able to capitalize big time. Two kills for him, but Skrrg, playing all around coconuts, will actually get taken down as well. And it's a big trade off here for in between two of these teams, but it's not going to matter no more for the West Point Mamba Locus. Blacklist International Ultimate, they get the break inside a hill, which supposedly a point that was so given for them, they absolutely denied them once more. I think the biggest strategy that Blacklist has against teams here is just to give away one game, make them think that they are the kings and it is possible to beat them and then they slap them with an absolute annihilating defeat. Blacklist International wow. Ultimate truly, absolutely dominant in this hard point at rain. But Low Kings, the match is not out of their hands just yet. They just need to win a couple of solid fights here to take that hill away and make sure they can snuff out the aggression out of Blacklist. But you can see Operator after Operator after operator the investment is just so threatening on the side of blacklist and it all seems to be working out demos the timing is perfect and the break is perfect question is can they hold on they're gonna win the gunfights inside a hill and they are absolutely gonna be able to do so close so far has been the player that we should be watching off here for the west point mambo looking but each and every player has to step up keep in mind blacklist international ultimate only needs nine more points to claim for them to enter the 20 point mark and looking like the west point mambo looking gets the proper read and they want to deny the moors on a tree spree denying the player from the back ends will be forcing blacklist international ultimate to rotate down to p3 and finally we do see a hill being won over by the west point mambo low kings 191 124 this is the money hill for the low kings but it's just the scrap points picked up in the kitchen it's going to be making a little bit of difference here rotation from the side of blacklist a little bit of a lag but we're not going to be too worried about that demos a single pretty kill but those are important slays coming on through it does help them to spawn out of that passageway and they hop straight back into that money hill but blacklist international attacking from three fronts now they fail at all three fronts and west point mamba low king still holds on one more money hill for the West Point Mamba Lokings for them to even things up and they're gonna be able to just be even ground here with Blacklist International Ultimate. The push ensues and they deny 35 more points to claim on this very hard point and Blacklist International Ultimate will try to go for another run but wherever they go, it's just gonna be the West Point Mamba Lokings now winning wow. those gone fights and only till then, only till then if ever they're gonna be able to claim the last Blah. few points on this very hill, they are gonna be bound to just really put this game down to the wire. I mean, they're right back in it, man. Final 15 seconds, they sure as hell are gonna get every single bit of the points because Blacklist International Ultimate is already rotating around. They wanna get that spawn, but three players aiming for the exact same as well. And what a pretty courtesy wow. of Yopi. He takes that double. Everybody else hopping on in towards that basketball court. But I wanna see them inside of Garden. It is Blacklist that moves towards the Garden side. They're gonna be taking over the favorable spawns, but it is the Low Kings inside of the hill. Say hello to yet another pretty, says Zemos, and they take that player down but i don't
don't know about this setup. I'm not too confident on the side of Low Kings. Garden spawned for the set Blacklist International Ultimate and they put themselves inside a hill. Luffy with Annihilator trying to pop up, but he gets denied by Jamin himself. 197 to 198. The lead was on for the side of the West Point Mamba Lokis with Blacklist International Ultimate. They want to deny, but the backstab from the Immortals will come in. Yaddo skirt AG under his name, but till then, whatever the West Point Mamba Lokis have been able to do, Jamin has been able to deny. But that was a fundamental mistake, unfortunately, for the West Point Mamba Lokis. They had the man. Power. They had the positioning to take away the favorable spawns. They went in straight up for a hill, a hill that was not unlocked just yet, and they gave away the momentum to Blacklist International. Now they need to catch right back up, but the hard point after this is going to be even more tougher. Basketball court, to a certain degree, is winnable, but they still get the scrap point. Central Garden all wide open, and look at the score streaks. Look at the operators on the side of Blacklist. This is where it potentially ends, Warden. One final hold, one final big hold to seal the deal here to send the West Point Mamba Lokis down to the bottom brackets up against Smart Omega is what the Blacklist International Ultimate is hoping to do. But the break is on for them. They get two players around the perimeter, but the cavalry has arrived for Blacklist International Ultimate. Javen with Annihilator, annihilating the composition for this very run, and they get the clearance inside a hill. 40 more seconds to go, make that 36, 237 on the points. Blacklist still has got a couple of score streaks unused on their side. West Point Mama Lokings had used already everything to secure that basketball court even before it was unlocked. So I think, unfortunately, that one fundamental mistake has given this match away to Blacklist after Lokings GG's. fought their way back into this hard point. Unfortunate defeat, but Blacklist International Ultimate remain perfect on raid. And they remain perfect overall for the series. This team has been undefeated. And all it took was them to learn from their previous mistakes to be able to dominate this run once more. Blacklist International Ultimate will deny the West Point Mamba Lokis once more to enter the Grand Finals. No, sir. It was West Point Mamba Lokis that denied themselves that opportunity. I did not expect that mistake. I did not expect yep. it mainly aye, because... Aye, aye, aye. It wasn't that they had to force a rotation around from Central. They were already at that Central Garden. And they chose to move into Kitchen and then hop on into that safe room and attack Basketball Court immediately. I think that was the biggest shot call that went wrong for the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings. Especially because they had a double Predi on the awaiting. They played the Predi well. They used the Predator Missile to take out the player from that Garden Whoa. Spawn. But nobody was there to claim the spawn. And Blacklist just very easily spawned out of there, hopped on into basketball court, slayed them out, and took a majority of those points to catch right back up and finished it off at the Central Garden. And the, and the mistake as well here from the side of West Point Mamba Loking, surprisingly enough, is the overusage, the overinvestment of all of those score streaks before that time was right. They, it just felt like it was just a little bit too forced. And Blacklist Ultimate, you know they're going to punish you if you make mistakes like that. And it's just going to be a matter of question as well. What went wrong to their decision making or their projection now? And I think the Westmore Mamba Lokings, I really hate to say this and I don't want to mm. speculate, but I think they got a little bit too desperate to the point where they weren't so composed to um, uh, compose enough to think what was the right thing to do. And uh, being desperate in a, in a very dire situation like that could really bite you down. And that's just how the West Point Mambo Lokins has been trampling down. But you know, it's not yet the end for them. Lower brackets, they go, and they're going to be going up against Smart Omega. It's, just, it's a tad bit unfortunate because that was so winnable. They had the lead, and that one fundamental mistake kind of just threw that away. And it's confusing because that Predi still got dropped within Garden. So it indicated they knew that the players were there and obviously they could see right and when the predi was called out you basically get information in terms of the positioning of the rest of the blacklist players as well you might not have mm -hmm. uh, you know like three years to check out the positioning but you get a glance at the map and information should have been thrown around but blacklist international ultimate they say no problem bruh and they drop black sorry west point mamba low kings into the low bracket finals where they will meet smart omega could this be yet another third spot for low kings or will we see them fight their way back into the grand finals it will only be known in the next series warden it'll only be known and that's gonna be uh, you know either them or smart omega going back on top and if ever they do go back on top they gotta deal with a blacklist international ultimate and the best of seven with a map advantage
and unfortunately it's that way now, you know, compared to a twice to beat, which is pretty tiring in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely tiring. I was not a huge fan of the twice to beat and, you know, at least if he had seen some sort of drama, I would have loved it, but it just wasn't the case. But here's the thing. I really love the fact that West Point Mamba Low Kings showed us that if they did not make that one move, this game would have gone their way. So if they do make their way back into the Grand Finals, it's not just going to be a one-sided prediction. It is very, very winnable. West Point Mamba Low Kings have reached a point where we can assume they have a chance at being champions here. It's just that something that we pointed out very early on, you cannot afford to make any mistakes, especially against a yep. team like Blacklist International Ultimate, who has barely made any mistakes. I mean, a couple of misplays with their score streaks, but it did not cost them anything at all. The backup was always there, and you saw that the moment those score streaks were misplayed, Rage quickly whipped out his operator because he knew, uh-oh, okay, now the swarm is just going to, the swarm of players is just going to be flooding into my hill, especially at Kitchen. I have to do something, right? He wanted to keep that, but he had to pull that out in that one split second he had to make that play and that's just you know it just adds on so much more credibility to the side of blacklist international ultimate and it, it's really impressive you know because if we're gonna be looking at this on paper as well mechanically and in terms of playing cards they all they both are pretty even and it was just mm. all gonna come down to how they were they are gonna be executing their place for this for this game day itself and guess yeah. what blacklist international ultimate had really a complete set of cards more than enough to just put West Point Mamba Low Kings down in a very dominant fashion. And keep in mind, this is the only game where the West Point Mamba Low Kings was able to win. And the rest of the games, uh, AJ, just by looking at the whole rundown in terms of the score, Blacklist International Ultimate, as hard as it, it is to say, they were able to dominate and just be on the driver's seat for the vast majority of it. Yeah, and I think the control match kind of just broke the confidence of the Low Kings just a tad bit. And I'm confused why that's even a possibility at this point because the Low Kings just need to believe that they are one of the Titans. I mean, you just have to bounce back, man. It's it's another breakup analogy. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you get dumped, you gotta bounce back. You, know? hey. you can't you can't be lingering on those thoughts. When you get catfished, you know you know what? You when you get catfished, you gotta bounce back, my friend. Isn't that right, sir? In in which, if ever the Westman Mama Low Kings will <laughs> play the same card. <laughs> no, no, no. If ever the Westwood Mamba Lokings will play the same cards as me, they might just be um, turning into a successful... Um, they might have a successful relationship, because that's what I did. I got one. <laughs> With hey. a cat? No? Nah, nah, nah. She real, she real. She legit, oh, though. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> legit. Legit, man. But of course, Blacklist International Ultimate, if you look on the flip side of things, they, they were just so good. You know, we talk about the things that West Point Mamba Lokings did not do so well. You have to talk about the things that Blacklist did so well freaking well out oh. there right yato picks up the mvp of the game title but he was not the only performer out there i believe more i believe three players on the side of blacklist had more mm -hmm. than two minutes on the hill i mean how often do you see that usually you get one player with two minutes and then the rest will just have like one one minute and 30. yeah yeah uh, this this is just a okay, not often never mind <laughs> I mean, 26.75 average kills for 25.67 average deaths, 1.39 KD ratio makes Yato a very happy boy. This guy is heavy. He's solid, all right. He's built thick, and I, I'm not joking. I try to carry him in during the Garena Masters three playoffs. Yeah, for a photo, mm -mm, I nearly broke my arm. I nearly fell down. And, and just a quick insights, guys. When I when I saw AJ IRL, he's pretty buff. <laughs> you were you were bigger than I expected, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I well, hear that a lot. <laughs> no, nah, really let's buff. move on with the conversation. It's, it's just a day. It's Championship Sunday. Nothing much for you guys to worry about. Just kick back, grab some snacks. We've got a whole lot <laughs> of Call of Duty Mobile action coming up for all of y'all. And just as exciting as this first series was. We promise you the next two is going to be as exciting because the right after this is going to be Smart Mega taking on the one and only West Point Mamba Low Kings that has just gotten their confidence broken a tad bit. So it's going to be a question whether they bounce back quickly or they end up depressed a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Everybody doesn't know. So it, we're just we're bound to find out. But before finding out, AJ, we're going to be having actually an interview session with Blacklist International Ultimate. Let's see exactly who that is. Jay Blitzer! 
Okay, I, I know I can't ask you what internet connection you were using in the car, but I have to ask you, why were you in the car the other day? Uh, I have an event to go to. So uh, it's just in the middle of uh, in the road. So I, we just stopped the car and I played. And that's dedication, man. That's dedication. And you still performed phenomenally well. So good job, bro. I think that was one of the most exciting games I've seen. Just because you were in the car, you had not the best of internet connections, but you're still one of the biggest players out there, right? Talk to me a little bit about this victory against West Point Mamba Low Kings. What did you guys think about them, especially in that raid hard point? Was there any point of time where you thought, okay, we might have to go to an SND? Uh, we just focus on the game. Uh, we didn't think of the next game. So what we did is uh, we did our rotations, uh, our play style, and our best in every situation. So mm. we played it uh, smartly and, uh, of course, by team. You definitely played that smartly. We saw all those rotations. Good job. Who was calling the plays out there? Was it the coach or were you calling the plays in terms of the rotations? No, we, most of it uh, was, you know, of course, uh, with the help of the coaches and the team. Oh, fantastic, man. Very well played. What an question from you, bro. Um, as we all know, in the Green Masters uh, series here, uh, there ha only has been two teams that has been able to win a championship, and that is you, obviously, the first winners for the first run for Green Masters and Smart Omega. How do you feel about being the team that has the best odds right now to win the fourth series of the Green Masters? Uh, Mm. And I think we need to keep our composure. I really love it. Really love it. I mean, AJ, this job's not done. You gotta restore your smile until the very end. Until until you get the victory's crown for your side. Last and final question, AJ, to wrap things up. Um, Jaben, question is: uh, This is gonna be a hard one. Who do you want to see rise back up from the lower brackets? Who do you want to execute more? Smart Omega or West Point Mamba Low Kings? Uh, Omega okay, uh, or Low Kings? Uh, the team wants Omega. And I want Omega too. I think if they do make it back up, it's going to be one of the greatest revenges executed by West Point Mamba Low Kings. Jaben, congratulations on your win. We will see you guys a little bit later on for the Grand Finals. Uh, thank you. Interesting. Interesting, Championship AJ. Sunday, baby. They want Smart Omega because, you know, the very first rendezvous, they picked up the championship for Garena Masters. Season 1, they were the champs, you know, and they took it all the way. But Season 2 and 3, it was Smart Omega that beat them down. It was Smart Omega that beat them twice in Season 2 when they were twice to beat. They beat them down 3-2 to two in Season 3. And now an opportunity to rise back up to the occasion. But also, you know, we are assuming that West Point Mamba Low Kings are not going to do anything about this. We are assuming that West Point Mamba Low Kings does not have a say in this when they actually do award it. Yeah, definitely. So, and, you know, I'm loving the mentality now for the Blacklist International Ultimate. I mean, Jabin said they're just going to reserve their smiles until the very end. The job's not done. So they know exactly what's up, what, what's about to come, especially the fact that if ever Smart Omega will rise back to the top, they just yeah. can't celebrate. I mean, we're dealing with Smart Omega and they're basically bound to <sighs> offer a three-peat. So that's just about that. I mean, you know, I am looking forward to the fights. I really don't care who wins. I really don't care who takes home the championship because I know today is going to be one of the best days of shoutcasting for me because every single series is going to be a hot one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to take a quick short break right after this bracket update. We'll give you a refresher first. Smart Omega, they wait down there at the bottom because they beat almighty to earn this third place semi-finals placement and blacklist international ultimate just annihilated west point mamba low kings three to one a great victory taken up at that hard point initially by west point mamba low kings but a three back-to-back -back victories sent the low kings down into the semi-finals this is going to be the low brackets finals west point mamba low kings taking on smart omega in a best of five the winner jumps back up into the grand finals for a best of seven where blacklist international ultimate has got a one map advantage it's gonna be one hot day warden it's gonna be very one hot day and you know as we approach to our break here aj you guys in the comment section down below 
Get ready to support. If you're on the side of Smart Omega, comment down below. Hashtag go Smart Omega. If you're on the side of the West Point Mamba Low Kings, comment down below. Hashtag go the West Point Mamba Low Kings. Next matchup, AJ. Wait. The side of it all. Now they're in the finals already. Can I know? Or can they know? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What? I don't know. You told me they will know if they get into the finals. I mean... Never you mind, know. Warden. We're going to take a break. You, you, you talk to <laughs> Kelly later. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we'll be back with the show.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Garena Masters 4. We're now on our final lower bracket match of the championship Sunday. The two-time defending champion Smart Omega taking on the Ravenous Low Kings. One will advance and take on Blackness International Ultimate on the grand finals and the other taking home the third placement. Warden, how are you feeling about this match here? WPM Low Kings just got recently taken down by Blackness Ultimate up there in the upper bracket. Now, how are you liking their odds here? If I was to feel for the Westman Mama Lokins, I'd be scared. I mean, we're going up, they're going up against the the back-to-back -back champions of Green and Masters 2 and 3. So that's a really hard um, factor that they have to face upon. And keep in mind, after this, if ever they do advance, which is pretty far-fetched to me to predict right now. Because they still have to go up against Mortal Mega. They have to go back to Blacklist International Ultimate, which they have they faltered up against in the semifinals early on. So in terms of the odds for Black, for, for the West Point Mambo Low Kings or in terms of how I feel for them, it doesn't look so bright, my guy. Doesn't look so bright either for me, honestly. Well, the last time these two met was in Greater Masters 3, of course, lower bracket, this lower bra upper bracket final, semifinals, where, you know, Smart Omega was able to win in game five of against WPM Low Kings and says search and destroy takeoff. It was deadly close. And I am hoping that WPM Low Kings would be able to change a little bit more on their SND here coming into this matchup because we all know Smart Omega, that is their best gameplay. And if they don't take that, it might just spiral things out of control here. Yeah, I mean, uh, something about uh, the respawn share for Smart Omega could be the leeway for the West Point Mambo Low Kings, but till then, we all know how cohesive not just the players, but the heads themselves from the back end that has been really making those plays, aka the Brainiacs, the coaches. They are so quick to adapt on what's to come for the next uh, battle that they are going to be going up against with. And West Point Mambo Low Kings has been one of those teams that they were able to trample down, especially in a down to the wire situation like this. So for the West Point Mambo Low Kings to go inside this matchup, I think one nature that they got to apply into coming from Blacklist to Smart Omega is that they have to start thinking two steps ahead. Because clearly, once the pacing is on from their predecessors, they, are, they get a hard time. They just get a hard time catching up. It's always this kind of story that we need, need to talk about. WPM Low Kings always being the top three in Garena Masters. And, you know, it hurts to see that they're kind of falling for the same thing all over again this year. But I am hoping that their performance here versus Smart Omega is their true best because they don't want, you know, any more mistakes here because the team that they're going up against with are the defending champions who is looking to aim for that three-peat and, of course, score a history run here at Green and Masters 4. And obviously speaking here for WPM Low Kings, they are quite in a luck as they have me here today. And every time I cast, you know, WPM Low Kings, they kind of, it kind of boosts their performance a little bit, but we will test it out here as they go up against Smart Omega here for the second schedule of the day. Now, Blacklist International Ultimate Day will be waiting on that grand finals and that marks their fourth straight Garena Masters appearance. Can you imagine? They've been so consistent that they are marking it their fourth. And they're currently one out of four in, you know, in this appearance. One out of four. One out of three. One out, one out of mean, three. Uh, might be two out of four soon enough. And uh, it's just all going to come down to, you know, retaining the mentality that they that we got from Jabin, no? Because we did ask him earlier, which, what, how do you feel about advancing to the Grand Finals? Which he said he's not really too excited about because the job is not done. It's not finished. And that's some, that, that's the mentality that I really aspire for each and every team to have. The job is not finished, not until it is finished. So Blacklist International Ultimate, from the back ends, you can really expect them to just tag along and look at what's the game plan here or the gameplay for Smart Omega or the Westman Mambo Lokis could be until then they could really double it down and prepare themselves on what's to come in the future. I have to agree with you on that. I mean, Blacklist Ultimate last year won the first two major events for Garena MSP. And right after that, consistent second place in Garena Masters. And of course, a bad placement on CDFI 2022. So having that reset, getting their touch together back again, it's going to be important for them to actually take home the trophy here this year. But it's too early to say now as we see WPM Low Kings are trying to aim for that grand final slot. They have Yopi, PJ, D Morris, Luffy. Kalo and Susano, and I love what I'm seeing from the three-headed monsters, Yo, PJ, and Demors. But on the uh, SND, I need more from Luffy. Yep. Only had three kills on that SND standoff, and that's not gonna work if you have your main sniper not really doing the job for you here. 
And you know, with Tisano as well rocking the scopes, unfortunately, it's not really putting up the impact as much as we would love to see. If ever Luffy is going to be slacking like that, you really just got to hope that Tisano will be doubling it down for the squad of the Western Mambo Low Kings, which wasn't really the case. So uh, they've been trampling in big time, and you can clearly see in their face that they are pretty focused and trying to warm up themselves before heading straight into the battlefield. And you can clearly see how focused the Mowers is. He knows what's about to come. Tisano as well, just walking all around, and <laughs> this is just the Westman Mambo low kings that you all would want to see, especially if you're siding for them, as they're pretty focused right now, Kali. I wonder what Susano is doing and what he is thinking right now, because I've been in that moment, you know, walking <laughs> back and forth, thinking what to do up next. And well, I guess I know where he is coming from. And they're taking on Smart Omega later on. And of course, they have Candy Kevs, Risky, Idra Tin, and Whoopi. And the highlight reel maker here yesterday. It was risky. Man scored a lot of MVPs yesterday and was a key reason why they were able to sweep Almighty down there at the lower bracket. And now they are in here. It matters how well is that engine coming into this matchup? Is it oiled up? Is it well or is it cold? That's something that we need to see from them. And that's something that we're seeing right now. Jericho just fueling the boys up for the set of smart Omega. I, yeah, this is something that I just love to see, man. This is such a wonderful take here. You can see the focus within them. And coming in, despite the fact that, you know, Jericho did call out that, you know, they are about, they, they are going to offer a different beast towards this playoffs. You can best to believe, you can, it's really safe to believe that they're going to offer their 100%. There's no room for mistakes here and they can't, they can't afford to trample down no more because they are indeed down to the lower bracket. Again, this is going to be the last lower bracket matchup and your last head-to-head -head on this thing as well. PJ and Ed are going to be your two head-to-head -head players for both ends. And Idra having far better KD ratio with 1.6 to 3 compared to PJ's 1.18. PJ has 25.75 average kill, which is three, three kills better than Idra's 22.33. But what matters here is that they are stable in terms of putting up these numbers for their squad and allow these other four players to be influenced by their greatness and of course follow up and secure this victory. I mean the endurance and the uh, invulnerability of these players is something that is just worth mentioning here you know as well because you know both ends for PJ and Nidra being able to just stay on a positive end could really just rock the game further more but with much more of a bigger impact here for Idra especially around the parameter will be interesting to see later on. I mean, these two are completely different players. Uh, and you know, with Idra being an anchor, with PJ being the objective, it's really interesting to see this head to head. Yeah, of course. And now we need to take a look at the maps because that's how we are going to determine who's going to have a better advantage coming into this game. But of course, the bands as well are going to be key here. And if you're WPM Lokings and you saw the last matchup between Smart Omega and AMT yesterday, he got a bandit gravity vortex gun because that's how they were able to dominate their response yesterday. And of course, it's going to be a problem for you if you will not take that away here coming into this response. But yeah, PJ Idra are going to be the key here. And now taking a look at the maps and modes. Ooh. Take off, standoff, band. Best map of low kings. A best map of Omega in hardpoint takeoff. That's going to be assignments being done by both ends. But... Very interesting take here. Mm -hmm. Operator skill band, Spyro, and Purifier. And well, we are going to be left with that Gravity Vortex gun. And Warden, are you seeing what I am seeing? I indeed am. And uh, okay. as much as you, as much as we would love to praise the Gravity Vortex here, especially for Tin for Smart Omega, Carlo, I mean Carlo or Chlo himself, it's a pretty good guy with the Gravity Vortex as well. And it might okay. just go head to head with either the Gravity Vortex or the Annihilator. But for the maps and modes here, Cali, hard point on Ashenda, and we've seen this before. We're gonna see That's this scary. once more. Yep. Um, I'm I am scared. This is like a total opposite. This is just the total. You know, deja vu of what happened last year during Green and Master Season 3. The first map between WPM Low Kings and Smart Omega during their upper bracket semifinals was Hashenda, where WPM Low Kings won it 250 to 233. So, the day is a new year though, and I might be seeing WPM Low Kings do their best here, but we all know Smart Omega, Warden. They love playing respawns at this point. Kebs finally got his old form back. Risky, totally a monster yesterday. 
And if this, if this two clicks, WPM Low Kings will be likely in trouble when they are trying to break this hard point. And you, you, we should really all talk, talk about the the experience that Jericho can offer for yeah. the map trend itself. We know we all know that Jericho competed in the Call of Duty scene way back, and uh, him being <laughs> present in uh, in in competitive game modes in, in competitive rundowns with Shenda being on the line, you can really expect that a rotation share for Shenda will be into absolute perfection. But moving over to Search and Destroy, it's actually going to be slums, and it's going to be forced down by Smart Omega. And I don't really know how to feel about this one. It's going to be a 50-50, but again, the saving grace there is that they are going to be on the defensive side. WPM looking kind of pick that Gorilla squad, the red side, which is kind of very 50-50 for me, because most likely if you're going to play SND and you get to pick the side, you would love to use that defensive side because it's easy to defend the sides. That's how it mm -hmm. usually goes. So. Looking forward to this map number two. And right after we played at SND Slums, we're going to be heading back into Control Raid, which we all know is where WPM Lokings was able to defeat Almighty coming back, winning back to back to back rounds. So that's going to be promising for him. But Smart Omega will start on the defensive side. And again, it's always this defensive side that gets the bet that gets the best out of the map here and in the game mode itself. Definitely. A lot of history line, a lot of accolades that we can talk about now, um, Kali. But one thing that me and AJ loves to point out as well, and I know for a fact you can relate, is that it's a new day, it's a new series yeah. here, and it's going to be a new run for this lower bracket finals. Whoever wins this will be coming back to the top to go up against Blacklist International Ultimate, and who tramples and who loses and who falters will be sent out being the third placer for this event. Cali Gaming, I don't like to do this. I didn't ask oh no. AJ this, and I know for a <laughs> fact you know what I'm going to be asking. On the hot seat we go, series. You don't have to name who's going to win, but in terms of the scoreline, how do you think this one's going to pan out? I think people will know if I say the scoreline. It's going to be 3-1 here. 3-1. 3-1. Oh, and... I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking, and I don't know if <laughs> the people in the comment section down below knows what you're thinking here. But three one is a very, very far number than one I initially expected. But until then, Cali, it's just all down to the teams to prove us if it's gonna be this, the score line here. And you may reveal later on uh, which team we were vouching for. But for now, let's head straight into the game now. Finally. We are transitioning to Shenda Hardpoint here, Kelly. The first game for this lower bracket finals. And this is the initial start on what's to come now. West Point Mambo Low Kings up against Smart Omega. Yeah, I mean, some history just coming to line up in here. If Low Kings win this series, Smart Omega, they will fail to defend their title and a new king will be crowned. And Low Kings will mark their first ever grand finals appearance in the entire Green Masters history. But if Smart Omega wins this one, the title defense going to continue and a chance for a three-peat is definitely there to begin with. Now we start it all off and Low King's gonna be there early in the hard point. And of course, they do not have the P2 spawns for now, but they're doing a great job battling for position as they have top floor, top floor control here. They got top red, they got top blue, they also got open hall as well. And looking like they are gonna be able to zone out Smart Omega here. And this is exactly what they were able to offer for the first time around when they had to run here up against Smart Omega. And this is a pretty interesting take here. I mean, a very impressive run because considering the fact that this is a very open hill, you wouldn't really expect any team to accumulate this much points on towards this hill. But you know, Smart Omega wants to, wants to put themselves up in the board, but it's not going to work out as the West Point Mambo Lokens will get the clean out and that's going to be forcing Smart Omega to head on to new. That, leads, that, that lead is going to be very useful here, knowing that they're going to be late to rotate here at this coming hard point. So. They may lost some points here, but it is definitely not going to hurt for now as they have this lead. But Smart Omega Cavs will be looking to get that spawn for this squad, so that's going to be very good. And now they just have to stack the first onslaught here. The break attempt coming through for Low Kings, and watch how Risky just turned them down one by one. But you'll be there to sneak through like a snake, and there they go. They break the hill. While breaking the hill in the process, they do get the back spawns, but the cavalry has arrived here for the set Smart Omega. Kev's holding this one down to the hard left here for the West Point Mambo Lokinx, and he is going to be able to put up the impact. Four three for him, could be able to make it a five before Ooh. he goes down. He absolutely can, but the battle still ensues here, and looking like the West Point Mambo Lokinx will shine on top. Great job here for Lokinx, keeping away Omega from getting all of the time here with early rotation that was made 
but if you are low kings right now this is going to be the best scenario for you to move into the next hard point because crap time gonna be held in by smart omega so this is where we come in and see how well this good this in this operator skills get invested because the last time we saw wpm low kings up against blackness international ultimate every operator wasn't really used that efficiently so that needs to change here as we open up this next hard point smart omega is gonna be there swarming with numbers and they're gonna claim that time early in terms of the operators here only one operator well available for westman mamba looking in comparison to four for smart omega and that's just a quick translation to the gunfights being won much more over here for Smart Omega. And as they continue to run this one down here for P3, they are letting the spree continue for them. The Westman Mamba looking, so we're trying to get a break. They are going to try to offer a pinch, but it does get denied. Well defined spawns here for Westman Mamba looking and Smart Omega. It's going to be a head to head clash here as we see Gravity Vortex will get invested for the set caps. He will take down PJ. He will take down Klo. But in the, re in the return here for Westman Mamba looking, they take down the rest and they get the break instead of Hill. Uh, that is going to be a great the way for low kings to use their raw vanilla guns just to take away the last few moments here of this hard point but still again what we are seeing right now wpm low kings has always been late to rotate and that needs to change here coming into the second set of hard point that we're going to have but we open up this first set last hard point that's going to be on the rocks and omega going to be there early and this is one of those money hills that you can use those cloth to actually be efficient with it. You can use the walls to bounce it back and of course claim those skills. And we open it up with Omega inside. Game is pretty close here. Cavs on the front lines will pick up one, but Klo chase him down. Luffy on the feed will put himself on the board, but Tin and Whoopi shuts them down. Luffy on the feed though will get on a two spree, actually on a four spree. And just like that, only two more players to go to sweep out. They might just able to get the break instead of hill. The more's on the front lines. Up against Cavs. Gonna be able to get the scale. One more to go. And just like that, they they get the clearance and they are going to be able to run down the points for them. 58 to 69. The lead is on for the set of Spartan Omega. And if ever they are going to be able to get the break, they are going to be able to retain the lead as well. Uh, big plays being made here by Demors and PJ. They're trying to keep away Omega from getting this hard point. And there you go. They bought a lot of time. And that leads to them, of course, scoring more of the hail points here coming into this P4. Now it's time for a reset. Hopping back onto new, they're gonna have that initial setup. They get everything in the middle, and they have Demors actually lighting up all the players he sees. He currently leads this lobby along with Yopi with 20 kills. And for Smart Omega, they have Kevs there with 18 and risky backing them up with 14 and pin holding off the point. A hard point opens up and low kings once again. They're gonna claim the early rotation, of course, as well as the hard point. And this is where they claim the most time earlier. So looking forward to how well they do it here for the second time. Looking forward to how well the response points will be as well for the side of Smart Omega. And looking like they are going to be able to just sweep down the, the players for now out of the objective to just slow down and put the pacing here for the Westman Mambo Lokings in a stagnant state. But in the process, we do see the Westman Mambo Lokings trying to circle around the hallways just to get more map control before they barge in inside a hill. And they are going to be able to absolutely just run it down for a moment or so but the barge will come true for the set of smart omega and it's still a really 50 50 battle here for this p1 yeah but the good thing here is that smart omega they actually have the early spawns the early rotation coming through to p2 and that's where they claim their most time and where low kings really had a struggle so that's going to give them the advantage moving on out but they gotta stand their ground and Kevs needs to win this gunfight. He wins one and that's going to be backups made and the investment with the gravity vortex. This is what I'm talking about. They're so good at investing and very efficient with it as they open up this hard point once again. Kevs has been the de facto. He's been the reason why Smart Omega will have a good hold on this P2. Stop the pinch though. Look like Yopi will shut him down. The West Point Mamba Loki they get the break inside a hill. Smart Omega get washed, gets washed out, but they still try to barge in inside a hill. Luffy with an Annihilator, cutting off the rotation here from the beach side and looking like he is not gonna be able to get any opportunities no more. But finally, he does get the kill for his last third to the last shot. And just like that, they are rocking the lead furthermore. Ooh. And the Luffy here, just slowly but surely bouncing back and forth. But Smart Omega, they still wanna put a fighter for this p2 ah big shot there for luffy but it is still not enough smart omega they just keep coming no matter how much you brush them up they're gonna go and contest and that's the resilience that you really need to worry about if you're low kings this lead can never be too safe with how well smart omega has been putting their numbers inside the game 
now we're opening up P3, and this is the best thing that Blue Kings have in mind. Get those three players inside the next hill, and they also have number one and four in blue, rotating from the back of the warehouse, so Risky will be caught into a pinch. But if he wins this gunfight, that could be trouble, but he's gonna lose that, so Low Kings now having far better advantage, moving up into this hill. But Omega, they're coming here, swarming around, and the pitch play now about to be in soon. So far, it's the biggest lead we've seen in this game. But Smart Omega longing to glory it down as Risky will fight too. Kev's on the feet nice. as well. Risky on a triple spree. Make it a fort actually. What? But Yopi shuts him down. And the cavalry arrives. Smart Omega here slowly but surely losing the gunfights. Oh. It's now a 1v1 here instead of Hill. Tin up against Klo and looking like Tin will win this one out. Uh, Tin is just so efficient with his gun. He's the only player that uses that EM2 despite playing the objective where we know you need to have something that is very fast but he just make light work with that ar definitely one of the best obg players we have in the game right now 142 to 123 as the hard point expires we're hopping back to new it's a 50 50 on its spawn battle rotation gonna be quite early for both ends it is just who wins that gunfight and who maintains that Edmitch advantage from the rocks and it seems like it's going to be WPM getting caught into the breeze as they will be taken down one by one with the gravity vortex invested by Tin. But only one player here for Smart Omega will be inside a hill. It's gonna be Whoopi himself up against Luffy. Can he get the kill? He absolutely can. Now the well-defined sides here for the West Point Mamba Kings and Smart Omega will come true. But player five here wrapping around. That's gonna be Idra for you with an SKS trying to flip the spawns as well. Up against Luffy, which Luffy is not well aware. He does shut them down. But till then, the West Point Mamba Loking still holding onto the hill itself and looking like they are gonna be able to retain the sides. Four go down there for Omega. That should be more time for Low Kings as they are just lining up the defense inside. There's two players stacking and holding this parameter away from Smart Omega. And now Kalo with the Morris. We saw them how they popped off on this on the last rotation and they are doing the same thing all over again and again and again and again. Take a look at that. We claim most of the time here and we're hopping back to new with Low Kings having a surmountable lead. That should cut them off some slack here if they fail and those great rotations come in here at this third rotation of Hardpoint. They got, they can't change their pacing. They just gotta play the same way. They can't afford to lead, the, to let the oh, heat no. build up for the side of Smart Omega. As we can see now, the first time around, we get to see Smart Omega get the full clearance here for this P1. The West Point Mambo Loking's trying to circle themselves all the way down to the hallways and looking like they are gonna be able to get the break inside a hill. West Point Mambo Loking's 15 more points to claim and they are gonna be able to enter the 200 point mark so convincingly. I mean, I, I love how Loki is just playing the point, and I love how Smart Omega is winning their gunfights. But at some point, you're taking a look at the game. What is Hard Point all about? It's all about scoring the most time in the hill. And that needs to change here for Smart Omega. They gotta put more players inside. It's not just all about thin. You gotta at least send out Whoopi or Edder inside if you are struggling to get inside at Hard Point, and then we go and see. And low kings reach that 200 point mark, so they're a bit closer now to the end goal. Really close, really close. Only 44 more points to go for them to claim. But we all know Smart Omega wow. still wants to put up a fight. And the process still continues now as Smart Omega to get the first opening break. West Point Mamba Lokings on the other hand is too far to make a setup work out. But look at this, two players, three players actually inside this hill for the side of Smart Omega. If ever the West Point Mamba Lokings will long for a break, they gotta play so coordinated. That's a big that's a big adjustment made here by Smart Omega, but even despite the numbers inside, they wow. still get broken down. It's just that the gunfights are just so good for Low Kings at this map. But Idra is gonna be the captain and he's gonna lead by example by contesting. But with two players there for Low Kings, the play for trade definitely gonna be very handy. And now they bring in the gravity vortex. Nothing is gonna come out of it. But they will be able to delay the pushes being made by Smart Omega. So that means more time in their back. 225 points officially reached by Low Kings. Game started off with a 50 50 battle here in between West Point Mama Low Kings and Smart Omega, but as we approach to the middle stage of the game with the heat run down for the West Point Mamba Lokings, they never gave back the momentum and they are going to be able to run this one out for their life. Only one more stronghold for them to offer to Smart Omega and they're going to be able to offer a very dominated win here up against their face. Yeah, four players go down there for Low Kings. And well, I thought the game was over, but WPM looking still in the bag. Omega, they're trying to go for the last push here. And this is where you start your comeback, right? 
as they definitely are down by at least 90 points here. This good hold is giving them that momentum to actually shift that over to their side. 30 seconds to fight for here, and Low Kings, they are pretty scrappy. They just send out their player there one by one, and that's going to be free easy fix for Smart Omega Risky. Trying to fight, but he's going to get taken down. Five more points for Low Kings, and they'll be able to take the first map. No one close. Everybody falls, and Low Kings takes the first map, but it is not over yeah, yet. Nope, nope, Not nope, yet nope. over. Not yet over. Not yet over, boy. They can't let this one get over to their heads. They've been in this situation before, winning the first <laughs> game and trying Sampling the next tree. They can't afford to let this one slide. And that's exactly what you would want to see for the side of the West Point Mambo Low Kings. Coach Olea gathering the team, trying to just reverse or trying to go back to the drawing board to try to prepare for the search and destroy, which up next will be slums. And there's going to be a lot of preparations. There has to be a lot of preparations for them if ever they want to go up in the series by two. And which we all know, in terms of the numbers, actually, Kali, I want to talk about this. The West Point Mambo Low Kings only has one coach. Omega yeah. has three. Alea yeah. is battling in this run as well, man. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. Olea is not just your coach. Not only he designates the plays, but he also analyzes and he looks at the this and he looks at statistics, right? So that's three and one. <laughs> and this is totally going back to the point that Mustachio AJ made earlier. You know, three and one means that this guy is either an AI disguising himself as a human Filipino. <laughs> And I think that's really true here. I mean, uh, someone give him the test where you can, um, where you have to click, I am human. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's give him the hardest one, all right? Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, he's too smart for this. Yeah. Well, but, you know, looking at the post game breakdown here, very dominant win. I wasn't really expecting this, to be honest. I was kind of projecting that it would be as close as yeah. it did pan out with Blacklist and West Point Mount Below Kings. But keep in mind, once they got their engines revved up, Smart Omega just had a hard time catching up. Now, here's the thing. Smart Omega, we know it since last year that Hardpoint is really their problem. It's always the same case over and over again, despite their rotations, despite all of the adjustments that they made. Sounds like Optic to me. Sounds like Optic to me, but yeah, oh. Search and Destroy Slums. <laughs> this is where they can bag the goodies, all right? They can, this is where Optic. they... Yep. That, that, that's, that's like the striking resemblance that I see. With yeah. Smart Omega, but yeah, okay. Hardpoint may not be their thing, but that SND is where it gets dangerous. When you have Boopy here scoring all the verse bloods for you, that's going to be advantage right off the start. And something about the slum search and destroy. Um, if the West Point Mambo Lokings studied the game uh, with Blacklist and Smart Omega, maybe till then they might be able to offer a bit more than I initially projected. Uh, to be into, but we did see how much search and how much struggle did the West Point Mambo Lokings did um, had up against Blacklist, and uh, in some way, it's kind of easy to say that Blacklist is a much better team in SD. But with Smart Omega going and choosing the same map, you can basically say and you can basically project that they really know what they're going to be what they're going to be offering here up against them. So I'm kind of in the middle here it's just all going to come down to the players themselves because i don't think any projections any projection from the coaches would matter no more here cali i think it's just all down to the individuality here for these players and it, this is where you know smart omega will definitely have the better advantage knowing that they have been an snd team since the start and since the inception of green and call of duty mobile and that will continue here today and it's a matter of how prepared WPM Low Kings are as they approach this map number two because up against Blacklist International Ultimate earlier, they had a solid hard point, but that SND looks so frail, and that's something that I do not want to see from them if they don't want to decrease their odds of winning. Because Smart Omega, we know they can slay you here and use that momentum from that SND and use it in control as well to dominate you, and that's something. That is not friendly if you're WPM Low Kings. And if we're going to be looking at the whole trend here, uh, if ever the West Point Mamba Low Kings will remain the same nature, they're about to falter, man. They got to win at least one search and destroy or win control yeah. for them to switch up the series, in which we all know Smart Omega has been so phenomenal about. And in terms of their previous rundown here for s and in control, specifically in search and destroy, they haven't been the brightest here. So Smart Omega on paper, they really have this one on the bag. It's just all down to the West Point Mamba Low Kings to prove us wrong.
And we're gonna start it all off here with the biggest question of the map and the game mode itself. WPM Loking speaking the attack side. And they started off with Luffy taking the first blood against Skeb. So you don't have any, you know, slicing and dicing action now for Smart Omega, but they still do have Risky there along with Ider with this scope. So it's going to be tricky how you take a crack at this. As we look at the defense of Smart Omega, they have two players holding off that middle of the map and two players holding that A side. And things are very tight here as we open this round number one. Pretty tight. And if you're on the side of West Point, I mean, you really got to love Luffy kicking things off strongly here. He did underperform up against Blacklist, and you did, so you did see him connect. Reception issues, perhaps, but moving along towards this round, look at how patient Smart Omega oh. is. And in some way, the West Point Mambo Logan, they are able to manipulate the pacing out. Luffy picks up his two. Peace for him. Candy on the Pandemonium will be dancing around, but Yopi shuts him down, forcing EJ with the scopes left alone in a 1v4 situation, and the bomb gets planted itself. A great start there by Luffy, but in there almost connected that. But now the player knows where he's at, and now the pound's coming through for number two and yellow. Oh, number three and yellow. That's going to be Demorch taking his first kill off the round. And great start for Luffy. Earlier up against Blacklist, he only had three kills in the entire game. This time, only had, already has two. So off to a great start for Low Kings, and we're starting to finally see the initial play. And the reason why they love to pick the attack side here. And we move along towards this round number two with a very hard push here all down to Alpha. Only player here is going to nice. be Idra with his scopes. Holding down the angle will be able to connect Luffy as well out of the equation. It's going to be an early 3v5. Alright, now for Omega, this is a better defensive take. They didn't really come in there aggressive, they waited for their sniper to do the wonders for them. And that is Idra taking the first blood as well earlier. But looking at it this way, you got number Ooh. one in PJ holding off the broken. A risky play there, but it ties up the numbers in the game. And if you are low kings, the longer this take, the more you will second guess you. You better plan out how will you attack this game. Looking like the read will be right here for said risky. Yopi with a scope alongside with a CBR4 as well. They might be able to offer a double chop, but they better watch out for that wraparound here towards Graves. And that's going to be Idra holding down the angle. But if ever the timing is right, Susana might be able to get the upper edge. But Idra gets the proper read. Hini takes him out. Woo! Yopi left alone in 1v2. El Capitan, what can you do? Well, this is something that's something that, something that he needs to be aware of. Like, every angle needs to be checked here if you're going into the corner. Risky takes it on. And Smart Omega completes their first successful defensive round. One one. And it's all about waiting for Ither to make the play. Game evened up. And if we are just going to review and how that one panned out, I mean, really good take here for Idra. Just kicking things off strongly with the scopes. Was able to read the, the aggression there on the way down to Alpha. And looking like the change of pace will come true here oh. for the side of Smart Omega. Risky going outside of the mid lane. Spraying down for dear life and will be able to take down Demoris. But Yopi PJ bounce back and Kevs and Idra as well will be taken out of the equation. Oh, oh, big play from Whoopi! Big play from Whoopi with the Fennec there, opening up and reducing the number of low kings to two. And that's all about making the big brain moves and the big brain plays there. Using a tight angle, an off one, just to take that elimination. And you know, the Fennec currently in the meta right now has the fastest time to kill in the game. And once you get really up close, it's super easy to get those elimination. Really fits how well Whoopi took that round there, oh. and of course eliminate these players. And we get the information that one player will be lurking around. Susano though on the process will take down Whoopi, but risky. It's well aware that one player will be right there, but what? Susano gets the read, shutting him down. Kendi now hasn't been heard, but he can be loud as well. But Yopi gets the information that he's going to be playing around the B parameter. It's a two v one situation here with a bomb getting planted soon enough. Kendi is. A clutch player we can all agree with that he uses an off angle most of the time and that is his good habit that you know always gets the better out of his opponent now it's a matter of how he takes this he can go for the clutch diffuse no one really from loki is very close to this bomb side as he tries to look forward to finding these players oh he's gonna spot one true get those now he's trying to go for the diffuse making sure lokings will create some sort of an error but that's not gonna happen take a look at the defense just being squandered around by Low Kings. Kendi has no time and he has to make the play. You need to get this bomb defused. But now the backup comes true wow. and Yopi there. 
to come in with the flank. It and Loking takes the third round. It was such a very bold move there for West Point Mambo Loking. It's not a bold move, but like a very brave uh, decision for them to not peek out. They exactly read that Candy was going to go for a fake. And something I like to say, you know, pros don't fake, but looking like West Point Mambo Loking is just a nice that fury out. So they move along with the lead for them. <laughs> if ever the trend continues, it might just go back and forth. Well, let's see if ever Smart Omega can prove that right. Omega right now is currently still lenient on defending that defending that A side. That's where low kings have been successful at the most. And of course, trooper system gonna be taken down. That will be destroyed. Taking a look at the offense here for low kings. They are still waiting for an opening to be made. And that will be Susana or Luffy. Using that opportunity with the scope to get this shot. And there wow. it goes. Whoopi shot down. And that's going to be the first step towards this victory. But we all know Mega. They still have Risky in there. And he's a big threat. Really big threat now. 4v5 though. Whoopi being the playmaker for the squad. Alonso with Risky. Which Risky has to double it down now. And in terms of the, the player that has to get himself up in the board. It's going to be Kevs. Which is the only player with no kills so far. But soon enough he might be able to put up the impact. But in the process, we do see that Westman Mamaloking is putting a lot of noise here for this B parameter. And they are still not committing though, just waiting for the refrags or the initiation to come true. But Smart Omega really disciplined. Sano's not really fighting any player here. He gets caught in the act. He needs to back away. He's going to get tagged there, but his teammates are going to swarm in just to try to protect him. And they're, they're going to lose one player as they come in with the push. This is just a good angle taken by Kevs and Risky. They now have Bikwal as the number here, but take a look at the play from Susano. He drops down Kebs. But for Omega, they still have mid-map control. Yopi now trying to push a 1v2 here in suit and Risky comes two in here two. hot to tie it up. Whew, game tied up now. And honestly, this is just a battle of morale, Kali. What I'm seeing here from the West Point Mama Lokings and Smart Omega, they both have even cards, playing cards here, the coordination, the strategy, they are absolutely reading one another. It's just all gonna come down to the confidence here as we move over to round number five with a very strong start here and a vengeance take here for Whoopi as he takes down Luffy. Smoke's coming through here now on the mid map. And Smart Omega, they are swarming that mid map. They got two players lining up and Risky wow. now opening it with a double. Candy there to follow it up. Kev's now pushing up, is gonna get one and the trap was successful smart omega now takes their third defensive round win and we have one more round before we switch sides and low kings that was a very risky take they did not really take into consideration the amount of mid map control that smart omega had and so they were punished and it's just all about the, the change of pace that smart omega able to was able to offer which the westman mambo low kings wasn't well aware in fact were risky Risky here getting this read. He might just swing out and could get this free kill. But looking like it's a very aggressive mid map control here for Smart Omega. And if ever the timing no. is right, they are for sure going to be able to capitalize. All right, here we go. Three players in the mid map for Smart Omega, one player guarding its site and low kings. This is a very tough thing to do. Especially when you are trying to open up one of the bomb sites, and Susano will be taken down. So you have only one sniper left to actually get the opening for you. And it's hard to use the utilities here, knowing that Omega will be dropping their trophy systems here just to counter that. And Hydra is just continuing the pressure here at this A site, which is very important. This is where Lokings were successful in their two rounds of win on the offensive side. So. Another long game, another long round, but now we have the numbers equalized with Dmore shutting down Risky. Well, Smart Omega let this one slide for the West Point Mambo Low Kings to approach to the second half with the grounds even to them, or are they going to come out with a double round lead? The game continues here, and looking like what? Luffy will get a swift shot on towards Candy. He shuts him down. 3v4 situation here, but the bomb control, the B, B bomb side control is still on for the side of Smart Omega. The force is done. The 3v2 is still, the trades comes true, but PJ from the back end will take down one. Whoopi left alone in a 1v2 situation as he takes on PJ. The bomb gets planted now. Yopi Demors, can you deny the king himself? Oh! Absolutely not just yet. Whoopi will take one more out of the equation. Demors up front. Whoopi will try to swing, but Demors shuts him down. Oh, what a waste. What a waste there for Whoopi. If only he had used that CBR4 instead of switching with that sniper, he could have caught that man across. But still, 
That is the reason why you will take down Whoopi early because the chances of clutching off with that scope, it was definitely possible. But now we are going to switch sides here. Dead even at three, but on the defense, we are definitely seeing some trades lining up and Demore's Yopi will be able to cancel out the two-piece that Smart Mega were able to pick up on that early engagement. And the entanglements now getting loosened up as WPM wins their gunfights, dropping two more players, and Luffy dropping either with the scope. And wow, what a you fast round. You play aggressive, they're going to play aggressive as well. And this is exactly what you'd want to see in a very... not Okay, I don't want to say this, okay? But... The West One Mambo looking compared to Smart Omega, they're not the they're not the most mature, obviously. But for them to not play by the pacing of Smart Omega, that is impressive to see. And that's gonna be the confidence here being showcased out. But let's see if they are gonna be able to retain or can Smart Omega take this one back. And keep in mind, we haven't seen a double round lead Cali. Yeah, never have we seen that yet. And no, of course, it whoever gets that definitely will pull away because that's momentum right over there. And for Yopi, what a slide up against Scabs! That's Ooh. all about investments. Players are really going isolated in one another. And this might be another opportunity here. This end can be for risky. Yo, P still doesn't want to stop. Captain to captain, player to player. Yo, P picks up the turn for him. But in the process, Luffy gets shut down. Yo, P gets sent out as well. Now it's a 2v2 situation here. The round was so probable for the side of the West Wind Mambo Lokis. But Smart Omega finds himself evened up once more. The, the, the last two players for Omega is something that needs to be checked here. Both of the players combined for 15 compared to PJ and Demore, so only has 9. So, slaying-wise, Omega has the advantage here, and they could play for kills. And Risky is not really afraid to take the open here, but that slide, that could have been heard, and that could be information now for PJ, but he's not going to make any move here. Waiting for this player to encircle. Oh, and number four and risky is already deep. He's so deep behind enemy lines. Oh my! He's not days. gonna find. He's, he's not gonna find any. Yeah, I, I don't know how this happened. Looking like no information will be given for both ends. But with the bomb planted now, two v two situation retake comes true. If ever they don't anticipate that risky will be playing down the cafe, this might go terribly. It's not so well here for the side of the West Point Mambo Lokings. The push comes through. PJ on the front lines. Checking all around. Player 3 the Morris coming from the garage. It looks like Idra will shut him down. PJ from the back ends will get denied. And Smart Omega once more they take a round back. And that's the experience. That's the experience coming in for Smart Omega. They know that they are in a rough spot. But having Gursky clear out the enemy lines. And having that bomb planted in a very good spot was... Very useful for them to tie up and avoid low kings from taking a two-round lead. Now, that is a very essential round that Smart Omega won. But again, they keep losing the first bloods, and that's why they are on edge every round. And that's why everything is just being controlled by low kings at the early game, and they had to make up for it on the late game. But this play from Cabs, that was risky. Bringing out the KRM on a long-range map. Something you do not want to use, especially in this type of situation. Uh, big blunder there for Smart Omega, but Risky and Idra has been able to clutch this one up. Can Idra be the ceiling deal? Absolutely not. El Capitan Yopi picks up the double to put the lead back to their side. Grounds not even no more. But coming again, Cali, we still have yet to see in a double round lead. It's always... <laughs> These two squads, one upping another, and that's what you like. This is the best teams, the final three teams alive in the competition, and I love what I definitely am seeing. But I haven't seen Whoopi really come in here and score those first blocks. It's always been either Luffy, Susano, or Yopi creating all those plays. But finally, they have one with Kev's dropping Susano now. They have managed to open up one of the sites, and having Risky here to create all these kills could be very beneficial. But they're waiting. Ooh, Kev's getting the kill for Susana with a god nade. Luffy gets a respondment with a sniper, taking down Whoopi. And looking like this bomb is still revolving around the big parameter. But risky. Push down what? quite deep now. All the way down this. In the process, Luffy will take down one once more. Two kills for him on this very round. Cooking up the nade, looking for the information to kick in, but no sense. Not just yet, but they gotta be worried about this player named Risky. Which soon enough he might just get this opportunity to swing, but if ever he does, the Morris is just right there as well. Very tight spot here for Risky, and I like how he's not really moving here at all. Yeah. 
He knows that Luffy's trying to bait him with all this shot. And he's not gonna move there anytime soon. But Yopi taking up grounds, holds on to the head glitch. He's gonna take one there before his teammate will have the backup on. They know where the bomb is located at now. Kev swings, but Yopi still wins the gunfight. And risky, it's all up to him. He's got 12 kills, but the last two players alive are Glow Kings. Mm. Yopi has 13, Luffy has 8, and now information spotted. Now Yopi could play the bait and switch here. It's moving up ground, but it's not gonna get the kill. Wow. And Risky takes Luffy down and talk about quick decision making. Tying up the numbers and equalizing, but not much time now. If you are risky, you gotta put that bomb down. He time. is on a tight spot, and Yopi can play time. The bomb now getting crossed around this B side, and he's trying to plant that bomb. But Yopi now for the fresher. The clock expires. Double and round. Low Kings. That's the first two round lead we have. And not just that, they're on the match point advantage now. And this might be the first time that the West Point Mambo Lokes can take Smart Omega and search and destroy. And we've talked about this, Kali. If they want to stand a chance to take down Smart Omega in a series, they gotta win one search and destroy. Smart Omega, they just can't let this one slide, man. I have to agree with you, man. The last time WPM Lokes played Omega was Green Master Season 3, and where they lost both SNDs and lost the game 5. So right now, I have to agree with you on that take. This is their best time for them to win this game. And Susanna will be wow. there right up front, dropping Indra. So now they have every player across the corners and they can initiate any pinch play here. And Omega needs to play their corners here tight. Smart Omega, biggest gunfight of your life now, but Risky steps up for the squad of Smart Omega, forcing Susanna to clutch things up in a 3v1, which absolutely no way you can push through. Kevs, Candy, Risky, gatekeeping West Point Mama oh. Kings to winning this round. This is it, the Comeback Kings now have finally activated the plot armor, where they will win the series, so this is something that Low Kings needs to watch out. Better watch out. You better not cry. Smart <laughs> Omega is telling we'll you We'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah, of course. Good rhymes. We didn't able to rend that, but you know, back to the game. Very intense moment now. Looking like the West Point Mom looking found the call. Aggression isn't the answer. You just gotta do what you've been doing for the past few previ previous round. Until then, you might be able to seal the deal, but this is the curse of the West Point Mom Kings. They always get the hard time sealing things up. Can they break the curse for this very round, or are we gonna see an overtime? It's obvious that oh. Omega will play for overtime and they are not committing to any of the sites first, but now they do. They are covering the middle of the map part first. And they're sending out caps there to hold off the broken wall. Wow. But Luffy still managed to get the kill on Whoopi and shutting him down was always the key to, uh, of course, incapacitate Omega from getting these rounds and now a chance for them to close this out with the numbers in their favor. Here we go. Retake and Zeus. Risky here, putting a lot of influence all down to that A-bomb side. And he's gonna be able to get the wrap around, but Luffy picks him up. Candy out of the equation, alongside with Cavs. Risky now out of the equation as well. Adra left alone, and the West Point Mom low King. Shocking smart Omega in slums. Wow. They've done it. They've done it, Kali. That's the first time that they won an s &D versus Smart oh Omega. Oh my. History has been scratched, man. <laughs> They're up to an O. Control left alone to be claimed. Until then, Smart Omega will be waving their hands goodbye out of this event. I am lost for words. What did just happen? I thought Smart Omega had the plot armor activated. But I think the Kali buff is better in this game, Sat Orden. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If we're, if we're gonna be talking about caster to buff, I'm, I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to cast the last game yesterday. But oh yeah, well, Incendio uh, fe felt really, uh, you know, he was not feeling it when you were not casting. He was expecting it to be there, man. I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back. But Next oh year. my, <laughs> man, <laughs> I, I, I just like, I know this is my job right now to cast this game, but I, I me, me and Mustachio has been on the urge to getting a heart attack. And oh, can I'm I on add the state to that right list? now. I, I want to add to that list as well. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Dom will, uh, will of course, be a part of that as well. But looking at the post-game breakdown, let's have a great crack at this. Now, oh. what was important here for WP and Lokings to win this game was the constant shutdown for Whoopi. It's either Luffy or Susano taking down Whoopi on that early game and incapacitating one of the key playmakers for Smart Omega every round. 
was really important for them to win this game but talk about risky take a look at him in 12 rounds of action 17 kills now Man. the highest kills in total for this game now what went wrong for smart omega well what went wrong is that they started on the defensive side in the first half but weren't really able to capitalize on the advantage that they had they entered the second half with three all in the scoreboard and we all know when we start on the defensive side and when you have wpm lokings there it's much easier so now they take the 2-0 lead now on the maps and for Green Masters for lower bracket finals. Now a chance to take away the chance of Smart Omega to score an appearance at the Grand Finals and defend their title coming right up next at Control Raid. Smart from NRX Jeremiah to 2911 to Smart Omega. <sighs> Combat Kings, are they going to be able to do it once more? They've done it before. Can they do it is the question. Will the West Point Mambo Lokings let this one slide out from their hands? Or are they finally going to be able to scratch the history for them and advance to the Grand Finals? What awaits them could be Raid, Firing Range, or Summit. Three games has to be won consecutively for the side of Smart Omega. Only needs one. Only needing one for the side of the West Point Mambo Lokings. Cali Control Raid. Soon enough, about to start off. Smart Omega, only left alone, only thing that they got to do is just retain their morale. We all know how well they are as a team. The playing cards are all evened up from hard point to search and destroy. It was a big, big exchange from one another. Both of them giving and taking from each other, Kali. All down to the morale here, man. The fire has to be on for Smart Omega. I mean, Smart Omega, the last time they initiated a reverse sweep was during Green Original... Garena Call of Duty Mobile Regional Champs, which is, uh, you know, where they, they go up against WDC Freestyle on the lower bracket round one, where they won their first match during control. And what map was it? It was Raid. 3-0 victory for them up against WDC Freestyle. It was the catalyst that started a reverse sweep. And if you are low kings, you don't want that to happen to you. So you gotta make sure you slay here as the attack side as we open up this game. Sport Omega will start on the defensive side and they will be scoring the first engagement. Hell to the no. PJ wins that, gets the second. Yes, indeed. There we go. Low kings off to a great start. Good zoning here for the set of PJ extending down to the laundries. We're cutting off the rotation now for this very control point itself. And if if you're on the side of the West Point Mambo Low Kings, this is a really good start. But look at this player too. Candy just waiting for one player to trample down for the West Point Mambo Low Kings. Still, then they can ensue the spawn trap. This is the playstyle that was used by Q9 up against Almighty during one of their control matches. And it was in control raid. And this setup right here, every time oh, Low no. Kings go down, it is a deadly trap. But you know what WPM Low Kings is working. trying to do? They're sorting out the trap as well for their side. Wow. And Low P taking out two players with these. Hunter Killer Drone and PJ now officially on a five and another Hunter! That is a boo Pacific Girl. Wow. It's coming true! Risky goes down! PJ on a five! Three! One more for that friend, but finally Risky spawns up close and takes him down. 17 to 24 is the live count and Low Kings on the lead. They also have players inside of the hill. Both players here, both teams playing on the same card, but the West Point Mambo Low Kings just gonna be able to capitalize much more. A point now getting captured here. One quadrant in here for the side of the West Point Mambo Low Kings. And if you're on the side of Smart Omega, they really gotta regather themselves up, get more map control, play by the trades because they're down by the lives. This is very risky if you are Smart Omega right now, but Indra hides behind the couch and hides behind the bed and gets that elimination. So. This is the best way for you to reduce and, of course, win this round. Win through elimination. That's where you're currently good at at the moment. But Demors, they're gaining up grounds once again. They took control of that mid pillars. They're trying to push up towards B once again. And Yopi is going to be the catalyst here to push up on this swimming pool side, which is kind of risky for him. But he takes control of this bar section. So now they're going to claim time. Well, the trades here so, so sad for the side of the Westman Mambo Lokings, but it's still going to go down to the wire. With a minute to play with, they can take this one slowly but surely, and it might just cut the chase. As Yopi on the feed will take down Kendi, slowing down the face just a little bit. And he's going to be lurking around from that basketball court, just limiting the playing zone here for Smart Omega. And look at this, four players wrapping oh around. They might just be able to get, get away and initiate a spawn trap. This is very crazy because you can see that Yopi is actually pushing out towards their case as well. They are trying to get that 
Kitchen control and of course this spawns to be activated as well. PJ now oh, back at it wow. again with the spawn trap. Two more lives left for Sport Omega. And it's starting to feel like the setup towards the trap, if you're the defending side, is not working for them. As Low Kings now continue to slay, they are taking in the first attack side up against Mega on the defense, which is truly surprising. And now it's one and zero. The world has their eyes on you, West Point Mamba, Low Kings, and Smart Omega. But Smart Omega needs this game more than the West Point Mamba Low Kings if they want to push this to another game. First round being accumulated on offense here, we'll just be putting the West Point Mamba Low Kings in a brighter case. But we don't want to take Smart Omega out of the equation as they do start down strongly here on this offense. Here we go. Susana will be going down and Omega's off to a great start. Two players coming into the B side and they also have mid-map control. Candy there lurking around. Got that. Claw actually activated as well, ready for use. And I love what I'm seeing from Omega this time. You know, they are not afraid to come in here aggressive, but now they are going to pay the price for not covering some grounds here as Low Kings will be able to successfully stop the push here. But Risky on the base, spawn trapping, and he still are looking to cut down more players from that. Four players now dropped here by the Claw, and talk about wise investment and a good value. Smart Omega now has the life advantage. Life advantage. We'll give you four, make it five now, as Whoopi will get the connection, whipping out the right tech very interestingly. But that's the confidence that you'd want to see from the best sniper in the Philippines. 13 to 20. Bravo, said and done. Moving over to Alpha with a lot of times and a lot of lives here for the side of Smart Omega. Whoopi now on a spree, finds the first one, looking to get that control at the kitchen. But they're there to clean it up along with him. Now, they have a lot of time to actually push this B side. This A side, by the way. And so they are definitely using that time in their advantage and forcing Lokings to commit so much errors. And they are definitely efficient as well in the way that they take this. But now Lokings finally are getting a good read off of that rotate. Now they will be able to clean it up. And that should spawn Smart Omega on the left side of the minimap. So now they are kind of expecting these players to go down here at the showers and the swimming pool. And PJ, he's got this annihilator. I think it's wise for him to use it here now just to mm -hmm. reduce that lead because... And now, Smart Omega, they're looking to get control towards mid. The answer actually has a complete set of specialists in four, four out of four at least. And looking oh, like no. West, the Smart Omega here trying to prioritize this kitchen control, and they are going to be able, be, be able to absolutely break this one up. Four or five lives remaining here for the West Point Mambo Low Kings. They're still trying to fight this one through, but slowly but surely now they falter. Body is getting dropped down like flies. Ooh. And just like that, Smart Omega here bound to win this round. Not unless the four players remaining here for the West Point Mamba Lokings. Jopi, Demoris, Loki, and Sasano can clutch things up. Now, this is very tough for Lokings. This is, this is going to be a round win now for Smart Omega. And I love the way that they took it. Just went fast route at the B side. And just played for the time. Wait for Lokings to create so many errors. And they will be securing this oh. victory. But Jopi! Where did that two shot came from? Now, they are the last two men standing. Make that last player standing for Susano. A 1v7, the odds of this being one, it takes a miracle, but anything's possible. But now the clock is being stopped, and Omega is going in for the capture. That's three players, so the fast capture is going to be activated. And now for him to enter in the smoke, it's not gonna be in time. <sighs> Both ends has one offensive side, Scally. One to one here, grounds equalized. But this is the round that we are going to be able to see who's going to get that match point advantage. With the advantage, supposedly, for the side of Smart Omega, going to be on defense. And they have four specialists to be ready to be invested into. If their cards are played right, they might as well. And they might be able to just take this round out away from the West Point Mambo Low Kings. And as we can see now, Raw Mechanical Gunfights is going to their way. Yeah, I mean, fast take here for Omega now this time. Din is using that Fennec this... It's going to be a very aggressive gun, and of course, fast Ooh. time to kill as well as he finds that triple. Now, the pressure is on for Low Kings on the attack side as they are dropping their bodies here one at a time. Tin now slowly gaining control towards these galleries, but Kendi is going to be there for the backup. Going to find that rotation clean, and the kills are just going to line up and come true for Smart Omega. And I'm telling you, Smart Omega, they love to play resilient, and they don't really like to play the same mistake twice and see what happened. They will remain untouched in terms of the objective. A and B side cleaned, and they also have the advantage coming in this round with the lives.
Right now, Kendi is still wrapped around from the bedrooms, but he doesn't oh, get no. the proper read, so Yopi shuts him down. Map control no more here for the side of Smart Omega, but player four having the same attention as well. Ija on the front lines with Annihilator. Spotting no. two will whip out two bullets of his own, but not able to find a connection. Triple shots in. No kills whatsoever. The lives not too set apart here, and the Risky. contestment will come through from the front lines. But wow. Risky from the back ends will get the spray down. We'll take down Luffy and Yopi, and that's going to be spawning them from the back ends. But the quick respawn from Yopi will come in. 12 to 17, though. Smart Omega still on the life lead. Yeah, they have the life lead here, but Tin, you gotta move in fast. Your team is not really finding any kills there. You're on a you're on the garage and you're just gonna be waiting for players to push while you have low kings actually attacking and putting their resources towards mid now. This is great. You take mid map, you have both access towards A and B. So the transition towards the B side is going to be very easy for them. You'll be now good investment with that claw. PJ will also have the annihilator, so they are coming in in both angles. Pinch play maneuver gonna be activated in here as well. PJ is lurking at the spawns while Omega is so focused up on this B side. Every elimination there will be a free kill for PJ coming into the spawn. So that is going to be the key for Logan's to win this game. They have turned around the life count. It's a 5 to 8, and it is just surmountable. Omega fumbled. They focused so much on B that they let Logan's capture A, and now they're paying the price for it. Candy left alone in a 1v5. Miracle, miraculous plays must need to come true him for for here, for him. But he needs to isolate them one by one. And the odds not looking so sided for him. As the contestant comes through here, oh. the information relayed. He's gonna go for a spray down. He gets shut down. And the West Point Mamba Low Kings on the match point advantage. And not just that, one more round to send Smart Omega out of this event. I imagine that so much, it feels more like a memory. Melody. What's it gonna be at me? In my sleep, seven feet ahead of me? If I see it coming, do I run or do I let it be? Is it like a beat without a melody? See, I never thought Smart Omega would leave past this moment, but where it came from, some get half as many, and Omega now fighting for their lives, and they respond back with a great fourth round. The great fourth round, good initial start. But the West Point Mamba Low King's not backing down without a fight as well. Predator flies through. Candy gets shouted down. Yopi extends further more and the, conf the confidence comes true. West Point Mamba Low King's on the lead right now in terms of the life count. Not so far apart though, but look at the map control here that the West Point Mamba Low King's is offering. Smart Omega, if they can't get the proper read, this is looking to be disastrous. Yeah, I mean, you have to make this moment last. That's plenty for Smart Omega. But again, Low King's have better map control at this moment. You see, they are doing whatever Smart Omega was doing to them on the defensive side now they have divorce with that claw he's still not gonna win that gunfight though so risky that's a big one for them if they want to ensure this comeback but pj finds that double stops the push here at this b side but luffy there as well to clean something up he is fully streaked up in here and he can use a predator missile to stop the push being made here by smart omega 60 to 19 on the live gun and if you are omega b has not been working you gotta push on the other end Resources getting drained out here for Smart Omega as West Point Mamba Low Kings here is on a four life lead. And what they gotta do is just have gotta do what they've been doing from the past two previous rounds. And it might it might just work out. And for them to seal the deal, it might just happen soon enough here, Cali. 20 seconds left on the clock for Smart Omega. There's no hope here aside from the fact that they gotta barge in all the way to all the way down to Bravo for them to seal the deal. Yeah, 12 seconds left here, and Smart Omega, oh they my. kept falling down. Slow Kings, they are not throwing away their History. Dr. Yang, Scrappy, and Hungry. Slow Kings now coming in for the slay. Get the double! And now, Omega will be capturing this B-side. And it's not yet over, the last push being made. And the life count, it's still possible for him to win this. 50 seconds left. And they have these operators to back them up. It's a matter of investing this one properly and getting the most out of it. Reset comes true, but PJ will take down Whoopi. Candy out of the equation as well. Last five lives for the West Point Mama Lokis to rip away to mark themselves into the history line of Call of Duty Mobile. Risky, Tin, Whoopi, what can you do? Last man, last three man signing, make that two. Yopi on the flank is gonna have that claw invested. He fights one. They've done he it. That second, and Low Kings will make their first ever grand finals appearance in Garena Master. And to do it in such a sweep, the owls, the ravenous Low Kings have finally done it.
They've done it now! A donut served to Smart Omega! West Point Mambo Low Kings, they go back to the finals! The grand finals, which Blacklist International Ultimate awaits them! The game continues here, Cali, for the West Point Mambo Low Kings! Wow! Oh, wow! Four consecutive, three consecutive Green Masters! They've been gatekept, but finally, they've broken the curse! And they enter to the grand finals. Of course, and let's talk about history here. Green Masters season one. They almost came so close at defeating Omega Esports. I mean, they, they almost came so close at defeating Blacklist International Ultimate, but they got eliminated, and Smart Omega was there to clean them up. Green Masters season two was their worst yet as they enter this gr gr the group stage or the playoffs. To a bad start, they lost off against Blacklist International Ultimate 3-0. Then they got swept there down to the lower bracket versus Huntsman. And at Green Masters 3, it kind of felt like the same thing all over again. They lost off against Smart Omega in five maps. And so, they got swept by Almighty again at the lower bracket semifinals. And this time, they lost on the upper bracket final. But adjustments and the capabilities of this team to mature was the key for them to get right back into themselves and of course win this match first grand finals ever achieved by wpm low kings and they did not just take any team down it's the two-time defending guerrilla masters champs that they destroyed in this best of five action and now there will be a new king crowd here at this moment the dark horses has finally done it once was titled the Dark Horses of the Major League for Call of Duty Mobile. They've done it. For the first time in history, once again, they've now trampled and they made Smart Omega falter. I don't even care what the statistics would say. I don't even care how this the whole thing panned out no more. This is just something that could that's really changing the tide of the game and not just this game or this event overall, the entire season and what's to come for the competitive scene for this Call of Duty Mobile run. And it beats me here. Smart Omega getting taken down by WPM Low Kings 3 and 0. And despite the great efforts made by Risky and Tin on the response, it was not definitely enough to take away Low Kings. And it continues to be this way. Hard point, control, Definitely one of the strongest feet by Low Kings, and they have fully warmed themselves up, you know. Coming up for a fresh victory here from Smart Omega, now they have to face the biggest and the most ultimate version of Blacklist Ultimate on the Grand Finals. But it is still a victory that is well deserved. They fought Smart Omega and read them like a book. Uh, oh, wow, man. I mean, that's just really the... Uh, something about the Westman Mambo Low Kings that have dealt with from the past three from the past few majors that they've been going uh going with as their morale you know once they lose once they get sent down to the bottom bracket they lose their morale they lose their confidence and they just go down like, like the not like the west point mambo low kings that they are on the upper brackets for them to show off and to show up like this in a dominant man dominant manner here up against the west the uh, smart omega it's really a good sign for them overall for this year's, years to run. The maturity of the players coming from Gil PPJ alongside with, you know, the addition to Susano, Luffy, Demors, and also Klo. Uh, this, the West Point Mambo Lokings, if ever they can push through and just even put up a fight up against Blacklist International Ultimate later on, they're bound to be the second best, best team in MSP. And I feel like this is, you know, if we're talking about CGI 2023, WPM Lokings have successfully earned their spot. So that's the best two top PH teams that we have left. That is Blacklist Ultimate and of course WPM Lokings. The third team, I am definitely not sure, but Yopi at this game was absolutely a monster. He was scoring multiple kills after multiple kills. And the Yopi PJ connection definitely was orange juice, fresh quiz, 1.76k for Yopi, and that will be the start of their grand finals here for Green Masters 4. Oh, oh, wow. Well, Kali, I just want to know, I just want to ask questions to the West Point Mamba Lokings. I mean, I, I, 
I am s I'm in a very dire. Uh, I'm craving for what what kind of words they are are gonna offer. But before that, we're gonna be having a bracket update now on uh, how this one's gonna pan out. The West Point Mambo Low Kings, they've won the first two games that they had on the upper bracket. They faltered up against Blacklist International Ultimate. They get sent down here to the lower bracket semifinals up against the West Point, up against the Smart Omega, and they were able to win it out in a dominant manner in a 3-0 fashion. You can't ask for more, Kali. You can't ask for more. This is just insane, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, after this moment, I am still surprised how Smart Omega went down in just three maps. But of course, it's just all about you know, being prepared for this moment. And WPM Low Kings, they didn't not just prepare for this moment, they prepared for this moment years before this. You know, a year ago, they kept on getting swept at the lower bracket. They can't find their success. But finally, this time, they were able to find the groove and to do it in the likes of Smart Omega, the best team currently for the past two green and master season. It is definitely a learning curve that they mastered. So here we have it. You win some, you lose some, and if you're a smart Omega, it's just time to go back to the drawing board. Now, <laughs> they have a great lineup in their favor, right? Because, you know, they have Tin, they have like Candy in there as well. They got Risky popping in, looking like a prime Risky. Maybe on the next season, they will find their they, they will find their bounce back. But here for now, they, the focus will be between Blacklist Ultimate and WPM Low Kingston at second place and finals matchup. A best of seven <laughs> where Blacklist Ultimate will have a one match advantage. Cali, Cali, Cali. With the Westman Mambo Low Kings going against Blacklist International Ultimate, don't you think it's about time for the Westman Mambo Low Kings to familiarize once more who they are actually going against? Because it's not just Blacklist International Ultimate, no. It's about time for me to reveal who's behind Who's no. the Brainiacs <laughs> of Blacklist International Ultimate? And let me tell you first, it's obviously your man, Image Blaine's. That's the first coach right there. And it might be a surprise, it might be not. We all know that Image brought Blacklist International Ultimate the championship during the split of the championship last two, the, two years ago. But the second coach will be KBR, which is the coach, the ex-coach of Inko himself. Okay, Inko Gaming. That's uh, the, the third, the third placer of the World Championship last year. So definitely a great addition. And talk about resiliency. That's what they did up against Sport Omega on the upper bracket semifinals. And wow, I am very surprised with what you just said. But again, Olea managed to beat three coaches in Smart Omega. Now his task in here is to prepare the best map possible for his squad up against the two best coaches you know coming from the western region which is image and kbr so definitely going to be a big one of that grand finals yeah definitely so i think it's just you know soon enough about time for us to question as well prepare your question scally because we are going to be heading straight into an interview section <laughs> here uh with the west point mambo locus themselves i can't wait to ask about what they are preparing up against Blacklist International Ultimate because we all know and we did see that they did suffer oh. big time uh, against them during the upper bracket final. So here we go. We got PJ and Yopi in the house. First of all, before anything else, PJ and Yopi, how are you guys doing? And how do you guys feel about taking Smart Omega for the first time around? Uh, we're so happy that we beat Omega for this time. Since we actually uh, lost to them like three times already in major tournaments, and I think it feels great to actually have. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it call. I wouldn't call it quit since we. It's only one win yet, pero, but it's still uh, something I'm so proud of. So yeah. It should be, it should be. I mean, multiple times that you all went up in Smart Omega and they all, they really trampled you guys uh, at the latter stage of the event. So Kali Gaming, run us down here. What's your question, my guy, to PJ and Yogi? I mean, you guys are definitely one of the best duos right now in Green and Masters 4. Uh, now okay, you're going Kali. up against... Oh, what? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Hello? Hello, people. Can you guys hear me now? Or can uh. you take over? <laughs> okay, well, my, my, my first question here in line here, PJ and Yopi, since you all are going up against Blacklist International Ultimate once more, what are the preparations of you, yourself, PJ and Yopi, alongside with Olea? Which, not, not to detail, obviously we don't want to reveal what is the strategy, but in terms of mentality, what are you all um, aiming for? Aiming. 
We're aiming for the top, the championship. We want okay. the... Uh, well. All right. Well. Okay. Aiming for aiming for the top, Cali. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, back to what this is my final. This is the final question, right? So guys, you, PJ and Yopi, your duo is definitely one of the best now in the current season, and of course in the entire Green of Masters Four. Now you're going up against the biggest and the ultimate version of Blacklist, and of course, how are you feeling that you're going up against the best duo right now for Blacklist, which is Yato and Rage? Uh, we will do our best we'll to beat this. Oh. We will change tactics. <laughs> all right, all right, that's how you do it. And yeah, oh, Coach Alea is well, up here with us as well. Can we get an interview for Coach Alea? Just one question with Coach Alea. Okay, one question long. Yes. Coach Alea. <laughs> Coach Alea, hey, one, la one final question. Okay, you guys are preparing up next for Blacklist International Ultimate. How are you feeling coming into this matchup knowing that you lost the first one? English. We will we'll do our best. We'll do our best. We'll do our best. We'll try to actually get revenge. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for having us here. Good luck on your grand finals attempt bit versus Blacklist International Ultimate. Good luck. Best of wishes, PJ and Yopi. And thank you for being here thank with you. us. And well, Warden, it's uh, going to be a big one coming into this grand finals. Yep. And yeah. yeah. It is what it is. Look at me sweating. That game was fire, bro. My 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 man. Uh, you know, I was saying a lot of lines uh, on the last few moments, and you can hear me stuttering big time, man, because I was kind of shaking because it's it's it, it was a year run for the Westman Mambo Low Kings to be just suffering, finishing off third for pretty much majority of this event. If it's not like, if it's not gonna be third, it's gonna be fourth. You know, they never broke the curse of the lower bracket finals for them to advance to the grand finals. Now this is their first grand finals appearance, Cali, and. It was just history being made and something that I wasn't really initially expecting, but they've done it and they are in it, obviously, for another run up against Blacklist International Ultimate. Are they going to be able to start it's off their going first to be appearance quite from the Grand Finals strongly or are they honestly, Now here? that they have managed to beat Almighty, they have managed to beat Smart Omega in just one season, now it is up to the final boss, you know, bring in that final boss music because Blacklist International Ultimate, they will not... Okay, they will not. I mean, if you're talking about this game, uh, well, okay, Martin wasn't really able to hear me there. Okay, now, uh, I am not sure, but yeah, for Blacklist International Ultimate, this is gonna be their chance to take back that trophy. But for WPM Low Kings, this is their first shot at taking on the grand finals here, Warden. Oh, are they gonna be the champions? Are they finally gonna be the champions? I don't know, Cali. You don't know. Everybody doesn't know. It's just us. It's just all about us. Gonna be about. I'm uh, gonna be finding out soon enough. But before finding out, we're gonna be having a short break. So we'll be right back.
a doom. Come on, production. You don't mess up the grand finals opening like that. <laughs> it's the championship Sunday here at the Garena Master Season 4. Brought to you by Garena Call of Duty Mobile. And we're down to our final series to crown the kings of MSP. I am the Mustachio. And my partner for the grand finals is not Wasabi's boyfriend. This guy named Kali. Oh my god. I'm so unmotivated now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wasabi announced it in the chat, right? Okay, okay. I am in a heartbreak. This feels like this feels worse than Smart Omega losing today. Was was that Almighty getting kicked out? Yeah, I mean, was that Almighty getting I beaten mean, twice in a row? Yeah, uh, no, I am. Okay, I am not sure. I mean, you, you got you got to just rewind the stream just a little bit. You know, what and I we had quite a bit of conversation on breaking up and then after that, you know bouncing back right after that. It'll help you, but technically you didn't <laughs> okay. break up. You just never got together. So. It's unfortunate. I got rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside. Okay. Jokes it aside. is a miraculous run in here for West Point Mamba Low Kings. They were in the upper bracket finals, got kicked down, saw Smart Omega, said bye Smart Omega, jumped right back into the grand finals. And Blacklist International Ultimate has got that one match advantage, but I don't think West Point Mamba Low Kings cares because for the very first time, they are in the grand finals and this was not handed over to them. They earned this opportunity. Season after season, from season one of Garena Masters, they have been grinding, they have been trying, but always they fail to get into the spot that they are at right now, Kali. Is today the day? Do you think? Do you feel it? I feel it. I mean, I'm casting today. So like every time WPM ca plays and I'm casting, they always end up being close to a victory or always ends up with the match victory. So I am definitely hopeful that they win this. But again, if you're looking about see, Blacklist International... Things, see, praises like that, you need to let the chat give it to you, Kelly. You can't praise yourself like that, bro. Okay. Wait, didn't I, I train so you better? I yeah. sounded so arrogant about that. Yeah. I, 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 throw my, I throw my thumb sleeves down, man. My, I, ah, I, I, I give up. <laughs> I give up. Wait, I'm gonna but throw I agree, my thumb I agree. sleeves as well. The, <laughs> grab it. <laughs> you do. You do give. You do give the low kings quite a bit of buff, man. I do most definitely agree with you. Now the low kings, you know, this this has not been an easy journey for them, especially getting kicked down into the low brackets because they've already tested their might against Blacklist one time today. And you know, that didn't turn out all that too well, but it was a close match. Yeah, it was. I mean, WPM Low Kings put up a great fight in that hard point, but then where yeah. we kind of see them fall through was when they got complacent and, of course, tried to play that SD quite passively, which was yeah. the devastator. It was the catalyst for Blacklist International Ultimate to shift the momentum to their side mm -hmm. and snowball and get that victory. That will, for sure, should not be the one that will happen here today if you're WPM Low Kings. You can't let Blacklist Ultimate get away from it that easy. I mean,. The only reason why I think that match or the series between Blacklist and Mamba Low Kings kind of ended a little prematurely is because of just one unfortunate rotation, one lapse in decision making on the side of the Low Kings that kind of put them in an unfortunate situation. That was that raid hard point. If that had gone down into a SND, you know, goodness knows exactly what could have happened. Now, Olea is just not the kind of coach to allow the team to repeat one mistake you know, multiple numbers of times. I mean, you have to look at the West Point Mamba Low Kings. And I think I saw this comment in the chat earlier on. The amount of resources that a team like Smart Omega has versus West Point Mamba Low Kings. Dude, that's, that's like heaven and earth, right? And West Point Mamba Low Kings still made it through all the way here. Season after season, they've been grinding. And that's very, very hugely, you know, because of exactly what Olea has had to bring to the table. Now, I don't think he's going to allow the team to make a mistake like that. And Yopi and PJ are going to make sure those plays are executed out there on the battlefield. I'm looking at a at a minimum of six rounds for this final best of seven, bro. I am definitely looking forward to that as well. I mean, this is the first, I think this is the third time that we're going to have a best of, second time that we're going to have a, is it, I think, I think it's the first time we have a best of seven coming into a Garena Master. So, it will definitely be quite a stretch here knowing that Blacklist International Ultimate will have that one match advantage. But yeah. we all know WPM Low Kings, they are scrappy and talk about the drive that they had to pull through coming into this today's schedule. They lost up against Blacklist International Ultimate on the first schedule. Now on the second match, they went up against Smart Omega and they had a very solid outcome. A 3-0 against a two-time defending champion is not a fluke at all. They were... Mm -hmm. 
so ahead of like the reads and the rotates and that's what they will have to bring here up against Blacklist International Ultimate because what we know yes earlier on that first match was that Blacklist Ultimate got away with the game because of how well they invested their operator skills and their score tricks as well AJ and they were able to read Loki's like a book well what because of well because of those early rotation I, I have to say that I do agree with that and not only was there a very well usage of the operators as well as score streaks on the side of Blacklist, there was also a premature investment from the side of Low Kings that kind of nerfed them in that final battle for that last hill. I think it was a little bit too rushed, they were getting a little scrappy, they were getting a little nervous, but also at the end of the day it was not such a bad thing because they were allowed to take that momentous victory against Mata Mega down at the lower brackets and that's the kind of confidence boost they need before they go back and meet Blacklist International Ultimate once again so I love the storyline I love exactly how this is going at the moment we just have to make sure West Point Mamba Low Kings does not slip up this time around because if you look at the number of times Blacklist International Ultimate made mistakes I can't remember any. So that's that's probably going to be the <laughs> only thing that does the low kings in this time. Yeah, I mean, they have to make sure that they check Rage here, who has been phenomenal, not just in the objective work, but of course in the staying department as well. And not to mention yeah. the rise of Jab, and he is a monster during that first mm -hmm. match today up against WPM low King, serving with that what? It was thing was using that SKS on the response, yeah. and he was just able to get away with it, scoring multiple kills and building up streaks all for himself individually. And well, this is the ultimate version of Blacklist International, and their win rate has been solid so far coming into the series. Yeah, 90% win rate overall within Garena Master Season 4. That's nothing short of impressive. Initially, as we started the day, the Low Kings had a slightly better percentage. But of course, after Blacklist was done and dusted with them, they kind of damaged those ratings a tad bit, even though Low Kings did manage to pick up the three wins against Mata Mega. So statistically speaking, this is the best team in the competition right here, right now. And they're back with the OG squad. This is the OG lineup with an addition. They traded out Tin. Tin was one of the greats within Blacklist, but they brought in Rage instead of Tin. And Rage, at times, this guy is a cut above. And his play style allows Blacklist to be the kind of team that you, you cannot know. You cannot figure out exactly what sort of a strat they're going to go with. This guy is an objective player. This guy is a slayer. He's an all-rounder. He's a roamer. Anything you want Rage to do, he can get done well out there on the battlefield for Blacklist. And he was the, the kryptonite that Blacklist Ultimate had to face every time they play Grand Finals in Green Masters. Season 2 and Season 3 because he was playing before for Smart Omega and you know he plays so aggressive but I felt like when he was playing with Smart Omega I was kind of held back knowing that you know Smart Omega is definitely one of the, the passive aggressive teams but yeah. you give him here in Blacklist Ultimate it gives him the chance to be you know very aggressive which fits mm -hmm. the total system of Blacklist International Ultimate and that's why this team has been clicking but they're going up against a team that they managed to beat earlier on the upper bracket finals WPM Low Kings to SCOP, PJ, Demors, Luffy, Kalo and Susano and we need to see performance from PJ and Yopi here consistent again, just like they did up against Smart Omega. When I saw them at Garena Masters Season 1, I crowned them as the rising stars of Call of Duty Mobile. To see them here at Garena Masters Season 4 in the Grand Finals, not beating one but two titans in Almighty as well as Smart Omega, personally kicking the reigning defending champions out of the Garena Masters, I cannot help but just be absolutely proud of exactly what they've been able to accomplish for themselves. And all of that, all of that, just through pure determination. This is that team that I want to bet on for this Grand Finals. I mean, I love Blacklist International Ultimate. They are a great team. Statistically speaking, everything included, they have been in the scene for such a long time. But if West Point Mamba Low Kings wins, I'm looking forward to them inspiring so many more other teams out there that all they need to do is just want that opportunity and put in the hard work and take it for themselves. Look at this head-to-head, -head, man. 32.33 versus a 22.25. Yopi is killing it. No pun. No pun intended. I have to agree. Yopi, he was just the devastator up against Omega Esports. Every time Smart Omega tried to create a run, he was always there to extinguish that fire and of course shot them down immediately. But again, the tricky part here is Rage may not have that a lot of kills, but 
we know that he can do so much more in other aspects of the game. He can play mm -hmm. that objective for you. He, that's why he may have those tiny KDs compared to Yopi, Yopi because yeah. he's a three-way player, an all-arounder for Blacklist. And also because Rage is that, that sacrificial lamb that they can depend on. I call him the sacrificial lamb because he plays very risky positions. And I, I don't mean the risky, they just walked out. I'm talking about the risky <laughs> positions. You saw in that SND, this guy, he was not waiting for West Point Mamba Lokings to make a play. He was going out and egging them on, forcing them to make mistakes, forcing them to expose their positions. And he was getting the slays. A couple of times, he did go down a little prematurely because PJ steps up to the plate as well. But that kind of just throws West Point Mamba Lokings into a disarray. And in these SNDs, if you don't allow Rage to kind of get on your nerves, you are going to be on the safer side. But here's the thing, once again, West Point Marble Logings has learned from their lesson. A 1.76 KD versus a 1.09. If these two champs were to get into a fight, I have to say, even without looking at the KD, looking at how Yopi has really been popping off recently, yeah, I've got to throw my money on Yopi yet again as well. <laughs> yeah, me too as well. You know, Yopi's got the best statistics out of this two in this head-to-head -head matchup and now we might actually see WPM Lokings need to change their chat their strats during this this SND especially on this best of seven right because mm. on their first game up against Blacklist they weren't really able to get those first bloods but up against Bart Omega they were able to claim all of this one but yep. again they have to make sure that at least they shut down Rage early game just like what they did to Whoopi on the SND so that could just change everything here for WPM Lokings. But now taking a look at the maps and modes, Purifier and Gravity Vortex Gun will be banned by both ends, and every map is going to be playable. And we have Hardpoint will be the map pick for WPM Lokings. That will be their best map pick out of all the uh, game modes, uh, out of all the maps in the Hardpoint game mode. Then we go back to SND where Blacklist went up against WPM Lokings earlier. So very interesting take here for both this end. Yep, and of course, the Lokings, they're quite confident with that Hacienda hard point. We saw exactly what happened earlier on as they met Smart Mega. Those rotations were on point. Yopi was on fire. The guy was just blazing all the way through. And every single time they held on to that objective, West Point Mamba Lokings, they just looked like champs. They played like champs. But it is that standoff SND that I'm just a tad bit worried about. Not for West Point Mamba Lokings, but for Blacklist International Ultimate. Because the question is, how many more strats do they have? Haven't they already shown West Point Mamba Lokings exactly what to look out for? This is going to be the moment where we see if or not Lokings can get the better of them. If Lokings does take this SND away on top of that potential Hacienda. <laughs> I think I think someone, <laughs> someone might as well just Two. stand. I mean, no. Yes. 2 1. Th thanks for pointing that out. 2 0. Yeah, 2 1 <laughs> technically, because Blacklist does have that one match advantage. Which also, by the way, brings me to the point Blacklist only needs to win three times. West Point Mamba Lokings, on the other hand, they need four matches, Cali. Yeah, they need four. And it has to make, they have to make sure that they win this first map because it's going to be essential for them to come back and, of course, tie up the series and play this like a normal best of five. So, WPM Lokings. I am very confident that they will be able to put up a great fight at this agenda, but they have to make sure that their score streaks, their operator skills are going to be equally invested with good value just like the Blacklist International Ultimate did during their match earlier. And I, I don't think they should play the exact same way. I think they need to play it slightly more aggressively. I think they need to be a little careful as well in terms of the engagement. Once they lose out on those hills, the rotation back into challenge to try to break that hill needs to be a little bit more cleaner because this is Blacklist. This is not Smart Omega. Smart Omega was the easier one of the two. Blacklist has clearly proven that they are the true champs within Garena Master Season 4 in itself and they are going to be tough to beat. The statistics shows that. The past history in terms of the matches show that and West Point Mamba Lokings just needs to be on the careful. We're going to open things up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, at the very first match here in Hacienda Hot Point. This is your grand final between Blacklist International Ultimate and the West Point Mamba Lokings. Just to lay out uh, some few facts here, WPM Lokings has never won any series versus Blacklist in the entire history of Garena Masters. So it's going to be quite a stretch for them to actually pull off one upset here, knowing that Blacklist already has a one map advantage in this best of seven. But we open it up, we're going to see better map control in the hands of Blacklist as they have two players guarding that second floor and they have a player at least or two inside of that hard point. So they're currently playing this like a book and 
the adjustments and the gunfights definitely working for them at the early game. Yeah, no doubt, man. Blacklist is able to control both the top floor of mana as well as that hard point. But it is going to be back and forth looking at how open this hard point is. West Point Mamba Lokings are not too shabby at all, rotating around, making sure they clear off the top floor of mana. And they forced the players on the side of Blacklist funneled all the way through the spawn at warehouse this allows that one ingress point in towards that hard point and west point releases the scraps just so that they can rotate over take the secure spawn over at statues to play this garage yeah, this is very important this is something that we did not see from them up against smart omega so having this early rotation will not just keep away blackness from of course holding the point but of course it will give them some momentum coming into this game but it doesn't matter blackness just keeps coming true and they break the point by sacking four players inside of the hill yep they still do have that what spawn but blacklist is not going to be too fast with that at all the observation deck spawn is equally as threatening as it's just one line in maybe a gun to engage with them long range you know for a fact that SKS can rip through those players as they spawn one after the other from that observation deck now a split spawn here for the West Point Mamba low kings as the spawn gets flipped around as well low kings funneling on through but they just can't seem to win all of their gunfights in a row it's just all about the map control and what Rage has been doing all alone inside of that hard point. It was claiming time and scoring lives as well. Seven seconds will be claimed here by Low Kings as we roll rotate around new. We see five players already stacked in here for Blacklist on the next hard point rotation. And WPM Low Kings, they will be hit with a late rotate. But looking at what their current lineup is at, they are in line to score a pinch play here. And that will be key for them to open up and break the seal. And that was exactly what they did. But still, Blacklist wins their gunfight let's talk about how close this match is man 49 to 41 just eight points between them hunter killer drones gonna be able to slay yopi out of the equation and that's one player you surely want to take off of that hill instantaneously the defense breaks down and look at player number three race circling on around that cbr4 is going to put on a world of hurt on the players on the side of west point mamba low kings he does manage to get that one first but quickly traded out by kalo and that back step was perfect low kings straight back in here just two points between the teams i love how low kings is keeping up that pace with Blacklist not allowing them to run away. A great investment there by Yopi, dropping three players there before he gets shot down immediately. So now with that play, they eventually put Blacklist all the way to the left side of the map. So that will be able to buy them some time to score off a surmountable lead coming into the next hardpoint rotation. They will take this crap time in here at another late rotation, but it doesn't really matter at all because of how well that they did during this P3 rotation. And now as we come through it, 53 to 65, wow. we open up P4 and Demors wins the gunfight. And they open up the hill. Demars and PJ rotates around. They win out their gunfight. They've got the hill. But here comes a three-man push from the side of Blacklist out of the garage. Two players get taken down. Demars on fire all because of that investment on the claw by Jamin quickly snuffs him out to stop that operator from wrecking havoc. But it is the low kick still on here with the hill from the top floor of mana as well as the observation deck. A split spawn coming on through. This backstab from Yato can be deadly. Yeah, oh, but Luffy will be able to sniff him out, gets that first kill. Now, Yopi will be there for the backup as he's got that back top for control. But now as he eventually gets sorted out, they are going to be able to push up and of course, get that, get that, get that contest. But they will be able to get this crap time. But take a look at the lead, 55 to 103 before we end the first set of rotation. And as we go up into new guards, going towards P1, WPM Lokings looking so ready to take this one off versus Blacklist. Once again, the scraps picked up by Low Kings here, but they need to pick up every single point and they cannot sacrifice even a single moment off of that hill. Three players go in for that rotation. It's play number four. Just keeps them a little bit busy. So Luffy with a CBR4 is pretty annoying, but Blacklist once again ripping through all of them, winning out their gunfights. They take the hill, but this one's a risky one. The more you invest down at the bottom, the riskier it is going to be because it's very easy to take those kills from the top floor of mana. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that take. And of course, for WPM Lokings, they were just making sure that they take the top floor manor before, of course, putting some players inside. But now that they have that control, they sent out three players down there below and they get eventually sorted out. So no backups coming through and Blacklist will be able to claim some time. And well, it's just all about scoring kills here. Yeah. And Luffy has been doing a great job. 15 kills already in the game. And he's that ranged player that you want to fend off all the OBG players and the players that's backing the players up.
Yeah, P1's pretty much just a bait just so that you can streak your own team up. And West Point, Mamba Lokings getting the deed done. 132, they still gonna pick up a couple of more scraps. Rotation around towards P2 as well. But this time, Blacklist, they won the statues, but the gods of RNG, they give it away to PJ. PJ with a backstab. Well, PJ get the first one first, but no. Jabin turns around, he sorts him out. Lokings still oh. hold on to the hill. Everything's going to the side of the boys in yellow. Ah, oh, just a 50, just like I said, the, the, the lead is doubled right now and Low Kings is doing a great job, but Blacklist International Ultimate, they're coming through Wards, this garage, but Lokalo better investment with that spiral, but eventually Blacklist comes in hot with their own Operator skill and they eventually break it, but PJ has been so hot for the squad being that front man and they're going here for the second break attempt and they will be successful despite the push from Blacklist. They fend them off immediately. If this was the OG times, Low Kings would have been done and dusted with his hard point matchup already with a 150 point score. Blacklist is trailing at the back and this is the kind of dominant presence that we want to see out of the Low Kings if they want to take the series away. But they cannot get suckered in with the exact same strat again. Blacklist usually gives and they take back everything. And that is resonated here at this next hardpoint rotation. They they remove their players inside of that scrap time for P2 just to set up next. And they have some prime positions coming in true. Yato will be there to extend, of course, and anticipate players coming through the wells. But Luffy, he extends himself way so much as well. Oh. And good operator skill investment takes two players down. And now the push will be in soon and they will be in the point. GG, Luffy running circles around them. That annihilator investment is just perfect. Perfect. PJ with the exact same Annihilator as well. Stopping the players from getting towards that hard point. Everybody else just anchoring it down. Playing that objective. Making sure they slay anybody that shows up. That manages to get through Luffy as well. SKS investment from Luffy as well. And he's going to be running around. Rage gets found. Jamin goes down. AG's out as well. West Point Mamba Low Kings exceeds the 200 point mark. And they're looking for the victory. And Blacklist International Ultimate just trailing a tad bit. But a comeback is still possible. They're stacking their numbers here inside of this one, but Kalo still flags the flags and Kalo finds his 28 kill for the game. 125 seconds in his bag as well, and of course, Low Kings just a tad bit closer towards the victory here at this hard point agenda. 212 points already claimed. They just need a few more, and at this P forward, they have this early rotation is where they might be able to end it if we don't see. A stagnated push here by Blacklist. Oh, this looks like it's a fantastic push from the side of Low Kings. And now, the spawn from the back. It's gonna be Skirt approaching with a quick six. Skirt does manage to tag one player up. Jabin finishes him off. It is gonna be one last fight from Demos, and he gets taken out of the equation. All four players on the side of Low Kings now. Spawning right back up. Not skipping a beat. They're right back in there with the gunfight. But Blacklist is ready for the fight. They don't want to drop the ball in this first match just yet. Low Kings have done enough. They get the break yet again. A lot of time, a lot of those rotations to finish off Blacklist in this hard point match. Oh, they can definitely do just 20 more points for the win. AG now going in for the contest just to make sure that they stay alive and set up for a next hard point rotation. 105 to 234. That's a 100 point lead that they need to recover. More than a 100 point lead, by the way. And it's going to be a rough stretch from here on out. So here we go. Low Kings, they will be going in early for the next hard point rotation. They have that manner control. And PJ will be the catalyst for them to win this gunfight. But no, they will not be able to do that. So Blacklist, they will stay alive and will claim some time inside the hill. Ah, uh, this time it's going to be Yopi that hops on to play the player on the side of the objectives. Nine more points to finish this game off. Blacklist International Ultimate, this is the point where they can just give it up. Because there's no way in hell you take it back from the West. Point Mamba Low Kings. It is going to be Skirt holding down the battlefield, not wanting to give the game away just yet. Three seconds is what the Low Kings need, and I don't think that's going to be impossible at all. They sneak the hill away, oh. and they take this hard point in the bag. Wow, what a performance there. Total team effort, by the way. You got PJ and Yopi opening up that hill. You got Kalo playing time inside the hard point, then d -Bars and Luffy making sure that the parameter is clean. Talk about total team control, AJ. I mean, dude, the rotations were perfect. I think the gunfights were equal. We identified that even in the upper bracket finals already. We anticipated a close gunfight. We anticipated a close game. But it wasn't close because the rotations were just way too good. And West Point Mamba Low Kings, they, were just ha they just had such a supreme control on this match. But I 
will not be fooled. And if Olea gets fooled, if Kalo, Yopi, PJ, they all get fooled, then unfortunately, it's just eating, you know, from the hands of Blacklist International Ultimate. Like I said, they give one away and they take the championship home. That's exactly the game plan here, just to force the opponents to drop their guard a little bit here. Yeah, be complacent, and that's what happened earlier. And WPM Low Kings, obviously, they always had this great start, and they always used that hard point to shift that momentum to their side, and that's what we saw from them during that first matchup yeah. against Blacklist Ultimate. But then again, they falter. But on the next game, where they face Mart Omega, they had a solid hard point game mode. At least, I think it was like a 100-point lead that they had. Mm -hmm. They followed it up, you know, they didn't create the same mistake twice. They won that SND, they followed up with a victory, solid win up against Smart Omega on that map number three at control. Yep. And so I'm hoping that will be the scenario that Loki's will likely follow here. Because if not, Blacklist can just noble this out of control once they win that SND. They can, man. I mean, not a single player on the side of Blacklist reaching one minute on the hill. I think that's a testament to the slaying capability of the West Point Mamba Lokings. But at the same time, I'm not buying this. I think West, uh, I think Blacklist could have given a little bit of a bigger fight in that hard point. They're just trying to sucker in the Low Kings into a match where they think that they have got superior control. They think that they've got that extra bit of buff because they've kicked Smart Omega out of the competition. But the moment you underestimate Blacklist is the moment you lose the competition. And now that one match advantage has been neutralized. Yeah, of course. Now we play it like a normal best of five. Let's pretend that the first two maps did not happen and now we play S and D at standoff where we did see earlier mm -hmm. Blacklist used to defeat WP and Loking. So it's gonna get tricky here. Yep. But you're gonna start on the defensive side and Lokings, that's actually better than attacking because you're gonna have that set up towards that A side. Yes. And you can have Luffy and Susano play on the tanks to control the grannies as well as yep. the bakeries up floor. So this is going to be a different approach this time, but I just hope that Blacklist, you know, bring their A game and of course WPM Low Kings will not falter here. I don't think Low Kings are going to falter unless Blacklist has got way more tricks up their sleeves. Because I think one too many of those tricks have already been shown in the past match. And you know, it hurt, man. <laughs> it hurt to get kicked out into the lower brackets. And they had... Not a lot of time, right? They didn't have a lot of time in terms of reading exactly what went wrong in that matchup. But I'm very sure Olea was taking notes during that matchup in itself. And he's doing double time today. As the players were taken on Smart Omega, at the very least, it was an easier series. So Olea could just back off a little bit and try to assess how is he going to help the team beat Blacklist. Hopefully that was done because if they know exactly what to anticipate the gun skills the gunfights are all equal the probability of west point mamba lokings outplaying blacklist is surely there it is surely there it's just a matter of executing and of course adapting to what happened earlier between them during their first engagements and entanglements at this snd standoff during that upper bracket finals but now we started all off blacklist on the attack early engagements made at the a site looking to play for an early plant here aj You've been watching too much of Will Smith, man. Entanglements and stuff. Yo, oh, bums. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demos headshot. That's nasty, man. PJ turns one around. It's a 4v4. Quick bomb plant. You can depend on Blacklist to pull off these quick plants and just pile on the pressure on West Point. Yeah, I mean, 29 seconds left here. Yo, Bab still hasn't found any player yet. And Yopi there to clean that one mm. up. Now, just two more players to that for Blacklist. <laughs> just like that. As you say that, it's just a GG. The rest go down. 13 seconds to go. The diffusal way too smooth for the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings. And this is what I was talking about. They know what to anticipate. They know exactly how to expect and who to expect in terms of those rushes and all. So Low Kings is ready as they go ahead for the setup on the defense once again. Let's see exactly how they go ahead and take this out. It's going to be the Granny's Welcome playing Blacklist strategy against Blacklist. <laughs> I like that, Alea. <laughs> it is just a big brain move here. He gives the enemy their own dose of medicine. Now they're playing for a plant. 
Now they're playing for a retake this time. The Blacklist playbook being used by Low Kings. If this is a round win from the side of Low Kings, mm. I tell you, this would be a bitter medicine they force down the throat of Blacklist International Ultimate. But Jabin says, hell to the no. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen. Susano gets taken out of the equation. Yopi just managed to trade out AG Demos. Yopi go down. Living Luffy all alone. It's a 1v4. I'm sorry, bro. You're good. <laughs> but Blacklist is going to be a little bit better in this round. Get spotted out. Yo, Bob's finishes the round off yeah that's what happens when you try to use your opponent's strategy against them and they totally know how to counter it so a great way there to fend off the defense and the retake they're made by low king so now we're starting to see some tractions for both these ends but talk about how jabin was able to manage his own with that sniper by using an angle but as i say that this round luffy will be able to take care of him and that's an early 4v5 here in favor for low kings it is a good start. One player taken out of the equation. And Jabin was the annoying one. So with him down and out of this equation already, they just need to make sure Yato and Yobabs don't do too much of damage. It seems like Rage has been contained. Him trying to get that rush and being punished by PJ in that earlier series seems to have toned him down a little bit. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that take. I mean, the guy is slowly playing passively this time really respecting the amount of pressure low kings has been able to add up oh my god the wall pack is just and soon but pj there to get that read so great way to start off this round number three you already have the two number advantage you're already gaining so much space in the map you got that mid map control handled by number one in yopi and pj on that l wall so blacklist international ultimate mm. they are stuck on that bakeries they are stuck indeed. Two more players. AJ gets tagged up. This should be a round for the side of West Point Mamba Low Kings. But you cannot underestimate Yobabs and what he can do in these matches. Long range capability. He doesn't need to get up close and personal with those CBRs. But Luffy and Susano would be the perfect equalizer against him. The attackers rotate around. Yopi on standby. Yobabs shows up. Too easy of a takedown. That trade doesn't even come through. AG finally puts him down. And AG takes a double as well. And now it's a 1v3. Oh, what the okay. How did he get away from that? But good thing. Susano will be there to be the, the third line of defense for them to finally claim their second defensive round. So a slightly ab aggressive defensive taken there by Low Kings. They were kind of invading that, that Granny's welcome. So very important play there just to boost up their chances of winning this game. They currently have that one win. And of course, claiming this first bloods was definitely key for Low Kings to win their two rounds here. 2-1 to one, PJ finds Yobabs. A good take. The bomb landed already. And AG is the culprit as usual. Player number three, Rage, roaming around at the garage. Punished by PJ. The perfect one to get the deed done. And this is going to piss Rage off a tad bit more. Yato spots one out. That CBR is going to be holding PJ back. But it's a double challenge coming through. And West Point Mama Lokings is so good at executing that. Yeah. yeah, they are reading this game like a book. They know that the plant will be there. So now they are swarming in every angle. This is not a good way for Black to stand their ground as they get pulled down one at a time. Look at the way the Low Kings play that retake. They shot down the old Babs. They shot down Rage. Two of the playmakers from Blacklist International Ultimate. With them sorted out, it is easy for them to just come in there for this lay and play that retake. Skills on point. Strategies on point. The capability of the players on point. Chemistry is on point everything's going right for the west point mamba low kings but this is the defense though they do falter quite a bit on the offense so they need to pick up as many rounds as possible here as they defend not many left in here just two yobabs good jump shot pj taken out of the equation susano manages to take one as well yato trades out demos back and forth the snipers from both sides go at each other yeah, triple snipe set up for Blacklist. So we still have Blacklist having Yo Babs and Yato in there. But Rage now going in for the push now. He's going to activate this push mode, but Susano there to clean him up. And then Blacklist will be able to clear out the A site. They will be able to get that bomb plant sorted out. But Luffy, he is still very much alive. And we know what this guy can do. He can score off some kills, but he's the last guy standing. So he has to make sure the routes he take will always end up with the kill. And he can find himself to bounce back and take some cover once the push is being made by, by Blacklist. Mm, Luffy Never mind. Thought he could. I mean, it was a 1v3, bro. Against Blacklist. So, <laughs> we saw that <laughs> one coming. You know, Luffy's a great player. But Blacklist, you know, they won't drop the ball. 
Worst case scenario, he takes down one and then the other's just playing for trades. The positioning is one of the key points that Blacklist has just always been so good at. And that was one of those moments. So even if one of those players were in trouble, Blacklist should have been able to bounce right back from that. Low Kings this time, pulling in the Granny's Welcome once again, allowing the attacking team to find that quick plant at that A-bomb site. All right, here we go. The last time that we did see Blacklist International Ultimate had that bomb plant, Low Kings were successful to get that retake. And well, this time it's totally quite different because Low Kings, they are not surrounding the players for now. And Rage is kind of caught in between as we do see Dimors come in there to flank. And now we Wait. are seeing the flank ensues. So now it's a 3v2 here. Oh, this is a GG. 3v none. And Low Kings pick up the fourth round win just as they need before we switch sides. Fantastically done. And now, Blacklist, they'll move on to the defensive side as West Point Mamba Low Kings picks the bomb up. And this is where the struggle gets real. And let's see if or not West Point Mamba Low Kings has smartened up from that first series. I mean, the good thing here, coming into the second half, is that Low Kings have a, a two-round lead. So, yeah. they may have failed the first, two, the first two rounds, but they still have a safety net. And it's always going to be a tie-up game. But it is going to be important that they continue the winning way. You have to get that first blood shot down at least Joe Babs and Rage at the early game just for you to be successful at winning rounds here. And well, they did not really able to take down one of the two, but they have dropped Jabin, so one of the playmakers out as well. An early 5v4 here, and they haven't really settled the plan here just yet because mm -hmm. they know Blacklist is there with a very offensive spot. And this is where I start believing in the Low Kings a little bit more. They clearly have learned their lessons. They want to thin down the herd before they go in for the attack. And Yopi! Oh. You cannot lose gunfights like that, Yopi! AG, CBR, turn around. Yopi goes down. It's all equal. Well, that was just a mischievous play there. And look at that. Yobas will be able to follow up dropping Susano. So, Low Kings numbers cut down. And their bomb plant going to be exposed in the hands of AG. And Blacklist can just center their play around that. And Rage has been very quiet here. I think he snuffed out Demors. Oh, he <clears> spots <throat> him real nicely. Rage sneaking behind the guy. Turn around, sir. He doesn't. Demors absolutely annihilated. Rage with a silent play. And PJ trades him right back out. It's a back and forth. Luffy puts them in front. It's a 1v2. But it is the boy, Yato. Oh. Luffy says bye bye. What was that flick? Luffy just gave this squad a three round lead. That's the best. Best one I've ever seen. That's why I said, and that's why I've been saying from season one of Greater Masters, Alea, the best coach in Call of Duty Mobile MSP, hands down. That voice worth just went up three falls. No, make that ten falls. Alea's the king of coaches. Five to two. 100. Smart Omega has three coaches, huh? Let me just put yeah. that out there, all right? So, Olea <laughs> deserves three man's salary. That's about it. There's no if, buts, or maybes about that. <laughs> this guy's going to be a millionaire by that point. <laughs> but yeah. He deserves it. Ole yeah, he deserves it. I mean, you know, he already dealt with three coaches. Now he's dealing with two. And of course, world mm -hmm. championship coaches this time yeah. up against Blacklist International Ultimate. And he pulls up and defies the odd. I mean... It's not just worth three coaches here. We're talking about five coaches that he was able to defeat. And these are not just, you know, the typical coaches here, AJ. Always believe, not just because they are the underdog. Because from day number one, they have shown that they were worthy of their trust. Yo, Bobs, long shot. And they will be able to just thin down the numbers just a tad bit more on the attack. The bomb. It's just very patient, but that A bomb site is wide open. Rage is just waiting for his opportunity with the CBR. Now, if Yopi does manage to circle on in, Rage will hear that beep. AG, great position. Oh, he's oh. side once again. Demos this time round turns it on to AG. I mean, tit for tat, baby. Uh, breaks off the game. You gotta convert that. And Rage oh. still wins it despite Yato having that and advantage. It's gonna be Demos. 1v2 now. Bomb not planted. Can't pick it right back up. But that audio cue is going to sound off the alarm for the players on the side of Blacklist. Rage, patient, waiting for that backup. 1v2. They want to challenge this together. One's got the secondary. And Demos just slides right back in front of Rage. That's a GGWP right there. Yeah. I mean, again, 
Blacklist do not fumble when they are on the number advantage and of course in the late game. I so mean. that round right there, that round right there saved them. It prevented Low Kings to getting that match point. I don't know what Demos was doing there. Like I'm not the best player in CODM, but I do not know. I don't I, I can't I can't figure out that strategy because he just slid right in front. He didn't turn to the left. I think he was trying to hide it. He was just trying to play his luck. Like, okay, nobody saw me. <laughs> I'm just gonna hide behind <laughs> the haystacks here. Doesn't work like that, brother. Yato, trade speech here out. Susano goes down as well. Blacklist with the numbers advantage. And it looks like they've got mid control as well. This is where it gets rough, you know, Blacklist, we know them, they like to play defensive side better compared to their offensive sides. Yeah. But the, the bomb side is actually open here, so they can play for that plant. They have Luffy guarding the back, so they are basically covering all angles that Blacklist might enter to. But again, they need to call the herd first. Remove one player, mm. equalize before planting that bomb. But I think Luffy needs to get into that bakery second floor first, just so that he can sort out, at the very least, Jabin. If Jabin's out of the equation, the job just gets a tad bit better and easier for the team. And Luffy's the only one that can do it at the very moment. And then later on, they have to also worry about Yobabs. Yobabs is not really holding on to a position that they have to deal with at the moment here. He's just, just behind the convenience store at the hotel shortcut, so it's all good. Plan is on already. 45 seconds is a lot of time in CODM SND, so Blacklist can take the time. AG, we, he, he has struggled to win some gunfights here. He has to convert this one. And there you go, he finds one. So they will be able to trade the numbers. But Luffy, mm -hmm. he is on a prime spot here, AJ. Yep, that's the position I wanted him to play. But a little bit earlier, now that he's gotten called out already, it's going to be Demos just trying to hold the fort back. Demos needs to reposition Luffy with a double! The guy turns the tide! It's going to be match point for the West Point Marble Low Kings! But Jabin, he still can clutch this out! He's the captain! He's carpet! He could play it in the car! He can play it 1v2! But the time runs out! Ah, oh, Luffy, he went into gear 5 and of course gave the chance for Low Kings to be one point away! And getting the lead to their favor, AJ. Dude, gear five, Kaido went down, bro. I don't think Blacklist stands a chance. <laughs> I agree. Well, Sorry Luffy, for anyone that's see... not following the manga, that's a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You can just Oops. skip this through. You can yeah, skip this through. Switch off the stream right now. <laughs> it's a quick push. And this is a, a switch around from Blacklist. They stacked the private backyard this time round. That A bomb site's fully covered. And low kings are not rushing in. You gotta love this. You gotta respect this, man. Olea knows exactly how to play those counter strats. The moment he knows your playbook, you're dead. You're done. Olea's coming for your head. Yeah, he memorized this type of play. It's like he's an android or something. And there we go. A follow-up from Susano to drop AG. And the odds of winning here at this round is looking more possible now for Low Kings. Smoke's coming true now. Luffy tries to play with the counter. He's using that statue. He finds one up against Yato. One more? He spots the player. Oh, he's not going to get that though. But it's a 4v2. The game of numbers here on the side of West Point. But Rage and Yobabs, they do the deed and they make it a 2v2. Game's all numbered now. PJ, 1v2. Can Rage get it back? Yes, he does. It's a 1v1. Both CBRs. It's the game. It's the game of the CBRs all the way. He tags him up through the wall. Doesn't get the oh. shot at Rage. Slimes him down. And Blacklist stays alive. What to play from Rage. That's his 10th kill off the game. Remember. Moving into the second Ooh. half, he only has four kills. Now, take a look at what he has. He has eight, by the way. I, I want to stand up and dance. Ten. I can't dance. I've got two left feet, but I want to stand up and dance watching this match, man. <laughs> I mean, both these teams making me hella excited. Six to four. Stuck on match point. West Point Mama Loking says got one more opportunity to finish this off. In fact, make that two before Blacklist International Ultimate catches up with them and pushes us into overtime. Whether Low Kings lets us get to a stage like that, it'll all be dependent on both Luffy as well as Susano to open this map up. And Susano is going to be that guy that you want to have that shot enabled. He's currently there at the Grannies, going to have the control towards the middle of the map so he can spot Jabin, who's holding off that Vance. But of course, for Low Kings, they may have that A side open. 
But that is a trap set up by Blacklist International Ultimate for them to complete this retake. Now, stuns coming true. That's going to be information sent out. Bomb plant gonna happen. And that will be key now for them to shoot the shot. And Susano with the wall bang. And there it goes. Yopi Lofi following it up. Yep, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But Yo Bob's still alive and kicking AG with the CBR4. He doesn't falter all that too many times. And the one and only King Jabin, not really top fragging this time around, but you know he can back up the rest of his team members. But Luffy puts him out of the equation instantaneously. Yo Bob's and AG circling around. 35 seconds to get the deed done. I think we are gonna move on to match number three. Oh, AG now keeping the hopes alive for Black's International Ultimate, but there's only 25 seconds left. Yo Bob's. Drops Luffy down, making that a 3v2. PJ needs to win this gunfight, but AG makes it possible for it to be equalized. And Yopi, he needs to win this gunfight for this win to happen. And mm -hmm. he drops Yobabs now a 1v1. 11 seconds left. You just gotta play the time. Just let AG chase you down like a mouse. And there it goes. AG GG. will be nothing left to do. And Low Kings will take the lead. And they will win this SD. <sighs> I wanna dance. I wanna dance. There's no doubt about it because I think we're about to crown a brand new champion for the first time ever at Garena Master Season 4. West Point Mamba Lokis might be able to pick up the trophy, but it ain't over just yet. Blacklist, the king of reverse sweeps. They know how to turn things around. And you can't get too complacent. You see here, Oleya actually screaming to his teammate, let's go, let's win this. One by one, you gotta win it brick by brick. And that's what they've been doing. Although Blacklist may have that map advantage by having that one series overall, it's currently two and one. And Control, we did see Blacklist International Ultimate put up a great fight on that versus WPM Low Kings earlier. But looking at what WPM Low Kings has to offer right now, it seems like their firepower has doubled up and Blacklist cannot contain it in any way possible, AJ. Take a look at this. Hmm. PJ and Luffy. CBR4 for PJ with 14 kills, Luffy mm -hmm. with 11. Dude, you cannot get it done without super snipes out there on the battlefield. And Luffy was surely aiding his team to get all of those long-range eliminations. And he kept Jabin in check. He was making sure Jabin does not rage on and shut down the rest of his players. It was already enough that Yobabs was just being so annoying with those long-range engagements. Luffy needed to do something. He did exactly that. But it was PJ that stepped up for the team mainly in terms of all of those slays. And he was just absolutely wrecking it out there on the battlefield. And you know, I expected Rage to do slightly better on the side of Blacklist Ultimate. I think he was kind of pushed into a corner after the first series. He did get aggressive and then PJ kept turning on him time and time again. And this time around, in the second time of meeting at Stand of SND, we didn't see that aggressive uh, side of Rage. And I'm a tad bit disappointed that didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, looking at the SND, what happened with Rage there, I think the first four rounds, he only had one kill. Mm. And that was alarming because, you know, he was always the top fragger. He's always the one that is scoring all these first kills for Blacklist International Ultimate. And that SND, apart from Yo Babs, and so having him out there not really involved made it easier for WPM Low Kings to, of course, get more corners, get more space in the map, and control the game itself, AJ. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, you know what? Let's, let's put the serious talk aside because they are just going to make us go crazy all day long. So if you had a private crew, what would they be called? Like, you know, the, the, the straw hat crew, the red hair crew, what would yours be called? The wasabi crew? Oh. Oh no, not, oh, not the wasabi crew, the sushi <gasps> crew. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. You, saved it. You, you saved it. You saved it. You saved it. To compliment the wasabi, of course. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You <laughs> saved it. I, I thought you were dead, man, when you said no, not the wasabi crew. I thought that's about it, Callie. I might as well kiss you goodbye right now because I probably won't see you again after this. <laughs> Good save, bro. Good save. <laughs> yeah, okay. Of course, we're ready for this moment. My Reese is insurmountable. Okay, never mind. That's not, that's, 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 that's just throw that out of the window. Okay, okay. We'll throw it out of the window alongside Warden, okay? But when we get back into the matchup, it is just a little bit of a recap. This is the winner's camp earlier on um, that... We wanted to show you on behalf of Blacklist, but we couldn't. So we're just showing you them cheering each other on before the next series. <laughs> I really think, I really think Blacklist is setting West Point Mamba Lokings up for an absolutely death-defying super comeback. They're going to win this three in a row and that's a GGWP. But of course, that's what they're planning. Whether or not Lokings allows them to do that is a different question. 
Yeah, I have to agree with you on that take. And well, we're gonna start off this control with Lokings on the attack side. And what we know so far on control, when they start on the attack side versus Omega, they were so efficient with it. But Rage, yep. this is what you want along with Yano. They will be teaming up to gain full control of this trailer. So the defense at the day side gonna remain pure and Lokings will lose seven lives at the get-go. Good rotation coming through from Demos with the CBR. He's gonna beat Jabin in a couple of seconds. That SKS with the CBR, you know exactly who's gonna win it out. But Jabin misses the first shot. And CBR goes in to continue engaging. Skirt on the other hand, just cleaning up house here. But it's just going to be a teaser at the back and I wonder exactly what is Javen doing. He's taking a little bit too long to finish off his meal. And there we go. He's going to be able to push up though. He's going to win the gunfight up against Luffy. But eventually will be sorted out there by Yopi, the B-side. They were able to sniff it out. It was open. So now they put two players there and PJ will be the ones cornering these players. Holding out that auto repair shop. And he's going to find his first kill there. And mm -hmm. B-segment now getting controlled by Low Kings. 18 lives for the side of Low Kings. But they're already taking that B control away from the hands of Blacklist International nice. Ultimate. And PJ doing the, the God's work out there on behalf of West Point Marble Low Kings. He's snuffing out Blacklist one after the other. And it looks like that B control point will be sneaked away alongside A. What is going on? <laughs> Blacklist focusing on gunfights and they just lose sight of what the objective is. And of course, this is where it kind of gets differentiated. You know, Low Kings, they always love to play OBJ. And according to the will of Olea, get into the OBJ. Don't focus for kills. You get in that OBJ, play it like your your life is on the line. And that's what Low Kings has been doing. But unfortunately, they did one segment it, but it was cleared out. But WPM, they're going to take another crack at this. And PJ is going to be the front man. Takes the mm -mm. two players down. And now they have two players inside. And Blacklist is down on live. PJ goes out for a quick challenge. But gets quickly owned by Yato. Rage taken down by Yopi. Susano shows up to back the rest of the team up. But that SKS is not going to connect. As Jabin shows up with the exact same gun on the other side. Yopi with the Freddy only takes away one. Make that two. Jabin taken out of the equation as well. This is Loking going in now for the win. Luffy slowly sneaking away this control point. What? And that Holger is going to be what? beaming up player. One. One after the other, and West Point Mamba Low Kings on that perfect attack to open up this match. They open it up with a win through capture. Let me tell you how hard that is on firing range. You always win through a winter elimination when you are on the attack side. But Low Kings having far better map control and doing the same thing. But I have to say, opposite end. I have to say, sir, you know what I mentioned earlier on? That we did not see any mistakes from Blacklist. That's the mistake. Blacklist were playing for trades. Blacklist were playing for lives. They weren't controlling their control points. I mean, at one point, we saw them almost losing B control. The smart thing to do if you're going to let that go is just stack all of your players on A. Just make sure no rotations come around. But they were losing two sides at the same time. You know that's a huge problem here. Yeah, and of course, that needs to change. Maybe at least focus on all, giving up one part of the heart of one part of the control point and just focus on one area. And maybe that area should be the B side. And well, now as we try to go for a switcheroo here, WPM looking on the defense, clearly doing a lot better. You see Luffy standing his ground here at this wood house. Already got the claw investment ready for activation. And they are trapping Blacklist in the spawns here, AJ. I mean, you see, Cisco, I know you're watching, boy. I'm not the only <laughs> one that uses lasers on my gun, okay? Luffy's got it on his whole guest will. I feel proud. <laughs> nine, nine, make that seven more lives. Dude, Low Kings on 23, Blacklist on frick? five. Can we just throw this match on a fast forward? Low Kings, one more game. If they take it, they'll just need one more match to close the series off and call themselves champions of MSP, oh champions my. of Garena Masters. I cannot believe my eyes. These boys have become men. Oh my god. We, we watched them grow, AJ. I mean, starting from Garena Masters Season 1, they went from kids to... Teenagers and now full grown adults. Look at how well they mature. If this was last year and they had this lead, they will get complacent. And this is the perfect time where the Juggernauts will be able to take it away from them. But no, they're not. They are responding back with an even better approach every round that passes here at this control game. 
All out investment of the operators this time round from Blacklist. A three man operator investment just to take the lives away from the side of Lokings. Lokings needs to back away. The Sparrow still alive and kicking. Jabin and Yobabs have been reset already. Skirt loses his Sparrow. And now's that retaliation time for the side of Lokings. Luffy drops a pretty onto Skirt. And everybody steps out of their defenses. But the shutdown power on the side of Blacklist just a little bit too good. The boys in blue, one rotating around. It's going to be the one and only Jabin with the CBR. Gets quickly owned by Luffy. And they'll continue. And you push it on up. That B control point once again is wide open, Cali. Yeah, it only it only takes one rotation from Lokings to get that away. And they only put out one player there. And that will be Jabin holding his ground using an off angle. And well, it doesn't really matter at all now because you can see that Lokings is definitely panicking at this round number three where, you know, we did not see them actually come in here and play objective. They're trying to break free from the spawns, which, uh, which have they been doing since the start of this game when Blacklist International Ultimate started to gain control of that mm. old house. And it's just annihilation coming into this point for Blacklist. But now there are some contests being made here at the B side. Timely rotation around for the side of West Point Mama Lokings. Yato hops on in. Quickly shuts down Yopi. Back to back annihilation. And now the clock is ticking down. They finally managed to go in here for a quick pause. But Yobab, Yato, sorry, knows exactly what to do. The quick slide on in. And that will put the boys on the side of Lokings on notice. They quickly push their way in towards that B control side. But I believe this match is all over. Blacklist pulls one round back. This hey. is better. On better zero defense. seconds again, this is the oh second time in my history! No! On no! zero seconds! Don't do that! Don't ah, but do there's that, two lives. Lokings. There's two lives. There's one life. Yeah. This over, is it's GG. over. Pusangala. Okay. Pusangala talaga. Blacklist International Ultimate. Better defensive round. This time they were focusing more on the objective. Yeah. And of course, they may have given away that B site for some instances, but definitely an upgrade to what they showed on that first round. 30 30 this time is going to be low kings on the defense, and you know there is a defensive advantage here, especially when the teams are all equal. West Point Mama low kings, they can match up with all of those gunfights. It just needs to be the investment of those operators, the investment of the score streak as well. As I say, as I talk about that operator, you whip Yopi whips out that sparrow onto pop away. CBR4 in the hands of PJ, just way too good to clear off those markers at that A control point. But one segment has been sneaked away already, though. And there we go. They will be failing that push towards A, so now they will be going towards B. So Demors will be the only player there on rotation, and that's going to be key here for Blacklist to take down. And now that they've done that, they will be claiming time. They sent out two players there, so the capture will be much faster. Jabin will be holding off off of this tunnel, and is doing a great job at it, keeping the players in pace. And Rage will be finding some players and take them down as well. And there you go, live count now in favor of Blacklist, and objective-wise, doing a lot better here this time around. They just need to circle around somehow for West Point Mamba uh, Low Kings just to see if or not they can sneak away a couple of kills. It's going to be the Hunter Killer drone used by Yopi. Circles around, player number three going to be in a little bit of trouble, but it gets shot down. It's not going to be too faced about that at all. It is the one and only Rage with the CBR4. Circles around as well. And now Blacklist just needs to aim to take away two more segments from that A control point, which is very much doable. Yeah, and of course, they have the operating skills to back them up in here. That Sparrow, that Claw, is going to be very beneficial for them to make this push possible. But EOP there, too early for the contest and will be able to snuff these players out, take them down as well. And if you're Lokings, this is the best chance for you to win the game. So you're going to be best for efforts here. And that's going to be two kills there made for Yopi. And they will be able to hold up the players momentarily. But Blacklist, they are inside with Rage claiming time. Skirt, you cannot take yourself out in a potential match like this. Because that's just going to be an absolute waste of opportunity. An absolute waste of operator as well. But they could no point already being sneaked away. PJ needs a little bit of backup. That Annihilator on standby. Does he want to slide on in? He looks the wrong way. Three more lives left for the Low Kings. And we have to go on to the next round. Where Blacklist will have a solid advantage with the score streaks and operators. This is the best way for Blacklist to take one away and tie this game up. But Low Kings, they kind of fumbled the ball in that last two rounds. I mean... Yeah. They were playing kind of passive, or it's just that Blacklist were playing too aggressive that they weren't able to hold themselves there. And that needs to change here. This time, they open up with Lopi getting the first one. And of course, the defense is going to be shot down here fully at the A side with PJ now sliding in to take control towards A. 26 lives left. Freddy gets dropped. Rage takes only one away. Jabin, investment on the Annihilator, gets a double for him. Rage, you cannot! 
not take yourself out, Rage. I just talked about that. But it doesn't matter. It is still an opportunity for the low kicks now to step up with your own operators. Jabin, here comes the Freddy. And he takes a double? Yes, he does. Susano and PJ taken out of the equation as well. Low kicks down on lives. Blacklist looking solid in this final round of control. Yeah, they look so revitalized, and it's all because of how well they invested their operators right off the start. I mean, Japan, Yo Bats, Rage, their Sparrow investments have been uh, so recommendable here. And that is the reason why, you know, they have like a huge life advantage at the start of this game. But now we are starting to see Kalo and the squad actually come in for the contest. They are failing their gunfights, and guess who's the problem that's been giving them that? Mm -hmm. That's Rage. He is the sole reason why Lokings is struggling to take control of some of the points here. Yeah, thank God he took himself out there and then one, one engagement there. Just helping the Lokings thin down the problem just a tad bit. But four life deficit now for the Lokings as they sneak away that A control point. Yobabs in a solid God made. Takes Yopi out of the equation, but PJ still alive and kicking. He's going to be able to sneak this away and the rest of the players on the side of Blacklist, they don't make that same mistake twice. They back away towards the B control point and they want to welcome Lokings with open arms. No operator skills here, locked in for WPM Lokings, but Yo Babs, he is using his. And he needs to find some eliminations here, or it will not be a work investment. And unfortunately for him, it's not gonna work. They were expecting for a fast take at this B site. Well, they got baited, and now that is one operator skill wasted from Yo Babs and WPM. They are taking their time playing this one like an s &D. Can I talk about what a god's threat that was just to slow down the pace and force Blacklist to get a little bit nervous, waste their operator as well. <laughs> Dude was on standby, nobody <laughs> showed up. That's like Warden waiting for his date. Oh, burn! <laughs> oh my god, Warden. Love you, Warden. <laughs> <laughs> 12 to 8, low kings, 4 lives down, 45 seconds to go with the play of their lives on control as they circle on around. It's gonna be the push from the branch road first. Everybody on the side of Blacklist have sneaked away. They're waiting for one of the boys to hop on in first. Luffy gets one, Susano gets one as well, but all traded out. 4 more lives left in here and Blacklist has 9. That's just 4 too many. Yeah, so now they are in line to win this game. And while Demors is not really sneaking in here, he has to make a play that three players on the Ferrari is gonna win one gunfight, but Yo Bob's there to kill him. And Blacklist International Ultimate wins their very first map in this best of seven, taking control away from WPM Low Kings. And that only means we are all tied up in terms of the scoreline. It is two to two. Yes, you did not hear that wrong. Kelly did say this is the first win within the series, but they entered the grand finals with a one map advantage, which means they already had one free win. And that's not unfair for some of you who think it is unfair because they earned that one map advantage. And I prefer that. And I think you prefer that as well, Kali, instead of a twice to beat grand finals, which can get quite tiring, especially if you're West Point Mamba Lokings. These champs have already played three series in a row. Okay, this is the third series, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, if imagine if WPM Lokings won this one and they had to go to another reset. Mm. Talk about serious fatigue and more advantage for Blacklist International Ultimate that only... It is going to be tough for low kings, but I mean, Blacklist can gather themselves up back again. But now, yeah. speaking of gathering back themselves, Blacklist International Ultimate wins their first map and it happens to be in control. Well, it's not just a very good win. It was an impressive one because they won three in a row. They reverse mm -hmm. with WPM low kings in this control map. And to do that in such an aggressive match fashion on that round three and four, yeah. It totally caught WPM Lokings to a surprise and they weren't able to set up their positions once Rage was locked in hard here at this game. I think PJ was kind of nerfed in this game and he didn't get as many slays as he usually does out there on the battlefield. And that's just a little bit of a waste if you ask me on the side of West Point Mamba Lokings. But it's all right. That just means more matches for you and me to have fun, Cali. Oh yeah, obviously, and we're hopping right next, right up next here to Hardpoint Raid, a map pick by Blacklist International Ultimate. Mm -hmm. Lokings will be picking that red side. And not much information can be laid out in here for Blacklist, but we all know that they picked this map for a reason. And mm -hmm. of course, they love settling into P3 to P4. And yeah. I believe this is where they were able to take down Bla WPM Lokings on yes. the upper bracket finals earlier. So, Correct. yeah, they're using the weakness of WPM Lokings here. But the last time we saw that was an SND, they pick it all over again. It did not work. 
So, it's not going to work. I tell you, that match <laughs> was very winnable for West Point Mamba Low Kings. The only reason why they lost it was because, number one, they panicked. Okay, this is not only one reason. Two reasons why they lost it. Number one, they panicked, and that panic just led to a waste of their operators as well as score streaks instantaneously, just not giving them the advantage. Number two... They rotated early, good, but they rotated to the wrong spot. Instead of rotating over towards Gardens and taking that favorable spawn, they rotated directly into the basketball court. Now, I know Filipinos love basketball, but that was the <laughs> wrong time. Yeah, you gotta play your spawns first. After all, yeah. we're talking about hard point, and if you can control the spawns, and if you have the favorable spawns right off the start, then you're guaranteed to play more basketball after that, right? So, Amen. Blacklist Ultimate. It's like you finish your homework gonna... first before you go play ball. Yeah, of course. And that's how you do it if you're WPM Lokings. Or else mama slaps you. And you gotta cry. <laughs> With a chancla? <laughs> <laughs> you go to daddy, daddy slaps you. Because you had to complain to him and he's not happy with that. <sighs> the problem's being Snow a boss. child. Yeah. Being an Asian child. Not, not just a child. Just Asian children have Asians. this problem. <laughs> Asian things. <laughs> Asian, Asian things. things. Imagine you get hurt already and your mom slaps you because you're so careless. <laughs> ah! You oh, lost man. the game, Mama slaps you, Daddy slaps you. <laughs> All world comes crashing down. It's gonna be West Point Mama Low Kings opening things up and the hard point first. Kill here, all equal. Blacklist wins out the initial gunfights, but Low King still stacking up laundry. They still have this power position to play around with, but look at player number four with that CBR. AG's on the approach. He wants to clear out that laundry, and he's gonna wash these players off Low Kings. Oh no, he gets taken down. Yo, P turns on him, and Low Kings claim the hill. Yeah, they are doing so well here. This time, split spawn still for Blacklist International Ultimate, but that soon would get sorted out by Demors all by himself. And, you know, Demors, he has a brother, and his brother is on the other side, and that yeah. will be scared. So, brother versus brother here on this respawn, and we both all know that they have the same personality. They love slaying, and they are the one currently leading this team just to make sure they gain grounds at this game. Let's see exactly what the Salaya brothers will be able to bring out from each other. And uh, who was that that threw a comment in that the... I, I, who was that? Was that was that Image? Who said the, that the winning brother is going to bully the losing brother his whole <laughs> life. Because it's the oh biggest my. match. <laughs> well, at least for some reason, we're going to still have a lot of more Green Master season. So whoever loses this, they will still have, you know... Like more chances of bullying each other out. But yeah, never mind. Let's talk about this game. Blacklist, early rotation. They have the spawns. Low Kings trying to break. And they will fail the first attempt. And of mm -hmm. course, AG was there claiming time inside a hill. As he always does. 52 points already raked up here by Blacklist International Ultimate. Means absolutely nothing in a hard point matchup, especially at Raid. And we haven't even reached that P3 just yet. That's going to be your money hill. And if Low Kings can claim a couple of the points here from P2 and then rotate early on, which they're already doing at the money hill, it's a GG WP. They're right back in the match. There we go. AG will clean up this P2. But that P3, looking so solid for Low Kings as they have them set up here with one player each covering the corners with only the middle being the one left exposed and Kalo has to win this gunfight for this hard point to favor WPM Lokis but as he lost that some players are gonna try to get that oh. back and Yopi steps up big time and Hokings open it up here at P3 which is the money hill Big win by Yopi. He takes down two players before getting taken out of the equation. And that hold on the hill was just perfect. Kalo takes down one and then takes himself out with the Sparrow. That's the main reason why the Mustachio hates the Sparrow. If it's that level of skill, they can take themselves out. I always kill myself. It's hard. You know, they either, you have to have skills just to be able to time your shots correctly there and not kill yourself. And of course, for Blackwood International Ultimate, they use that Sparrow to break this hill. And Lokings, they try to defend with it as well. But the better outcome is favoring Blacklist International Ultimate. 78 to 33 right now. And Blacklist looking so solid in terms of just like eliminating players. And of course, covering themselves up and reinforcing. And now here is the trick that we talked about. Mm -hmm. If you're low kings, you're setting up this next hard point. You gotta get that ticky control before you play basketball. This is a good rotation this time. They do stop by Garden. They want to claim that favorable spawn and they take it away for themselves. Low Kings from up top now. Good concuss right in and they should be able to take this hill right back for themselves. There we and go. basketball court now belongs to them. But Pins and Maneuver now as the gods of RNG give Blacklist the spawn out of the special forces base out of nowhere. Out of absolutely nowhere the game favors Blacklist. 
I mean, at hard point number four here at raid, it has the worst spawn possible because at the moment that you think that you have the favorable spawns, the moment that your opponent will spawn right in front of you and take you down, so not really friendly there. But Blackness International Ultimate doing so much damage and Low King's bleeding right now as they continue to claim time here. This point, Mamba Low Kings, they are trying to, they are very best to play this, but Blacklist International Ultimate has woken up already. And this is what we talked about a little bit earlier on as well. The strategy of suckering in your opponents, making them think that they've got a one up on you, and then absolutely sweeping them out of the competition. That's exactly what Blacklist is known for. 125 points already, Jabin circles around, doesn't need to do much. It's just that Kilo 141 combo with the shorty that just puts him up on top. Uh, look at that, almost a 100 point lead for Blacklist. And if you're low kings, you have to start your comeback here at this P5, which is absolutely impossible knowing that this is the most contested hill out of all the hard points we have. And knowing that Blacklist International Ultimate, they are actually kind of slowing things down, you know. It's taking them some time to actually go and rotate and play that pinch play. Yeah, WP and low kings, they may be claiming time, but the flank already in soon. It's scared! Takes himself down once again! I mean, yeah. Sparrow problems. 58 to 133. Low Kings could barely hold the hill. And it's just a raging rage alongside Yako. Those DBR boss really popping off now. And the only long range capability gun that they have on their side, apart from the CBRs, of course, is that Kilo 141 in the hands of Jamin. And they're all playing their role absolutely well. It's just surprising a tad bit to see Rage not one of the big slayers on their side. Yeah, of course. Only he's got 10 kills in here. And he's not really popping off. And. That's really something that you need to worry about because Rage is not playing well and Low Kings is struggling to gather themselves in this game. And who is responsible for making this one happen? And well, that is going to be the three-headed monster from Blacklist. Jabin, Skirt, and Yada right now. The OG players actually putting the pressure up against WPM Low Kings every time they go and step inside the hill. It's very hard to think that Blacklist is not running away with this matchup just yet. Low Kings trying their very best to turn things around. But Blacklist International Ultimate, they just switched on a, a switch in their heads and they're just on berserk mode right now. This is the kind of Blacklist you don't approach. This is the kind of Blacklist you cannot touch. You better hope and pray for an SND because that's the only thing that can break their momentum. Once they snowball into a mode like this, there's just no way they're giving up that hill. There's no way they're giving up their gunfights. Almost reaching the 200 point mark already. They're gonna welcome the low kings into the 60 point club. Hell no! Oh my god. Well, Blackness International Ultimate, they are starting to show their true strength in here. And low kings failing to gather themselves back up is gonna cost them some time here. 13 seconds left. Fine, you can go and contest, but you gotta set up the next hard point already, which is going to be a potential money hill. And if you cannot get your act together, just stack your players inside of the hill, put some trophy system down, and of course, hold it like your life depends on it because you can't afford to lose this round because that gives Blackness the match point in the overall series. Who cooks a better chicken adobo? We'll find out right here, right now. Low King's opening up the hill. Blacklist going in for the attempt. Play number five from the back. Brings in the Sparrow. It's going to be the one and only Yato. Yato gets one. Yato gets two. Yato takes the hill for Blacklist International Ultimate. But gets interrupted by Yopi and his Sparrow as well. Yopi pops off. Rage enters the building. And Rage takes it back for Blacklist. They want to end it right here, right now. But the Low Kings are putting up one final stand. And here we go, this is what they need. They need to gather themselves up. One good hill to turn the momentum to your side. Just stay close as much as possible. Play for trades as a team. And of course, do not wield in the hands of Blacklist International Ultimate. Now you're you're winning more of your gunfights, which is nice. You're already about to crack that 100 point mark, but you still have 100 points that you need to erase and delete just for you to be able to come back. But Blacklist already having a better setup. They're gonna bring in their overrated skills to open up P3, what? but they drop it, and now Lokis have a chance to get this. But the Predator missile will only take one down, but it's more than enough, AJ. It's more than enough. Skirt brought out the Sparrow, did absolutely nothing with it, and the Money Hill in the hands of the West Point Mamba Lokings as we activate it. It's gonna be player number one, Yopi, just circling around the CBR. Big fight, backstab. He takes down that one player, but that's a huge kill coming on for him. Blacklist International Ultimate just paused on here for a couple of seconds. They cannot get the ingress in, but player number two, Skirt, he will pause the bleeding as well. Everybody else rushing on in, but I believe the damage has already been done. Low Kings is just way too behind Blacklist International Ultimate. They cannot lose out in any one of these gunfights. They cannot release that hill. It has to be perfect. This has to be a gunfight. 
that they have to win and of course a hill that they need to stay on a little bit longer than Blacklist International Ultimate. 209 and 144, you already gathered yourself back up, but now this is just the start of the comeback. You gotta make sure that you continue to win your gunfights, and Demors is gonna kickstart that push towards Oi. the next hill, but he's gonna get taken down by Rage. But still, they do have some players coming along the way in the swimming pool, but that's gonna take some time, so this hard point will open up with Blacklist International Ultimate inside. Five seconds to do this, Jabin's on a roll, Demos finally sorts him out, but gets straightened out by Skirt. The hill is opened up by Blacklist International Ultimate. Yopi sends out a hunter killer drone in for the entrance, but it's all smoked up, and he gets shot down through the smoke. Rage is on fire from the side of Blacklist International Ultimate, but Low Kings, they do manage to claim the hill, and they do not make the same mistake twice. This time it's that garden spawn once again and they want to take this all away from blacklist international ultimate demos with a claw investment as well through the smoke right back in their faces pj shoots down three yopi pops off with a sparrow and low kings are not letting this match out of their hands this is how you play the basketball you play through the gardens give your team some spots before you play it so your mother cannot give you emotional damage and now kalo play like a fail 15 seconds left and should they get this they're looking about a very close game up against blacklist international ultimate now they're about to reach a 200 point mark but the contest and the challenge needs to continue hopping into new p5 is where we go and pj he opens it up with that hunter killer drone attack but they need to Stand the ground a little bit stronger here as we have Blacklist having better map control opening up B5. I so hope this was a land event, man, because I can hear it in my ears. Let's go, Low Kings. It's all around the stadium. That's all you're gonna hear all day, all night. Blacklist International Ultimate. They do have one title at Garena Masters in the bag already, and they're aiming for the second one. This is a comeback. They don't need to worry about Smart Omega ruining their plans. They just need to get the Mambas out of the way. But you know, once they bite, you just drop dead. 229. Blacklist International Ultimate on the verge of getting this done, and Low Kings, they just a little bit too far away from the hill yeah this is a problem they don't really have any operator skills as well just to try and break this and of course yato doing a hell of a job controlling the hard point objective and that should be game that should be the nail to the coffin blackness international ultimate they will win this fourth map and they will take the lead in the overall series three and two now I mean, I just want them to go back and forth dancing like some tango, you know, because <laughs> I want a best of seven in this best of seven to go all the way down to match number six, just so that it can keep us guessing who's going to take the title back home. And this this is why, this is why you do not make any predictions, because there's just no way you tell exactly what's going to happen out there on the battlefield. But you have to give props to West Point Mamba Low Kings. At one point, they were just on 59 points, and Blacklist already was on 200 points. Points. They, they recovered more than 150 in a row and Blacklist could not break them. If only we had seen that fire from the very start, this match would be so different. But what ifs could have all aside, Blacklist played this so well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all about starting off strong and that's what they did. Claiming the first and the second hard point, having that map control at the start was definitely something that was... You know, it is less talked about, but was very important to the reason why Blacklist Ultimate was able to build up their lead. That first set of hardpoint rotation was definitely theirs, and the amount of lead that they built up there was just so much that the Holy PM Lokings has to play perfect just to win this game. And we all know that they weren't as they were able to give up that P5 at the last set of contest, but that was close, AJ. Both oh, teams yeah. hitting 200 point mark, but it's just that Blacklist had an early rotation towards P5 to win it. I'm I'm just having a hell of a time, man. <laughs> this this is what I live for. And this is this is exactly why I stayed being a shoutcaster. I never wanted to be a shoutcaster. Never a single day in my life I woke up and I said, hey, I want to try being a shoutcaster. The community of Call of Duty Mobile pushed me into shoutcasting because literally one guy just came along my stream and he said hey AJ you clearly suck at playing the game how about you just <laughs> shut up open up a lobby and talk you're good at talking just just stick 
to what you're good at. I tried it out, <laughs> man. And from that day onwards, I just couldn't go away because of moments like these, because of teams like West Point, Mamba, Low Kings. I mean, Blacklist, lots of love to you, but it's all about the underdog story, man. I want Low Kings to show exactly what true grit and determination can do for you. And I just want to inspire. I want them to inspire a whole new, a whole new lifeline for Call of Duty Mobile within MSP. As long as you've got that want, as long as you've got that effort, you can even take it up against the Eastern champs. You can beat down the 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 back-to-back -back champions of Garena Masters. You can even take down the best of MYSG, West Point Mamba Low Kings. They're doing a lot out here, Cali. And they, they've done a lot and just to mention the two teams that they were able to defeat are the world championship representative of Garena. We're talking about big daddies here. And of course, something that Blacklist wasn't really able to do last year. So WPM Lokings, they have been putting off the effort. And this is where you see that hard work beats talent. And when yes. talent doesn't work, hard work is there to back you up. And the muscle memory is definitely there for WPM Lokings. And we're oh, hopping yeah. into SND. A map that they won up against Smart Omega. So I just hope that they bring the same exact personality here because if not, Blacklist is gonna take this one. <laughs> I mean, exactly right. Blacklist only needs to win three matches. One. Right? They only needs they three. They want two already. Two taken. They have one more in the bag, and they are the champions of Garena Master Season 4. They will be your kings of potential comeback, I can say. They won season one. Smart Omega beat them two seasons back to back in the grand finals and they had to take second spot. And now they're here to claim it. If they take second place once again, but this time to a rookie team that's not even a titan that wasn't seen as a titan in the past, I think it's going to crush Blacklist. But I think that's going to just give a world of motivation for Low Kings to reach up higher in the future. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that take. I mean, all these losses that... WPM Lokings has accumulated has made them better. Remember, last year they were just a punching bag by the MSP Juggernauts. Now, this time they were yeah. the ones punching them. So they punched two already down. They just need to knock one more. But it's currently, you know, the odds is currently not in their favor and they have to play their cards here properly one at a time, brick by brick, if you are WPM Lokings. See how Team Wars got nade from afar. Rage taken out of the equation. That's great in, a, in an SND if you're low kings. And Yo Bob's just trying to equalize the playing field here. But DJ, he's playing a worm. <laughs> I think Yo Bob spots up. him already. And then he goes back no, to being no. a worm. I want to say uh, a slithering snake, but it sounds quite negative. Although they are like the low kings they are snakes yeah i have to agree with you on that tick and with all that pressure that he just put up you see wp low kings opening this mid map and pj there to slay yo babs no more sniper here for blacklist and jabin last man setting is shocking that killer one for one kind of for giving me a tectonic vibes in here but yeah 40 seconds for him to do a 1v4 definitely things are not in his favor mm. it's gonna be a 1v4 clutchable for jabin but it depends yeah. on which kind of Jabin we get, man. We've been getting many versions <laughs> of Jabin, all right? The carbon? Is it the carbon or something? Oh, no, no it's never a, mind. It's, it's a J-Bot this time, Russ. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we'll wait for the next round. We'll wait for the next round. Jabin has been having quite a terrible day of gameplay, I have to say. Yeah, of course. And, well, he has not been, of course, playing well, but his teammate is doing the load for him. Mm. But, you know, if they they only need one more, and if it can step up in this slums, SND could be the dagger here. Could be that joke, the trump card that Blacklist can use just to defeat Lokings, but it's just too early to say that from happening as we see. WPM Lokings being successful with the first round, they won by getting the first blood from Demors to Yato. So right now what they need here is a play from their snipers and Luffy and Susano, they are doubling down their effort just to make sure that the opening will be made because looking at it this way, Blacklist, they are not inching any moves here at all. Wanna know for low kings? Oh. They don't have a numbers advantage, mm. your bobs. Those wall bangs, I guess, I just... I mm -hmm. thought he was gonna go for it. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, teasing me, man. Here we go. There is still no shots being made. Now, now he's pulling the trigger. Shoot the shot, bro. Oh, he's. Oh, you came in too late. Okay. 
Now that's information Oi. sent here for low kings. And they're gonna push here. Look at that. Three players stacking towards A. Oi. 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 Oh. Oi. Come on, yo, pops. Come on, bro. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got He's Then finally one guy slides on through and he doesn't take the shot. Yo, Pops. My hand is just to get Yopi before he gets taken out. But fully tagged up already. PJ slides on towards the left. He finds one. Rage taken out of the equation. But Yo, Pops still alive and kicking. AG will be able to sort out Susano before he rotates around. PJ with a quick plant. But AG is going to be an issue here. It's a 1v4. GG. AG. GG. Gets that final kill. Has a double and of course the diffuse as well coming through for Yato that will equalize the play. And Yobabs put a lot of bullets into that wall. And I kind of felt bad for that wall. Someone in the in the comment section just praised me. They gave me a compliment, but I don't know if I want to take that compliment. Okay? He said I remind him of his cool uncle. Oh. Uncle. We have to take it. I double from Jabin. <laughs> that's a three pointer right there, although it was just two kills. Ah, uh, that's from deep, but still, that first two bloods is handy. Now they have better map control and less angles to worry about. Lokings still hasn't have any super plays from Luffy and Susano as well. And of course, do remember that this is. This could be the last time Lokings has a chance to play for that championship title because Lokings. Are battling against Black who has that match point advantage, AJ. Jabin. Seems I triggered him. Four kills in this game. It's like, I'll show you, Mustachio. I know you can do it, bro. <laughs> Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at this is what you gotta love about Blacklist. The positioning, just so good, right? Does not expose themselves. They just wait for the approach. They play their safeties all around. Those trophy systems all laid out already. Grenades are not gonna force them off of their corners. And it's just gonna force low kings to take this very aggressive approach, which is usually punished by the defending blacklist. And there you go. That's the punish that we're talking about. Yopi sneaking in. Japan finding the double. Oh man, he is mad that you called him a J-Bot earlier. He's not mad. I'll show you. Six kills. Guys on a roll. Let's see exactly what Mr. I can't call him J car now, can I? He ain't sitting in a car. Luffy yeah. slides on in. Yo Bob says hello and bye bye. Thank you for the second round win. Two to one. And Low Kings now. Just paused a little bit on slow mo. Well, for low kings, I mean, here's the game plan. You need to at least score three rounds in this first half. And of course, rely on your s &D defense here later on as we approach the second half. And for Blacklist, they need to stop that from happening. They need to get most of the chance here in the old map. Still the first blood, misses the second, but Rage there to clean it up, fights the double. What? So hot for Blacklist. Too hot. Rage just finally woke up in round number four. Gets the double for himself. Luffy and Susano from the back. Susano trades one right back, but it's a 2v4. Numbers not looking great for the West Point Mamba Low Kings. This SND matchup, they cannot afford to lose. If Blacklist takes this, they are your champions. But that an effort if that is the case to Low Kings, because this would have been their best performance so far within any of the Garena Masters. And with the way they're playing right now, they're at least guaranteed a second place in the tournament. Yeah. But yeah, again, what you're aiming for is the top. And that's what Olea has been dreaming about ever since they started competing here. But it's looking like the Blacklist is making that impossible with the way they've been playing this defensive take. And this is starting to look like a defensive round for Blacklist. And that might just be two rounds now in favor for Blacklist as this round ends. But Susano is still alive. But here is the problem. He has to go with three players. And he has to pick up that bomb as well. Which is currently being gatekept by Rage with the help of Yobabs. You know, number two sometimes doesn't sound all that too bad, but the problem here is nobody remembers number two, bro. Everybody remembers who's the first man on the moon. Do you remember who's the second man on the moon? I remember. Nope. Ooh. I remember only thanks to Toy Story because it's Buzz. Buzz Aldrin. Oh. Nah, Buzz. I'm pulling a leg. I just Googled that before saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Aldrin is at 2 Infinity and Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that's yeah. Buzz okay, Lightyear. Yeah. 
that's Buzz Lightyear. It's not Buzz Aldrin, but Buzz Aldrin oh, was okay. the second guy. But yeah, once again, I'm not a smart boy. I I googled that. I literally googled that just to <laughs> just to say the joke on broadcast again. Must stand for effort. Three to one. Blacklist. They're having an easy time here defending on this map. Draven once again strikes seventh kill in a row. We have got the J car rolling around. Ah, yeah, definitely, and he is just running this players down. If this was a race, he has already won the tournament. But yeah, Demors now on the flank. AG there to shoot the shot, and of course, Demors will take two players there before he gets tagged down. 3v3. Let's see if an on quest point can pull this back. Luffy with the snipes. Too tight of an angle to play, and Yopi takes Rage out of the equation. That's going to be a good, well-played round, and... Does not botch that shot up at the very same time. He manages to back away before he gets taken out of the equation. Luffy with a reposition. This is going to be an opportunity here at Slums to take this mid control for the side of West Point Mamba Lokings. Pushing back the solo player Yobabs far back. But Yobabs just shows up in the middle. And PJ says, hi, what are you doing here? <laughs> and he welcomes it with loving arms. Lokings yeah. takes that fifth round. And that's very important here for for Lokings, by the way. That stops the bleeding and, of course, stops the momentum from shifting over towards Blacklist International Ultimate. Now, final defensive round for Blacklist and a final chance for Lokings to actually force a free all in this game. And take a look at the route you're taking mm. with Blacklist. Very aggressive off the back. Luffy still on zero kills this is round number six already and that's really hurting the low kings pj gets a double yobab sorts him out but that rush did slightly go the way of blacklist international but it's a 3v2 so i wouldn't say that's a huge win rage spots what susano shot does not connect and javen shuts down demos that's a gg as rage finishes it off yeah, that's a nice way to surprise looking they were not yeah. expecting that mm -mm. attack so it, mm -mm. you talk about the bag of the defensive side for blacklist now they are four and two and of course if we're talking about achievements with Blacklist already close to winning this championship, we talk about, you know, Rage being the new addition for Blacklist, but if he ever does win this, he's the first player to three feet in Garena Masters winning both GM2 and 3, and if they win this one as well, he's the first guy to do it. It's too much of words, Kelly. Oh. <laughs> just play. Is... Don't just play. Oh. I'll just play. Four to two. Two players left on the side of Blacklist. Two players on the side of Low Kings. This looks like a tough one for the attacking side. The bombs on the ground, out in the open, and Low Kings are not really guarding it though. Well, right now Luffy is the one trying to make sure that the B side is gonna get clean, but Shaben is trying to move in close, way behind enemy lines. And of course, this is kind of alarming because looking as they have their last two players is this cope and these guys have not been really performing well despite Susano's three kills in here. But Luffy, if he needs to turn his game around, he has to turn it now with the head shot up against Yo Babs. That's one way for you to end your cold streak. And Javen manages to put Luffy down. Susano all tagged up. 1v1. Susano. Good slide away. And Javen, he's turned into J Goat this time. Quick plant. Pile on the pressure just a tad bit more. Hide away. But Susano from afar should be able to snipe him down. But goes in for the very long rotation around. And in a position like this from the side of Garage, looking at Memorial, that CBR4 will have the advantage with that hit glitch. Going up against a Locust though. Just one shot needed from Susano. Alright, now this is very important. You don't want Blacklist to get that fifth round. Susano, he is still waiting for this guy. Little does he know that he's just behind the bomb site. And Jabin just playing this one like a goat, really, as well. Now, this guy's got the gun. He is running, but he picks the wrong angle. Jabin there gives the squad the chance to be two steps closer to winning the Garena Masters 4 title. 5 to 2, man. One more for the match point. Lokings knows that they can do this, but in an SD against a match where Jabin's popping off, yep, it is a little bit tougher. Jabin. Captain definitely wants this for the team. Yobabs, blind shot through the smoke. Won't be able to connect with anyone just yet. Just takes one quick safe shot on the right-hand side as well in case it gets rushed down. But everybody else, they back away. Defenders, they wanted to play retakes, but now they're scared to step on into the hill. This is such a very huge round here for both ends. 
AJ now gonna find the first one in the rage there, following it up. AJ just spraying and it's just winning the gunfights and Lokings just got outslayed once the plant was initiated and Blacklist just one more, AJ. This is the problem right here. They give you some and they take everything away. It's like setting up a trap for a little birdie. Lokings a snake, but they got caught in the trap anyway. Hard. And now you see it. Blacklist, they're confident. They're just pushing here. And now they're looking to end it here, AJ. They are gonna be able to. Demos takes Rage out of the equation, though. Yopi takes that on Yato as well. Yopi traded out. 3v4. Not a lot. Not very tough for them to finish this off. They still have the bomb in hand. They can rotate over towards Broken. The A bomb side very welcoming at this very moment. They can settle the plant here, but of course they can push the B side as well. But WPM, they're using a crossfire tactic here just to make sure all sides are covered. Luffy still on a one kill. And that is definitely something that has been the problem for Low Kings. Of course, that's why they haven't really won any rounds here at all. And right now it's the one holding this A side for Low Kings. It's a well slowed down pace here for the side of Blacklist. Not really rushing in. They don't need 255 seconds. They can dictate the space. And now Memorial's all open. But you have to wait and see because Susano is just holding that off angle alongside Demors. They want to play for trades just in case they get rushed down. And a distraction coming through from Jabin. He's going to play the Sacrificial Lamb. Maybe make a little bit of noise here at Broken. And you can see player number four rotating around once he heard that one single shot let go by Jabin. Pushing on through Luffy. Is this gonna be where Jabin once again shines on through? Bomb! Going in for the plant. AG! Susano, can he get it? No, he doesn't! And that plant will come on through. 40 seconds. And this is Low King's last chance. They gotta make everything matter here, but Jabin, he is pushing oh, forward. CD more circles around Jabin. Will get punished, and it's just a single player more to deal with. West Point Mamba, Low King's. Holding on for their dear lives. 1v2. AJ gets a double. He gets a triple. Your champions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of Korea Master Season 4. Blacklist International Ultimate. Went away. Remember that Korea Master Season 3 where Rage gets one, gets two, gets three. That's exactly what happened here with AJ. A 1v3 clutch to win it. It has been a while, but they are finally back to where they belong. Blacklist Ultimate, your Garena Masters 4 champions. And a gentleman sweep to take what is rightfully theirs. They take the one and only Smart Omega and that opportunity all away from them. And later on, they met the West Point Mamba Low Kings, who they went ahead to demolish as well. And finally, the championship. Jabin, <laughs> officially, Jay Goat. In this matchup. Yes, Jay Goat. Yeah, of course, he was. He was the trump card there. Remember, he was struggling all over the maps, but then we played slums. And with the right tech AMR, and with the kill one for one, with the Krieg 6, he was actually playing three guns in there. Mm. And he was all efficient with it, shotting the players of WPM Lokings every round. So, this was a very important map that they won. And the captain proved why he's worthy to be called the captain as he is leading this team by example in that last map. Yeah, no doubt at all, man. I mean, Jabin, earlier on when we spoke to him, he wanted to meet Smart Omega. What he got was a team better than Smart Omega. A team that was capable of 3 and owing, giving a donut to Smart Omega, kicking them out of the competition. And they did give him a run for his money, at the very least, in the first two matches. But unbeaten throughout the whole run for Blacklist International Ultimate in the competition, Neptune the Gentleman Garcia, his one guess... Me <laughs> made it all the way through. <laughs> that's one out of six, you know. That's like everyone guessed that it was AMT. It was either, of course, WPM Lokings, but, you know, the gentleman Garcia himself, he made sure that he is the devil's advocate and he trusted that oh, yeah. WPM Lokings will get laid down here by, of course, Blacklist Ultimate. But we still have our first runner up Yop, PJ, D. Morris, Kalo, Luffy, and Susano of WPM Lokings. And I get it. They may not have won the game, they may not have won the series, mm -hmm. but they have showed great signs of improvement and progress. And of course, the third or second runner-up as well, 
Candy Cab, Trisky, Idritin, and Whoopi. Second runner up for Smart Omega. They failed to defend their title, but they still play top three. Absolutely, man. I mean, valiant effort for the side of Smart Omega, but nobody saw the 3 0 coming. I don't even think. The players on the side of Smart Omega, neither the coaches saw that coming. West Point Mamba Low Kings just played that down to the T, and that was one of the most beautiful performances from the side of West Point. And Smart Omega can be proud of themselves because they didn't go down to a small squad. They didn't go down to a newcomer. They went up against one of the titans of MSP, and that's exactly what the West Point Mamba Low Kings is right now. And we officially have four titans in the official Garena MSP server and not to mention the amount of talents that's out there in the Garena server itself we have oh, the yeah. Thailand we have the Indonesia as well as well as the, Th the Taiwan squads as well but yeah officially we have a very strong server right now but for Blackest International Ultimate well deserved win Jaben and AG popped off big time for this squad yeah, no doubt at all, man. I mean, AG stepping up as usual, but he sneaked that MVP title away from Jabin just because he got one extra plan out there. Jabin was slaying all around. He he was not. He was not going to take the J-Bot comment easy, right? He was like, I'll show you. I'll show everyone. But, you know, good on him, man. It's a good time for him to step up as well because all throughout the day, Jamin hasn't really see, been seeing like the seeming like his old self, right? He was struggling a tad bit to find those frags. The rest of them, like you said, were keeping up. But this was not an easy one. But what Blacklist does manage to solidify is that they are the king of sweeps. You can take one, you can take two, but they will take it all away from you. Yeah, they did that up against Smart Omega, you know, keeping them, giving themselves, giving the opponent some confidence. And yeah. right the moment that they were confident, boom, Blacklist stole the candy and they ran away with it. Same thing happened for Lokings here at the yes. Grand Finals. And of course, great signs for them, you know, they lost back to back up against Smart Omega during Green Masters 2 and 3. And they failed to qualify as a world representative during the 2022 season. And well... This lineup right here could be the ultimate form to get them right back to where they belong. And they did that here already at Garena Masters 4 and to what's more to come here, AJ. And like you said, man, this is the third Garena Masters Championship for Rage. I mean, nobody yeah. else has that. Zero. Repeat. <laughs> he's the first to three feet. <laughs> first <laughs> he's player. The, he's <laughs> the first player, not even the first team, right? I mean, Rage, the guy obviously is making the right decisions in life. Everything's going his way. And even his gameplay is just on absolute fire. You know, the, nobody, nobody wanted this to be a clean out, you know, just a 4-0 victory or a 3-0 victory if it's blacklist. And that's exactly what we got. We got one hell of a series, five matches to call the champions. And of course, your MVP of the game in itself, the one and only oh, Jagot. Jabin, 19.6 average kills, 27.67. Nah, I'm, that's, that's no way that's true. 1.18 <laughs> KD ratio. This guy did a lot for the team. Yeah, of course. And well, when you need him to step out the most, well, he's out here slaying and being the finals MVP surely gave this team the boost to initiate the reverse sweep giving of course wpm that that gentleman sweep and jabin he has proven himself that of course progress is all about you working hard and jabin oh, yeah. yes last year he was struggling real bad and was the cause for his team to lose the, those important moments and well here he is you know stepping up making sure that the team is aligned to their objective and their goals and their goals officially match. They are the champions of Green Masters 4. After Green Masters Season 3, I had the opportunity, I had the pleasure of catching up with the Blacklist International team. And you know, all I could see was a very sad Jabin. The guy was broken, the guy was sad. But the one thing that he did promise me back then was, AJ, we will make a comeback. And if there's one thing I respect, is a person who can keep to his word. And that's exactly who Jabin is. They make their comeback. They make their comeback as the champions of Garena Masters Season 4. And just apart from Smart Omega, they're the only team to pick up this championship twice. Twice as well. And here's the thing. They came in here undefeated. 10 and 0. 100% win rate to end the Garena Masters 4 playoffs. <laughs> And it's all the serve. Blacklist Ultimate, they, they were at the top. They fell and they rose back up here yep. starting the 2023 season. 
I mean, we called it at the very start, man. This is the most ultimate form of Blacklist International Ultimate. I cannot wait to see exactly who we're going to have a quick chat with. It's now that we have crowned our champions already. It could be. It could be the one and only Jamin. Yeah, it could be him, obviously. But I want to talk to you, Rage. I want to know how yeah. he's feeling because, you know, winning three times and winning three Garena Masters title in a row is definitely something that will be recorded down to history books. And of course, yeah. He gets the. He, I think he has the most money earned. He's the richest one know? amongst the, the team members. Yeah, he, the richest amongst the members, obviously. Uh, let's see exactly who we've got for the interview oh. session. Jabin! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask this. First of all, congratulations, bro. Congratulations on the win. I, I'm very, very happy for you guys. I have to ask was it intentional? giving away a couple of maps to your opponents just to slap them right back down no no it, it wasn't intentional we, we just okay lost. okay D just lost and did that motivate you or what what was the conversation like once you guys lost because obviously you guys are really good and expecting a loss is not something that's usual out there uh, during that first two losses uh, the team was, uh, our energy is not up so we need to uh, bring our energies back up to win and we just ate some chocolates <laughs> <laughs> you you just made chocolate shares go right up if you pick up that chocolate and show us the brand i think they'll make a lot of money today yeah i mean <laughs> Kali. Uh, I mean, Jabin, finally, you guys are back here at the top, taking back the crown from Smart Omega. Now, if you're going to give a shout out to anyone that supported and helped you get back on track, who would it be? Shout out to our coaches from Inco, ABR, and from LG, Image, his retirement tournament. Ooh, well, it was definitely a bag here, AJ. Definitely a bag. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. I mean, you've got one coach from Inco and one coach from LG, and you've got the best of the best talent out there, the most ultimate form of Blacklist International Ultimate out there on the battlefield. I don't know what else can go right for this team. Everything seems to be going your way. You know, one <laughs> final question for you, Jabin. What are you guys going to do with the prize pool, man? What are you guys going to do with the 10,000 US dollars? I'm going to get this up there. <laughs> We're gonna party. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure speaking to you once again. Congratulations to you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. After season three, this has to be one of the best comeback. But okay, what one last question. One last question. Did it hurt that you didn't get the revenge against Smart Omega though in the grand finals? Uh no. Uh, we just aim for the championship. So whoever uh, whoever our enemy is will try to beat them. Spoken like a true champ, man. Thank you so much for your time, Jabin. You have a nice day and enjoy your party. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's always oh, it's we, always okay. a fun time here at Garena, man. Oh yeah, man. Obviously, I want to be invited to that party, but I guess I don't I don't have that right. But yeah, <laughs> solid victory there for Blackest International Ultimate. You know, many were yeah. expecting Smart Omega Almighty. And of course, WPM looking at taking home the championship, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it stands true. They just did their work, played silently, and of course, back home the championship. Blacklist International Ultimate Neptune's prediction finally came true, and it was all worth it. I mean, dude, and the two coaches that they've got behind them, they are no slouches as well. In fact, some of the best in the industry would fear going up against coaches like that, right? And I think Blacklist being backed up by them just makes the brand so much more threatening. This is not Blacklist getting prepared for Garena Masters. This is Blacklist pretty much preparing to dominate the world of Call of Duty Mobile. I think they're already aiming for the World Championship. But of course, we have to go through to see exactly who represents Garena. And that's going to be the next installation probably in our whole story. Yeah, you guys have to make sure that you stay tuned at Garena Masters 4 and of course for the next season as well. But we do have some invitationals coming along the way. But the dates are actually not mentioned just yet. But you guys have to stay tuned on that by following, liking and sharing the official Garena Call of Duty mobile Facebook 
YouTube channel as well. And that's all. Thank you guys for having me here and AJ as well. And on behalf of Wasabi, Beef Mammy, Warden, and Neptune, the gentleman Garcia, the one and only right prediction in the entire Garuda Masters playoffs, we thank you for having us here. And of course, thank you guys for watching as well. We'll see you till next time.